semifinal between Fnatic and Mad against all expectations after that second game. Here we are in game five. Mad Lions have the momentum. They are on the cusp of victory. Fnatic, one game is all that it comes down to. It's a quick hot drop in the draft, isn't it? Fnatic side selection on blue side here. See if they can revamp that draft a little bit. The Rel isn't working for Fnatic, but the Azir is working for Mad Lions. They haven't found a way to shut it down, and pinching Niski in the first couple games was their real advantage that they had in these drafts. Is Azir first pick worth it? Is Alistar worth a ban here for Fnatic? There's a couple of things up in the air. The Ivern might slip through if that's the case. The Maokai might slip through if that's the case. Nerves, you have to imagine, from the coaching staff, knowing that they need to do their best to set their players up for one last battle here in the semifinals. It's Kalista last game. I feel like Noah's been really suppressed these last two games up against this Kalista. He hasn't really found his footing in these games to get himself involved in these fights. Maybe he's calling, you know what, guys? I think Alistar is a problem, but can we take away Kalista? I feel like he probably feels like this lane phase is too much. He needs something that can get him to the mid game safer. I think it's also just how impressive Karzi and Hillisang have been in fights. The Alistair going in, getting that yeah. reset with the Kalista, finding another opportunity to go in. It's such a powerful combo and it's not going to be there. Now the chase band as well. Ivern, the trees are up. Yeah, they're ready to fight. Is Azir the most is Azir the most valuable pick in the series? Um, uh, I think Vanek are debating. It's Ivern, yeah, but they could get Rel Azir here, Mad Lines, pretty easily. They could get Azir Maokai. Um, Azir Maokai. They have Reddington open. So they believe in Razork's Ivern. What's their response to the Azir then? I wonder if Mad Lions are going to want to it with the Maokai here. Maokai coming through as expected once it is locked in, although Mad Lions can't take their time. I mean, a lot of pressure again on these first two picks because whatever you leave up and available in terms of meta powerhouses, you know Fnatic are going to snatch up. So the Rel would not be surprising. The Azir as well, based on what we've seen in this series, has to be taken. I think they might have to do Azir Reddington, you know. Uh, yeah. I think giving Wonder blind Rennington, he has a lot of power in that lane phase, and he actually has a lot of pressure. And you can pick up Maokai here, but they're not going to pick it. You can pick up Rel, it's unlikely they'll pick it. But if you don't pick up Rennington, I feel like Fnatic's going to take Rennington Zaya here or something on 2-3. Go back to comfort. Yeah, I think the Rennington's too strong. I think you kind of have to, but wow. not going to be the case. They're going to take the Rel, so I think, yeah, you're going to get the Rennington on the opposite side. As you're saying, I think you can go back towards the Zaya. You've got great disengage for a lot of what the uh, these here and the Rel want to try and achieve in these fights and then it's just a case of do we end up going for something where maybe they try to steal away the Alistair or what exactly do you want to try and go for here? Yeah, it's a good question. Taking their time. Maybe they pivot, you know, and they just put Wonder on like a Poppy or a full tank on 4-5 and they just pick like Zyra on here. Or Syndra. Syndra. Wow. Coming out, I mean a bold call out. That's what won in their game 5 last time. You know, they played the Syndra into a tough comp. I think it was like a ZRS rule they played it against. But uh, they somehow found their way back into the game despite losing early. It was that single target CC that was just so obnoxious to deal with. The stun from the Syndra into the lockup from the Ivor, and it was like if you get caught, you don't get to move, and now you're getting rid of one of the most safe AD carries in that Zaya. And now it's a case of what cards you want to try and bring to the table. Is it just go back towards the Ezra and try and have that self feel? What can they do to also to fight for bot lane priority? We've seen how key it is. Again, we talk so much about mid jungle, but the team and the side that has had bot lane prior has freed up their jungler to do essentially whatever they want in the early game. This would be a bold bet, most certainly. Another AP jungle coming through. El Yoya doesn't want to risk it. Goes with a safe choice here in game five. It's kind of a double flex that Maokai Rel, really, isn't it? But we've we had a taste of El Yoya on carries, now he's back on tank duty. So Mad Lions are playing the front to back. I think they have to ban the Alistair here, though. I think Alistair is going to do so much work for you. Can tank up the Melkaios, can tank up the Rel. Sets up beautifully for the follow-up for Fnatic as well. You just do not want that pick slipping through. I think the tough thing about banning the Alistar is Nautilus is one, Rakan is another, Alistar is another. There's three engaged supports here that Mad Lions are going to give away. You could give them Rakan and play Maokai support into it. You know, Beryl was playing that in the LCK. It works really well. All you do is just W the W of Rakan, and he can never knock you up. Alternatively, you could give them the Alistar and play Maokai. Yeah, I think Alistar ban has to come through your right. They might get Rakan, Azai Rakan, but I think you can't give Hilly Alistar, right? That's, in that's game be a five mistake. against a player of Hillisang's pedigree and experience. Giving him a champion that can single-handedly win the game with a flank is a terrifying prospect, regardless of the impact on the draft. Yeah, it's just the Trimby will get the Alistar, right? Or he will get the Rakan. I think yeah. Hilly can pick a champ to negate it, but Zaya Rakan is so strong, but Alistar yeah. is also really powerful. Yeah, they're going to yeah, give okay. Alistar to Fnatic. I don't know if Trimby will pick it, though, you know? Like, Trimby... 
I'll it's check not now how many Alistar games he has, but I feel like his engaged supports are really... Just... And it feels like a call-out on his champion pool that they took away specifically the Rakan and the Nautilus, and yeah. not the Alistar. Uh, yeah. Nautilus in general, just safe blind, I mean, right? He's not had, the flashiest champion he's, whatsoever. Uh, he's had like seven games on the Nautilus as well, so it's definitely been his most played and the one he wants to go towards, but I think here Zeriban is going to have to come through as well just to try and get Karzy off of something that's good into the design. Yeah, I think it will be Alistar for Trimmy. He's got five games, won two, lost three. It's, uh, unless he wants to pivot and go for Melio, but again, you're playing Ivor and you need a melee support. You need an Alistar here for Fnatic. So what does Matt pick up on AD? Do they take Renekton away here, or do they just take... Yeah, something like the Kai'Sa. I think Safe. that's going to be Kai'Sa Rel then. But again, it's a Malka, it's a it's an Alistar pickup like theme, right? I'm not sure what else Trippy can lean towards. But I think, yeah, Wonder has a lot of blind picks here. Renekton Poppy could do well, I suppose. Uh, not the best against their comp, but, you know, Cassante's open, Orin's open. I don't think he'll struggle. What is the option going to be here? Fnatic really taking their time, knowing that it is do or die, despite an okay win record. Trippy still locking in the Alistair. Taking as much time as possible to lock that one in so they can debate what the blue five pick has to be for top lane. Do they try and jump ahead and take the poppy here? I don't know. Looks like it is just going to be the Renekton. It's going to be Renekton yeah. Cassante, isn't it? Is Cassante the play here? I think Poppy could be so good, though, if you're trying to block this engage from the Alistair. Like, you already know there's going to be insane follow-up, so just trying to get something that can play towards that front line and uh, try and tank some of the follow-up CC could be fantastic for for mad lines, but what about Gragas? Nah, too much AP. Yeah, I think it must be like something like Cassante. I mean, Poppy makes sense into Renekton and Alistar, but if you're going into Syndra, Zaya, Ivern, you're not moving. Yeah. You're dead. So it seems we've come full circle. Both teams have gone for this kind of front to back team fight. As much as Fnatic solo lanes don't have like that innate DPS in the late game, they have insane amounts of bursts, and the Ivern makes up for the sustain through fights with Desire by his side. So Mad Lions, Azir Kaisa, front to back, Maokai Rel engage. Everything paints the same picture for both drafts. Fnatic might have a little bit more lane pressure in the early stages, mostly in solo lanes or kill threat. But then again, Elioia has more threat of ganks than the Ivory, right? So it's a it's a give and take, but yeah, this is uh, the last game for both these teams. And it could be one of these teams' last game until the World Championship. I just feel like it was more, though, a huge amount of pressure on these bottom sides. You look towards the potential pressure for an Alistair engage, followed from the Ivor and Zaya Root. That's an instant kill. You look towards Hilly and Elioia, what they can achieve together if they can sync up. And that seems to be where the majority of the pressure is settled in this series. Yeah, we've had 40 kills per game, but I feel like something tells me this game is going to be slower. Dead quiet. This game feels uh, a bit different. Now that everything is evened up, now that Mad aren't fighting from a deficit, will they temper their aggression or will they continue to go wild on the rift to risk it all every single time? We are moments away from this game five. Do or die for both sides. One of these teams will go home. One of these teams will walk away with third seed and nothing else. It is time to get into game five. Mad versus Fnatic. game left. Both these teams are betting it all on these compositions. But they both faced drastically different journeys. For Mad, it is a story of inconsistency. Great until they weren't. But here in game five, perhaps they can redeem themselves from the lackluster start of the series, find themselves once again in the finals. For Fnatic, it has been steady improvement against all odds, against countless roster changes, against a broken hand for their primary top laner. They managed to find a way be one step in the LEC season finals. Just finals. another year as a, a Fnatic fan, really, isn't it? It's just some, it's never the easy road. It's always the Fnatic road. Uh, so Mad Lions were looking for some kind of level one there. Interestingly, they got their red buff warded out, and Fnatic put a ward on their blue too. So both of these buffs are warded. That's going to sting the early game for Elioia. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they managed to spot the entirety of Mad Lions as they walked away from that top side on the ward of red buff set up nicely for them to get that invade. So. Already, ton of information for Fnatic. It's just a case of what do they want to try and achieve with this. Ivern going to be starting off on the top side, so Karzy and Hilly going to be able to, well, going to be looking to try and push back Noah and Trimby off this level with Alistair. Do we see top side pressure? Something we've essentially seen very little of this entire series. I don't think so, you know. I think both these top laners are just going to farm it out. 
unless El Yoyo does three camps top gank here, I think it'll be in isolation until the mid game or until the Herald fights. I really think bot lane is just the essence of the entire game. So El Yoyo went Raptors to Crux here. He could lose out. Oh, this is really risky, Razork. Razork. I mean, El Yoyo might just flash to interrupt it, but I think he's just out of range. Yeah, has to get the channel off. Doesn't have enough time, so oh, he finish the channel, smite the objective. And he's just going to walk away and take it in style. Oy, that hurts El, Yoyo. El Yoyo. He needs to get towards Blue quickly or Gromp level up. Fight in both sides. Hillisang poking here. Alistair level one. We've highlighted it in previous games in the series. Notoriously weak. Easy for Hillisang to just walk up and get free damage. Can Yoyo use that bot push here to maybe try and counter invades, try and get Razor's red? Could be tricky. That's what I'm thinking because you can see at the moment Razor has to try and clear it all this top side. And it looks like it's kind of a bit of a weird one where you end up with a split map on towards the top side, which isn't really what you want to try and go for. No real control over mid, though. Makes this very dangerous and hilly. Each coming in. Immediate response now coming from Trimby, but he takes a ton of damage on the backside of that trade. He gets the Ignite from Hillisang, but it might just not be worth the health. Ouch. Even though it's got a weak, excellent. Yeah, one of his comfort champs, Syndra. He does not miss those. He might have missed a few Seraph ults, but these Syndra Qs, these Syndra stuns. Again, just one of his uh, one of his favorites. Yoyo is going to finish off the blue. Razork will secure his red pretty easily, I think. Doesn't need the smite, it looks like. He can just mark them up, use the smite for the crab. We'll see if he can get this bot crab, try and steal it away, but Yoyo's ready. And that's what I was going to say. You got complete control of the bot lane from Mad Lion, so Yoyo should be in position here to just go for the crab after it spawns, have support coming through from his bot side. And Humanoid relatively low, so I don't know if they can really try and contest this as Razork. Razor continue to walk up, has the luxury of the red buff. And just poke a bit here. Mad Lions, of course, have bot prio. So Razork really can't afford to stick around for too long. Would need to channel before he could smite. So doesn't have an option really to take this crap. Matt's gonna get squeezed here into this choke. Razor okay. has the mid push. I think Matt just needs to go pull the trigger off the Razor. Managed to connect now, trying to walk up with the immediate turn and burn. Cardsy again, not taking any damage. They're just trying to burst down a single member. It's gonna be a one for Trippy's one. Alive. Trippy's still living! from Fnatic. Trimby combos in. I thought Matt think, thought that he was probably already dead. But the push comes out. I think maybe they lost vision of him. The shield came through. Trimby then flashed to the back of the Dragon Pit to force Karzi to chase him in there. Ends up dying, but two big kills over to Fnatic. Big bot wave crashes. Crabs in their favor. I mean, that is a massive win. And honestly, should have been Mad Lion's play, right? They just weren't able to get there in time. And nowhere Trimby able to follow up onto that bottom lane play. And now, two kills going across, one going to the Ivern, not so hot, but having that kill to match for no in that bot lane is going to be massive. Yeah, we saw both top laners use their flash. Wunder was really low. It looked like Chasey was getting close to a solo kill there. He's TP back, Chasey's running back to the lane. So top's in isolation, yes, but Chasey has TP advantage at the moment. Niski's hovering around mid, trying to fake base, perhaps, just trying to catch this last wave before he takes the recall. Also, Elioi just falling behind once more because of that play, right? He doesn't get the Scuttle Crab on bot side. He end up losing out on that play on top. Does just manage to get Scuttle on the top side. But it means that now you've got Razork who's coming back, back out onto the map. He's in a really good spot, has that boots of lucidity. So this Ivern in a pretty spectacular spot as they start to move in towards the, the next passage of play. Sitting comfortably, Trimby waiting over the wall, ready to hex flash if necessary, if you can find the angle. Hosang just trying to clear the wave, gets down a bit of a stun. Trimby now firing back as the Aftershock starts to fade. But as you highlighted previously, getting the early kill on Noah, allowing him to buy the Noon Quiver, hoping to even up some of the CS discrepancy. We're currently seeing one kill to one and 80 carries overall. Karzi has been the star in game three and four, but it was Noah in game one on the Saya yep. who made such a mark on the series. If you cast your mind back to game one, the, what we were trying to highlight was the mid jungle on both sides. And then it kind of fed over into the bot lane going, well, this has actually been the main focus. But realistically, I think Razor from Humanoid are going to start to have a bigger and bigger impact on this bot side. As you said, the Ivern already in a good spot. Humanoid just hit level six. He has fantastic control. And now, as you get this push from Owen Trimby at the bot lane, you can lean in towards things like Dragon. You can lean in towards more invades onto this bottom side. And I think this is where you're going to start to see this Ivern. Oh, Wonder Fred. Wonder, knock back under tower. Chasey on the chase. Will just barely manage to make it out here. That was close. Very, very close. Side lanes are tense. Looks like both these side lanes are just constantly fighting. Dragon's still up, though. I'm wondering when Matt's going to pull the trigger on a Dragon start. I feel like that's been on the table for the past few waves. El Yoyo's finished his top side. Need a little bit of vision here as Disky comes back to mid. He's got the uh, Mercury Treads, his first item, trying to be safe up against that Syndra and Ivern. Razork's moving down from the top side. Matt still yet to start the Dragon. There's a pink in Tribush for Fnatic in case they want to go for this bot die, but it should be a stacking wave. Looking at their movement on the map, Matt must have a bot stack here. 
Yeah, they do. So they're trying to crash dish and zone them away, but the pink's going to spot them. Razork's running through mid, so Matt see the enemy jungler coming down. They're going to have to back away here and turn this into a dragon, I think. Nice idea for a dive. But are they going to turn this into a dragon? Yo-Yo's resetting. Karzi's basing. No, they don't fancy the, uh, the objective. I don't think you can. Humanoid moves back to mid, completely clears out that wave. And if you try and contest that river control, Razork and Humanoid are going to cause you absolute misery. So this key force to go back to lane, bot lane back under control. And I think that's the biggest problem that you're going to have here is Mad Lions and trying to set up this control for Dragon. It's just how strong Syndra is going to be in that mid lane. I think what Fnatic will do is just transition this to the top pressure. Look at Trimby's reset timer. Bot wave's crashing. Zaya's close to level six. Run out top sides, maybe full swap if you want to. Mad Lions are re re just pulling Big Raptor team. kidnapped. Niski, Niski flashing, is going to get the pushback. Now Chasey can step in, manages to stop the stun from coming through as well. Unstoppable there, Humanoid in trouble. Overstaying is welcome on the cheeky peek in. Not worth the Raptor whatsoever. And with the top side fight. It looked a little bit sketchy there for Niski, but he just pushed him into the Cassante. Razork's going to get that level six. Trimby's already invested his time up here. But I think it looks like... Uh, no Herald for 15 seconds. They get the pick, they use the Azir Flash, but they don't get anything yet. Looks like they'll go for Dragon. I think they got to try and commit for Dragon because Humanoid's going to reset, be back out onto the map, and you'll be able to can compete with this play on towards the Rift Herald. So they're like, look, we'll just use that advantage to start up the Dragon as we can. But I think for Fnatic, you're kind of happy that you're still going to get a Rift Herald out of the end days at the end of the day. Yeah, it's a slow game. Four kills in eight minutes. Yeah, what is this pace? <laughs> We need to get to 40 kills to get to 200 kill series. But I have a feeling we're going to be a little shy of that, as you, you said it in the draft. I mean, in game five, when the pressure is on like this, I, teams just feel generally a lot less yeah. risk prone. And why bet it all on a single play? That's it. Gold dead even. One Drake to Mad Lines, but the Herald to the opposite side. Noah has cleanse as well as ultimate. Is just going to be forced to use the cleanse here. That's a tough chunk, because Razork's on the top side. Yoya's looking mid. Niski doesn't have the flash, doesn't have the pushback. Razor can match this. I love this from Alyoya though. He kind of just walks into mid, gets control for Nisk. I actually thought they might just use that to shove in mid and then threaten a potential bot dog. Oh, Trimby's going in. But Pulverizing Knight already now taking Hillisang, trying to flash in to turn the play in an instant. They kill him before the own can even come out. They make it happen and Hilly still lives. How do they make it work every time? Trimby knew he couldn't keep going forward. He would have given his life for the life of Hilly and Cars. He would have been happy to take that trade. Now Nisky going have forward. Old. Dashing in, triple soldiers, nice bit of poke on a humanoid. 2v2 bot going in favor of Mad Lions. Again, that's a 2-1 Kai'Sa with static. Let's watch this again. So Noah has no cleanse and Trimby engages it. I don't think Noah can react to this. We'll see, level up. Trimby re remounts, stun into Q. He doesn't really have a frame to ult there. And there's not much he can really do without cleanse. If he had a cleanse there, they would easily win that fight. But of course, Trimby just maybe expecting them to win that one out and turning it into one one for one, perhaps. But again, Hilly coming alive in this last game. He's been an absolute pillar for Mad Lions in these last two games. And now in game number five, making massive plays in this bottom side. Two kills now for Karzi. And it feels once more that they're going to have control over this game in the, for coming from the bottom side. Hilly. Playing with fire a little bit here as Razork comes in. Aftershock still proc. Hilly's going to try to crash down out to safety. Niski, is he ready to burn the ult? Necessary. The answer is yes. Oh, you're still waiting over the wall, though. We'll be able to walk away without giving a whole heck of a lot. I'm watching this Wonder TP timer. He's up 20 CS. He's got the two plates, basically in isolation. He's ahead in XP, and his TP's up. Can he use it to his advantage? Can he crash this next top wave and try to TP in on these bot fights where Mad's overextending? Look at that ward in the river on the choke towards blue buff. You know, if Wunder can get a TP in there, that would be ideal. I think Fnatic wants it, but it looks like Chasey's running him down at the moment on top side, trying to stop him from TPing, and he's pushed back. Making sure Syndra gonna pull back the crab just to make sure that Razor can complete the channel. Might secure that one as well. A tense exchange on the bottom side of the map. The gold is again still dead. Even so much of that, though, as you highlighted, is in the back pocket of Wonder. Who right now is being pushed in, not given an avenue to leave his lane. I think Wonder catches this wave, resets, and now my question is, where's is his TP going? If he's running back to lane, Fnatic have a plan. If he TPs back to lane, then Fnatic are just going to have to herald mid and sack. I think he might just have to TP back top side. Sante just proxying those waves in. We'll see. Things on the bot side of the map here as uh, Fnatic collapsed, but again, their TP is just gone. I don't think they know that Elio is here though. Noah now backing off, has the ultimate up and available. Shrimpy as well with the level six. Trying to find the angle bot side, but it will not come through. Yeah, all committed just to try and keep them back. You can see Hilly had gone for the resets, and then he's showing up in mid lane. Niski. What can Niski do? Niski. Scatter of the week is excellent. Hillisang now is continuing to step forward, but the play fizzles. One minute, 40 seconds on the dragon. 
It's an awkward spot now because Chasey's got the TP advantage, but he's probably going to have to base and TP back because Wunder's got Gore Drinker. He probably wins out on this trade. He's probably going to eat through the wave. Even though he's trying to buy time in mid as he, his TP is available. 1 minute 25 on the next dragon. And it's it's tense. You know, both these teams, they want to complete items. You know, Niski's sitting on a lost chapter. Karzi wants to get towards Nashers. There's no real demonic embrace on this uh, Maokai just yet. First strike, red smite, a lot of damage. There's Moonstone on the Ivern, but yeah, Noah's just coming out of base with a recurve bow and a noon quiver, so not ideal. When you have Kairis like Azir, Kai, Zaya, you really want to wait for the right time to fight. But Razork's up towards his top side. Chasey cancelled his reset. There's a dive potential here, but Chasey Yo -Yo's around. has to survive this, has to hold on. Unstoppable for now, manages to push Wonder back. Level 10 is going to bring it back with the waiting arms. Yo -Yo, but Wonder trying to finish the kill, but Chasey will walk away. 34 HP. Wonder now wants to turn his focus on to Yo -Yo. He's shielded up. He's empowered. But the arcade smash stops the play and its tracks. And here comes Niski. Has to be careful though. Wonder's still so powerful. Niski may have bitten off more than he can chew. He's forced to use the pushback, but the Rue connects and in goes Wonder. Niski holding on for dear life. Will just barely manage to TP make it Nike. out, but it's another TP. Cassante on the way in. Can again. they redive him? Can they go for it again? The knockback is there. He has no ult to escape this time around. Chasey. Oh no, it's a terrible TP in game five. But a kill traded back as Humanoid gives his life to the tower. It's an execute. They will end up getting the push in mid for Karzi, who will get at least a plate, but in bot side, they're losing everything. It's a disaster for Mad Lions. They had the control to try and set up for Dragon. They tried to throw everything into that top lane play, and it's Fnatic who come out on top. Chasey greets the reset. He stops it, trying to catch a wave. Razork pulls the trigger. Niski has to collapse. Karzi has to abandon bot. Humanoid TP's in. Couple plates over to Noah. Couple plates over to Karzi. The game's still pretty even, but Fnatic in the long run, I think Wonder's going to get this top tower. He doesn't have TP for Dragon, though, so maybe Mad Lions can look to set up on that bot side. Can he try to stop Razor get this, uh, from getting this crab? Uses the Ignite to try to deny the channel, but sadly, Razor is able to complete it, so we'll be able to smite it away now. He continues to pick up his own camps. It was only one kill that went over in that whole exchange. One was an execute, but one actual kill went over. The thing is, though, you've now got Razor, who's incredibly low, trying to move over, so Mad Lions kind of spot this. They go, right, we can start up this Dragon, but look at where their bot lane is positioned. They're separated here, Fnatic know it. So they're going to try and brute force their way into the yeah, they got it. Yeah, they got it. They see no TP. They don't know where Wunder is. This is a game of vision. Mad Lions are not sure. Look at their vision right now. They don't really have any vision on the bot side. And they don't know where Wunder is. So there could be a running in the brush coming out of Red Buff. You can see the Kaisa Ws are being used to try and snipe him. Niski, no Flash sitting under this bot tier one that's really low. He's being a bit greedy down here, Niski. As uh, Trimby can maybe look to flash combo him. We'll see if he can interrupt the dash. Niski no flash. All the Fnatic's here. Ultimate up and available. Daisy can tank. Whoa, flash Trimby. forward. He just raw predicts it. It's an easy call out knowing it's the only avenue of escape. But Trimby finds the angle. Game five and it's the greed that's coming back to fight Mad Lions. Chasey topside. Niski bot lane now. Mad don't get the dragon. But with everyone from Fnatic on bot side, they'll be able to trade for Rift Tower. It's not the worst, actually, for Mad. They lost bot tower, yes. They got mid tower and a herald for it, right? So in terms of raw gold, not the worst for Mad. They got Alistar Flash as well, so that frees up Karzi for the next fight. If there is one around mid. The problem is Niski doesn't have his Mythic yet. He needs to get that Mythic. It's 15 minutes in the game and he hasn't completed it. We'll see if he's got it as he runs out of base here. Looks like he's sticking around. He's got it, right. So the Azir finally got his first item. Yeah, the biggest problem that I see for now, though, is that like Fnatic basically have control over side lane. Wonder beat Chasey. Humanoid is able to push out against Niski uh, because of the threat that you always have, like Razor or Trimby or someone showing up. So it means he should be able to get control over sides. Group onto mid in the mid lane tower. Half HP, you'll clear that very, very quickly. So I think that's where now Fnatic will get to even up the trade afterwards, even though the Rift Tower went across the bad lines. Yeah, I think they're going to have to drop this. You're right. karsi has got the Nashers. Two item Kaisa is online. But Humanoid just using those hex gates towards mid. Towers maybe going to fall here. Noah's the only one hitting it. Matter collapsing down. They're gonna have to stop for now. Fnatic now collapsing back down towards the dragon pit. No dragon to take, but taking control at least of the bottom side jungle, as you highlighted, using the hex gate to invade. Blue buff up, it would appear. Wait, so. did, they, did they just Syndra W the blue buff? Wonder. <laughs> the Ivern. Swippy swap in there with Hillisang. I think they just uh, used the Syndra W to pull the blue buff, then Razork marked it and smited it. So that was pretty cool. Stole that one away. They really want that mid tower though, don't they? Three minutes away from that dragon spawn. There's no side lane tier one, so Fnatic don't really have an objective right now. The only thing they can play for is that mid tower, but Mad, no, that's their only play. Slowly walking away, and again, the tension in this game palpable. 3k gold lead for Fnatic. 
feeling pretty comfortably in control. Karzy, two items already, however. Three items is really going to start to be terrifying. And despite the sheer amount of AP on this composition, there's not a true tank on the side of Fnatic to mitigate that. We'll see if Wonder wants to start going towards something like a bomb to mitigate the carry threat here. Yeah, I think a lot of this, though, is going to be a case of, like, just Wonder, how does he try and use these side lanes? Like, you can see at the moment he's starting to get that control, he's going to push in, and we've already seen him start trying to group onto this top side, but Mad trying to respond by immediately going bot with this group. Mad going to force the play. Die. The rest of Fnatic be behind. behind, trying to zone away. The Herald for sure is going to get the charge, but now it's Wonder on the back side. Creep wave to dash through if he needs it. TP responding by the side of Mad, but Karzy's getting lower and lower. Hell now flashing in, Karzy flashing out to safety. All of Mad on the retreat. Running up river as fast as they can towards their mid lane. Elio will also flash out to safety. It's chaos on the bottom side of the map. But Fnatic's been bamboozled. Karzy went forward, so they all turned his attention towards him. He flashes out over the pit, and Fnatic can't chase, although Hilly getting a bit greedy with the reset, so Fnatic will shove him off. But I mean, the fact you got to escape away from that, keep well, you don't get to keep the TP on JC, but you get away. It's a big win for Matt. Does Fnatic get the mid tier one? Wonder's hovering around. Niski stopped his pace. Wonder's contesting the Raptors. Needs to be careful. I think Fnatic are gonna have to back off. Wow, so TP invested, nothing comes of it. Couple summoners used. Yoya, Hilly, and Karzi losing their flash in that exchange. Trimby as well. But no one dies again. Wonder just gonna get away from that one. Side lanes need to be caught here by Mad Lions. One worry I've just realized for Mad Lions is that's a lot of AP. That's an AP Kai'Sa, that's an Azir, yeah. that's a full AP Maokai as well. So, um, yeah, needs to get that magic pen rolling with Sword Shoes on his ear. That kind of, with uh, Mercury Treads on his ear, that slows that down, but they're going to need to get Void Staffs ASAP. Banshees to be built for Q mode if he wants. Looks like it's not going that route just yet. Potentially Cosmic Drive now coming through. Just wants the extra mobility to stay out of reach of a lot of the melee champions. The Aether Wisp could go for something else too. I just doubt, I doubt at this point it's a Lich Bane. So we'll have to see what the focus is here. 50 seconds on the Dragon. The, uh, how these teams set up now. It is, it is a Hextech dragon coming up, of course. Infernal and Cloud at the top meet the third dragon. I'm just looking here, it's Hextech Soul, of course, with the Hextech gates. And I think crucial to keep track of those cooldown timers. Yes, Mad Lions got out with their lives, but can they win a fight when they're down so many key summoners? Wonder's still on top side with no TP. Mad have sent Niski to match because they know that he can actually teleport into a fight. So Mad immediately starts to push in. It is looking. They'll find Trimby, but they can't really get a position here that they feel comfortable with Humanoid sitting over the back of the pit. Let's not forget, Mad have a little bit of poke. Saplings, Kaisa Ws. Can they land them? Can they chunk Fnatic as they try to push this mid tower? The static shift doing work. There's a TP from Niski trying to chunk them out, trying to slow them down. Fnatic trying to brute force their way in to get some vision. Noah Sang waiting over the wall, just barely spotted. Heck Flash now coming in. Gonna kill off the baby here. See if they can get it. It's actually quite crucial to get that down. Looks like it'll live. Trink a key to spot the flank there. Could have been disastrous for Fnatic. Have to be careful He's about overgrouping. These Ivern Brushers are just giving Maokai Saplings more damage. It's a bit of a pain. Fnatic are trying to force their way in. The shields are stopping a lot of these Maokai Mal Sapling damage. But look at where Karsi is. He needs to reposition a bit. I don't know if Mad want to stop this. I think they need to look for the turn. Waiting over the wall. Void Seeker Poke will not connect. Humanoid. Manages Ellie. to find the scatter of the week. Oh, it's tense. No one wants to go in. Fishing for an angle. Crash down now utilized. It's going to be quite some time before Hillisang has it up and available again. I think Fnatic gonna send Humanoid back to mid. He's gonna clear that wave, get mid tower, and then he can always come back into the fight. So Hilly, repositioning now, using those hex gates to get in behind Fnatic and try and keep them on us. Humanoid needs to get back down here. As much as he can get that mid tower, this dragon's gonna get quite low. Mad Lions have so much burst for it. Miser on Trippy, his flash just came back up. Karzy, no flash. Hang. Where's he engaged? Where's Malkai? Back Malkai? in, the Malkai also zoned them away from the objective. They can take this one for free. Do they want to take the fight as well? Scatter the Week comes out. Instantly, the engage comes through. Trippy now trying to disengage as quickly as he can. Chasey, stepping oh, forward. Trippy trying to turn the fight. The carry line to the backside. Karzy still standing. The W goes the wrong way. The feathers come back. Noah, eyes on the prize. Takes down the enemy to carry, but must flash out to safety. And now it is Chasey and Niski. Do they have enough left in the tank? They don't. In comes the Ivor Cube, but they over. One more time from the Azir. 2v2. Does Niski have it in him? He dodged the stun. Yoya doesn't have flash. Is that just going to be a 3 for 3? Are they out? It was a comedy of errors. So many mistakes it amounted to so many different kills. The Alistar W stopped the Kaisa ult. Karsi W'd the wrong way. Then the pullback, he walked into it. But the one who doesn't make mistakes here is Niski. Just stands in front of all of Fnatic and gets the kills, gets the damage. Razor lands the Q at the end to keep it going. But let's look at this fight again. Yeah, Razor fishing over the wall for Hilly means that he can't really get up into the position. Good stone from uh, Humanoid as Chase. He prevents him from the follow-up, so Hilly's alone in the back line. And then watch this from Humanoid as everything goes forward. You get the engage from Trimby. And Humanoid then able to get this big stone onto the back line to set them up. But 
Niski flashing for the perfect time to get onto Noah, onto Trimbium, buy space that was necessary in this fight. You can see the nerves throughout this fight. So many skill shots whiffed, so many opportunities that he could have taken to just solidify it. But yeah, you can see it there. The kill onto Noah with the sapling, the kill with the Leanderis as well. Trimby kind of scratching his head there. That was basically a 5v3, 5v2. And they just lost out on so many kills. They were way too low over chasing. And it ended up in a 3v3 three, three for 3. Now Baron contest. It's Mad Lions that got the dragon, let's not forget. And it's Mad Lions that need to play defensive still, catch these side waves. Vanex Baron isn't the fastest, so as long as they have some vision on this top side, they should be alright to just keep the scaling game going. How far away is Niski from this Rabadons? That was the big thing for me as well. Niski ended up with three kills now at the end of that fight. Meant that he's gonna be in such a good spot. And Carzy, oh, wait. Carzy going in, just trying to one-shot Humanoid. It's a check rivalry, and he's making it happen. Humanoid flashing off oh, the safety. He's alive. Barely hanging on. Redemption saving the day. Do they go Baron? Do they pull the trigger? Humanoid has TP. They must know it, so they can't go for it. Carzy's just used his flash and ult. In exchange for Humanoids, they were once teammates, but now they're enemies in this game five. That could have been the game winning play. You can see Karzi thought he had it, but the healing and shielding from this Ivern keeps that play at bay. Razork, though, stepping forward now, needs to be careful to say that of a potential Baron start, but I think bad lines. They tried to make that moment happen, but just couldn't quite seize it. There's a, a ward up here that uh, Mad Lions haven't really noticed. I wonder if that's something Fnatic can use with Wonder if they uh, try and pull them around this Baron. That's the only real deep ward they've got. You can see Razork and Trimby are going to contest these midwaves and maybe fish for more. Humanoid, of course, ha being forced to use the TP. Only real loss for him in exchange for Karzi's ultimate on the back side of that play. Now chasing on the bottom side, doing what he can to hold the way. Mad Lions, four members strong in the mid lane, ready to push in, fight for mid control, fight for Baron control, because again, while Fnatic's Baron not the fastest, Mad Lions can obliterate that objective with the Kaisa Azir combo. It's very hard for Mad or for Fnatic to try and push this game forward, though. The wave clear for Mad Lions is pretty good when you've got the static shiv as well. But also just the fact that every time they try and approach any of these towers, you're running the risk of Oyoya coming in with the OT, Hillisan coming in on a flank, even putting yourself at risk of Niski going in. So this is where you can kind of see they're getting control and pushing mid, but they're a bit hesitant to suddenly like collapse onto bot tower to try and push an advantage there because they know they're just putting themselves at risk. So it does feel like it's going to be a case of right, let's try and play for these objectives. Look for picks as Mad Lions are trying to take back the vision that we've already established. TP coming in from Niski, just finished the Rabadons. Two items strong on the Azir, big spike. No rage bait for Karzi yet, but see if they want to contest this midway here in Mad Lions. No flash on Humanoid, let's not forget. Yoya's going to pull the trigger on the ultimate. Can they collapse on the mid laner? Off oh, Fnatic, this could be a massive Instant pick. retreat. Humanoid completely and totally isolated here, but no CC connects, so there's no option for Karzi to follow up. Humanoid. Manages to walk away so incredibly close, but Mad Lions can't find the play. They've given up their ultimate, and it's Wonder on the flank. Chasey is not who he wants to find, however. No Malkai ult. Back away. 50 seconds on Dragon, no Malkai ult. Does Fnatic just hold both side vision? Mad Lions could pull a switcheroo on this Nash here. I think El Yoya might be calling it. He's probably going to pink the pit here and try and clear out some vision. They've got Azir Kaisa. If they can get over that wall, El Yoya looking for the crab. Fnatic on the way. He's going to take a flash out to safety. Flash traded. Oh, there's so much of a threat of a Baron here. Fnatic can't give up this top side of the map. 30 seconds on the uh, on the Dragon and the Maokai ults up soon, but now it's an awkward stare down on this top side. Midwave's coming in, though. Both teams will try and get that one pushed, and then we'll see what decisions they make. Eddie just going to be able to back away. Doesn't get hit by human and stun there, but see Mad trying to see if they can keep push over mid side. It's Niski's position, I think, that's just threatening this Baron. The Azir is on the top down. It's done. Gonna connect on the Hillisang, trying to force the fight, but immediately the Q3 coming in from Chasey to stop that one. Niski on the flank. El Yoya as well. Void Seeker not gonna connect. That's big to deny the poke. They can turn to Baron. They can just run up there towards the Nash. This dragon doesn't matter. Fnatic are just playing a game of catch me if you can, chase me into this fog of war. Kaisa, Maokai, are Mad Lions on Nash. They see Niski now contesting this wave, but when they go into the darkness, how do they know when it's gonna start? How many blue orbs does Fnatic have? They can't really have any on solo this because Wunder's already reset. There's one blue orb. One taken down. It's a guessing game. They know where the Kai'Sa is now. I think they should know that the Baron's not being started, so now is when Fnatic can regain control. Now is when they can push them out, and Fnatic should safely be able to go towards this Dragon, but that was a stressful minute or two of play. They can get vision on the Baron, right? But you're going to have to give up all that vision that you've established on the bottom side. Karzi, though, looking for the reset. He was very low on mana, so they want to try and get that back up before they go for this next fight. So Fnatic, at the moment at least, get some vision on towards Baron, and with Karzi resetting, we'll get try. Hilly. Spots them out, but just not a mistake you can afford to make in a game five. He's an easy hex tech. His team's at their tier two or top side. He just walked in. The they all baited the 
on resetting. They're gonna go for Baron Rush. Mad Lions could look to get this down quickly. Carsey's not showing it. It's on vision. It is on vision, but I think they have the damage. Cars needs to get there quickly, though. This is going to get absolutely melted. Where's Wunder? TP in TP the pit. Now coming in. Is this going to work? Maokai all coming out, keeping the jungler out of the pit. They get it! It's insane, but they make it work. Can they, they walk out, out with their life? Chasey now bringing Wonder back over the wall into the waiting arms of Karzy. Karzy throwing down damage. Sterix now procs. Trimby on the way in, but he says not today. Punting the carry back into the rest of his team. Trimby managing to find the stun. Wonder there to follow up. Again, the headbutt into the wall. Fnatic not going to let the bait and switch come through. They turn, they punish Mad Lions, get the Baron, but Fnatic finds so many kills. They have a mid wave as well. Humano needs to push this in and run bot and get a bot wave. They need to try and get two towers off this. Fnatic, they've lost the Baron, they got the Dragon. How many towers can they get? It looks like they might only be able to just get this one in mid. But Hilly, was that, was that planned? Was Hilly running in there saying, guys, go Baron, I'll just run in here and bait them into a false sense of security? Obviously, we would ever know, but you could already see Mad Lions were running towards that top side as soon as Hilly yeah. went for it. I think they were already planning, going, hey, look, we can try and get this, sneak it away. And for one tower, the kills, Mad Lions get the Baron, a Baron buff out at least, but you see here, they just don't realize that they're doing it on the vision. The TP comes through, and at this stage, it's all everyone for themselves just try and get out of the pit but the damage that wonder throws down on Sakarzy sets up perfectly here for the rest of Fnatic as they manage to come over the wall and here Trimby late to the party Insane. but boy does he make an entry. Two flash you know Karzy had both sums there Karzy had both summoners but ends up falling to the Q flash from Trimby and so what happened in the in the long run of this play Fnatic got four kills and a mid tier two Mad Lions got a Baron Fnatic invested a lot of summoners, though. I think only Humanoid has flash up right now. Noah's is down, Trimby's is down, Wonders is down. No TP on their top laner either, but this Baron, they can't really get anything off it, but they've slowed the game down. Difficult situation to be in, most certainly. 3k gold advantage for Fnatic. Three minutes away from that next Drake, either side of Soul Point. Chasing gonna do what he can to hold on here, but the Siege with the Ivern, with the constant spam of the Syndra Dark Spheres and the Scat of the Week is difficult to manage. Mad Lions grouping on top side, just to make sure that the push cannot come through. Wonder. Andy. Looking to lock up Hilly. Root now comes through as well. All eyes on Hillis Hang is once again, he is caught out. He'll leap out over the wall. Uses the ultimate just to be sure, just to make it out safely. But Fnatic cannot break the top lane tier two. I mean, you're realistically not really looking for a fight for Mad Lions anytime soon. So that opening down doesn't really mean anything. But they keep the top tower. They keep themselves in a decent position. And it means that they're able to hold Fnatic at bay again for the moment. Mad Lions need magic pen. There's Merc Treads, there's Spirit Massages, there's Mauls, there's Negatron Cloaks, Lockets. They need Void Staff on this Azir and Kai'Sa, you can see. Lightning Jewel coming through. Yeah. A little and bit of extra pen, Ginsu's passive as well. There's the second one from Niski. I think they realize they need magic pen. Mad Lions, you know, giving up this dragon and getting double Void Staff might just be worth it. Sork Shoes on the Kai'Sa. They're not going to get through this. Frontline, I think, unless they get a lot of uptime, but I don't think they're going to be given any uptime. The amount of CC Fnatic have, the redemption alongside the Spirit Massage, the lack of healing reduction. Mad Lions on the back foot, but if they can get to those breakpoints, the gold won't matter. It's true. It's so difficult, though. If they miscalculate in the fights, the shielding coming in from the Ivern on targets with so much magic resistance is going to make them unkillable, especially for Wonder. Ma going to feel good for Noah, but still overall relatively squishy in this game. They have to be so careful, though, when it comes towards this dragon, because if you overcommit to a side lane and be like, hey, look, we're going to try and get that farm, it's become so easy for Fnatic to commit onto the bottom side of the map to just crack open the base and mad lines. Oh, Sang. He's fishing. He's always fishing, isn't he? A little bit of vision, place down on top of a poke. Just contesting these wolves, dragons up in a minute. Mad lines, what do you do? Do you gamble in and take the dragon fight to try and keep this game in an even state? Maybe find a way to find a miracle fight? Or do you drop this dragon, give them Hextech Soul Point? and wait for those magic pen items. It's a tough call. Uh, Mad Lions, if they get some setup, they can try and poke them out. And then once you've tried your poke, see what you think, you know? If you've got them low, try and fight it. If they're not low enough, just back away. But Mad Lions haven't backed away this series. Even against the odds, they've just gone in and thrown themselves at the wall and seen what's stuck. They don't have time for a reset. This is it for Mad Lions. Fnatic, they just bought. They're coming back, three items completed. Across Look at this. the board, and it's Mad Lions who are trying to compete. Look at this ward that's being pinged there. I think they know there's a ward behind them. Wonder has the TP. Speed up coming through. Trimby, again, looking for the angle. Ward spotted out by that control ward, crucially denying that angle for Trimby to come over the wall. Niski just fought bot wave. He's going to get the reset in here. Does he have Void Staff in base? Mad needs to make sure they don't get engaged on so he can take oh. this base, but they just got stunned. the knockback. Niski, does he have time? He cancels the recall. Key in the fight to come. Trippy finding cards. He isolated cards. He also got a safety. Barely living. Ignite ticking down, but it's not enough. Cards is still standing for now, but no one continues to step forward.
forward, uncontested. Noah making it work. Okay, and the fight all eyes on this key, and he cannot find the angle. Noah still stands. Fanatic, it's over. Are still standing. It's done. Carsey, can he get Razzuk? He's going to get rooted up. He's down. Human on TP mid. It's a five for zero. Matt took the risk, and it didn't work. Fanatic might just win. Matt needed the time, but Fanatic don't give it to them. When the ships are down. changes the unfortunate circumstances fanatic always find a way for the first time since 2021 in miraculous fashion fanatic find themselves in the finals here in montpellier fanatic will face down g2 to fight for it all Even the biggest champ needs a break. I won! I did it! I won the LEC! Finally, after all of these years, if it wasn't for my Malzahar in Game 5, I wouldn't be here! But I am! And I won! So screw you to all the haters! Little moments of joy are not so little. They are pure joy. Therefore, treat yourself. Come to Andalusia. 
Get ready, summoners. League of Legends is now on displate. All your favorite champions on officially licensed metal posters. Stunning details, easy setup, more durable than Malphite. Join 3.2 million satisfied customers and fill your room with arcane energy. Order now at displate.com.
After losing for a very long time, finally starting to win, it made me want to play so much more, and it also made me play better. For the first time since 2021, in miraculous fashion, Fnatic find themselves in the finals. I never give up. I always find some success in the worst scenarios, like this year, completely doomed, spring and winter. Then here we are, worst and finals. Everyone just wants to prove that they are the best in Europe. It feels pretty amazing to go from hard year to a year that is the most successful for me. I got two titles already. I'm on my way to get the third one. Being able to win against Hansama, for instance, an enemy team and getting a trophy again in summer, that would be so many good things that could have happened in one event. Sterix now proc, Trippy on the way in, but he says not today. Punting the carry back, but Fnatic finds so many kills. We want to win not only here, we want to win in Worlds. We don't want to make it competitive. We want to go into Worlds as like a scary looking team. He's gone all out, pulls Tracy underneath the tower, and he does it once more. Can he get the final kill? Looking under the tower, he gets it. I think the best teams keep going, keep going, and they don't give up. And that is why we're so much better than the rest. Trippy finding Karzi, isolating Karzi, Karzi ulting out of safety, barely living. Noah making it work in the fight, but oh! I really want the LEC trophy, I want to leave that. Every Spanish player that has been in LEC, they won the trophy. I was the first Spanish player that came, and after Flaggett and Elia came in, and they both won a trophy, so I actually won my trophy too, you know? Last time I played in the French team was 2017. I lost against G2, Zero Fear, unfortunately, but this time <laughs> I'm with G2. Slowly but surely burning them down, but it's Raz over oh, the back side. Raz over the instant! Fnatic! They just pulled the trigger better! I have to taste the feeling of winning in such a big stage. You just feel so much better because everyone is just very loud. Sometimes when there's a big fight, you can hear it. Even the table sometimes shake. Oh, I don't want to let the chance go to waste. Whenever there was a big crowd, I've always lost. I really want to win at least once. That's really important to make it happen. to the LEC 2023 Grand Final. Nine months of back and forth competition is behind us. And at the end of the road, two old rivals remain ready to fight for the biggest title in EMEA League of Legends here in Montpellier Occitanie. The stage is set for G2 Esports versus Fnatic. Romain is ready as he always is and so are we. My name is Shox and I'm joined here by Ender, by Goldberg and by Dagda at the desk. Odo Wamne is joining us as well. So we have a lot of voices, Dagda, for what is going to be a historical day. I mean, you kind of need it, right? There's so much history between these two teams to then try and sl slot through. Not only the fact, like, you look at it over the course of the last few years, this year alone is enough to write a history book. Absolutely. And it just felt like there was a time where these were the only two teams where it actually mattered as well in that essence. Now we're kind of back to that old historic matchup between DG and Fnatic, and it feels kind of nostalgic. Yeah. We just come back every single time and forget our voices. The people in this arena were a game or an hour away until games yeah. actually start. It is so loud. They were fantastic yesterday and the day before when Carmen Core took EMEA Masters. We are in for a treat today. We are. I'm hoping we get the five again today, but let's look back on how we got here because it's been such a long road this entire year, but specifically then the LEC season finals. Goldberg, let me ask you, has everything gone according to what you expected? I think if you look at the upper bracket, maybe the Mad XL was a bit of an uh, obstacle or at least a surprise coming in from what we saw in summer, but looking at G2 isolated, no, not at all. Them making it to the final was uh, a given and never really a question. The lower bracket does become very interesting though. Fnatic started good, then completely slumped, and there was not a lot of hope going into this lower bracket, but five games, three times in a row, and they're here. And they haven't lost a series, right? They had to do it the hard way down to that lower bracket, so we come into a final. When was the last time? Has this ever happened before? Neither team has actually lost heading in, although Fnatic have made it close. Yes, it was nuts. Yeah, it was absolutely insane. And I mean, look, it feels reminiscent of the run that we saw from Fnatic in 2021, right? Back to back to back, five game grueling series to try and get themselves in towards finals, and they managed to do it one more time. Yeah, and you know, it looked like they were just going to take it 3-0, but then Kasi was making it oh. very difficult for them. I think he had a phenomenal performance 
performance yesterday, getting a pentakill. But it really comes down to this last fight where all the cards are on the table and it's um, Fnatic showing up in it. Yeah, it was so close and it's becoming a bit of their comfort zone, it seems like, in these season finals. That game five also ender, 183 oh, kills yeah. over five games, over 36 kills on average per game. Are we getting the same today? Honestly? I think we have to. <laughs> I, like, Fnatic are coming in off of that momentum, off of just, like, the speed of those matches. <laughs> and any time Fnatic versus G2, like, historically, have matched up in these big best of five series, you think back to a 2019 in Athens, where they go the distance both times as well, in the upper bracket finals, in the actual finals, too. Those games were slugfests, absolute brawls, minute to minute, second to second. We're getting a repeat. Yeah, but I'm even thinking back to last year's summer final with Rogue coming through from the lower bracket into the G2 again. They were the heavy underdogs in that matchup as well. They still managed to come out ahead. So I think today's matchup, well, we do have some predetermined analysis coming in from a lower bracket one. We've seen it so many times. Surprises can happen. Yeah, it's so unquantifiable, that momentum and how these teams are going to treat it. I mean, you could say Fnatic, that is a, a lot of games to play, but they did have like a week in between, but they also had the added stress of then their top laner having to be subbed out for Wonder Dogda, so it's very impressive to say the least. Yeah, 100%. I mean, look, even the fact that you managed to go 10 games over the course this weekend, it's a bit of out of practice, right? Yeah. You actually get to get up and rolling, but this is a team that you've seen so many changes over the course of the year. It's funny we've come full circle, but we've almost come full circle with this fine as well now going up against G2, and they've been absolutely incredible, and they deserve to be here. I'm so excited for uh, this final. Of course, it's not all about the games here, at the, at the uh, event in Montpellier. We also have the LEC Roadshow and the Expo that goes with it. And fans can get closer to their favorite teams through some fun activities. Here's some fun highlights from yesterday with the lovely Janeiro. Hello everyone, Ginny here at the LEC Summer Finals 2023 Expo on Montpellier Studio France, L'Occitanie. Yes, I had to flex my French un petit peu. Last year the Expo was incredible. This time around we have so much more in store. Can't wait to start speaking to some people that are attending. So let's head inside and see what's up. Turn it out. T'as gagné ou bien? D'accord. Donc, t'as pas gagné. Teammate fault. Yeah. <laughs> it's a team's fault. <laughs> like, it's really, really cool to meet a lot of the fans that are going around the place. Like, especially when I go to the LEC, you kind of get to meet a small dribble of them, but something like this is amazing. And the amount of boots as well. I didn't realize just how much was going to be here. Yeah, it's really, really sick. If you guys think G2 is going to win, can you make some noise? <laughs> I'll give you my business card. Thank you so much. You. Uh, do I get the job? Yes. I can't wait to delete Yumi from the game. If you guys think Fnatic is gonna win, can you make some noise? <laughs> Isn't perfect CS 10 CS a minute? Uh, yeah. So if my math is correct, it should be 20 CS by now, but it's nine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> when you have the horse team, you can win a prize. I'm gonna try my best, thank you so much. Turn it out. Okay, if you think Mad Lions is gonna win, you're still making noise. That defeats all purpose. So you think G2 is gonna win? Uh, it's 3 0. 3 0? 3 0. Here, I uh, tattoo G2. Uh, on va fumer Fnatic. Y a aucune blague. Et uh, vraiment, tout bon esquive. I'm assuming you're expecting Fnatic to win this weekend? Yeah, of course. I, I actually took a 24 bus ride from Croatia to here to see them win, so I don't think they're going to lose. We did it! We're going to claim our prize. Can I have the sunglasses? I think it looks really good. Donc, euh, comment vous trouvez l'expo ici bah Pour l'instant, très bien. On vient d'arriver, mais c'est euh, déjà vraiment bien. Il enfin, y a beaucoup de choses à faire, à voir. Tu peux expliquer pourquoi tu as les tattoos ici Avoir un, une bonne ambiance, éviter d'être toxique, ne pas huer sur les équipes ce soir, s'il vous plaît. That's it from us at the LEC Finals 2023 Expo. I hope you guys had just as much fun as I did. I got some cool glasses. I saw forehead tattoos. But now I'm gonna log off and watch some League of Legends.
Love it. Thank you for uh, checking that out, Jeannie. They do look amazing, the sunglasses. I'm actually kind of jealous. Thank you for getting that report. We got to walk around a bit. It was fun. We they didn't give us glasses, day. though. No? That's she forgot her sunglasses. I stole them. Ah, you did. <laughs> okay. What Smart a menace. Man. We'll, of course, have a, a lot more fun today in the grand final. And everyone watching can actually join in on the LEC Bingo presented by Santander. You can head over to lecfinals.com slash bingo to generate your random. Wait. How You're, random is it? Is it, it different from yours? It's, it's different. Yeah, yeah. You've got like fan in co oh. cowbell costume. Yo, oh. that dude is awesome, by the yeah. way. A cowbell guy? Wherever he is, I, I love you, man. You're awesome. Yeah, he's, oh, he's always, he's been coming for years. Yeah, the it's amazing. No, the no, cow. The cow. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Anyways, if you get the bingo, you can f uh, send in your completed form, your card on X with the hashtag LEC Bingo with a chance to earn some very, very cool prizes. Can we win? My producer said he's buying me a beer if I win. So let's go, team. I still want the sunglasses. <laughs> let's go, team. Um, anyway, tonight we are wrapping up the 2023 LEC season. So let's take a minute to look back at some of the best moments, starting with the fans and their favorites. Okay, so the ping pong in like Fnatic's game was amazing. And they did the ping pong. When uh, Fnatic do their move uh, against Casper. Oh, it's it's back, it's the combo. It's, it. What? It's ping pong. Oh Fnatic making it to finals, climbing all the way. I think they had a 5.7% chance to make it. They did it. And they're gonna win. <laughs> the finals against Mad in Winter Split, where Caps caught out El Yoya just before Baron, and then like he did like the, the big ult, like <laughs> like down to down. So go back to pick up the wave, and it is everything that they could have hoped for. Well, it was when PDS was up 2-0 against Mad Lions in the, the split finals, uh, right before uh, well disaster struck. PDS again. Just an unstoppable force. I'm a huge Hillisang supporter, as you can see from the unicorn. So probably uh, mad winning in spring. It was nice to see Hillisang winning again. Fnatic BDS last week, game five. You know, hate match. Completely unexpected for that dragon fight just before the game finished. All the hype, feeling the Fnatic finally qualifying. But yes, all the pressure and things. Finally making it to Montpellier. Made the whole year worth it. Wonder by so much time to rest the team, the GA. Not even Brock yet. The Croc still standing for so damn long. It was probably gathering all of my friends together and uh, watching the uh, Winter Split Finals uh, and seeing G2 hoist the trophy. G2! Um, just all of it. It was all so bloody good. I feel you. Just all of it. Any, anything yeah. that jumped out to you? It's hard, you know, it's like it's like a blur. It was all fun. The moment we're living in right yes. now. Wow. wow. It's always yes. the best. The last guy gave me crap about the rugby. So he I'm did? kind of iffy about it. Yeah, he's from okay. South Africa. But no, I like honestly it's really <laughs> it's it's been amazing. Like it's like I don't know. For me it's it, this is my first year in the LEC, so getting to interact with all the fans, getting to work with you guys, getting to to, well, Aww. to have you guys be so welcoming when I came in and everyone involved as well, thank you. It's been absolutely incredible. So for me, this to go through all the ups and downs, the craziness that this year has been in LEC, both from a team perspective and now getting to cop, to cop it off with G2 versus Fnatic, it's just been absolutely incredible. It's a load of fun, isn't it, GB? Absolutely, but I also think just a general, um, say what you want about a new format. I think it was really crazy to see some of the rises of the teams you did not expect come through. I think for me, specifically in Spring Split, both with BDS and uh, Astral is showing up. I did not expect that. When I saw this format come through in the beginning, I thought to myself, great, I don't have to watch BDS and Astralis. Boy, did it shut me up when yeah. it didn't happen and they actually decided to perform with it. And, you know, as disastrous at the, as the Spring Split then ended for BDS, I thought it was a really cool story, a really cool run, how dominant they seem in that period of time. But it could have been any team almost in different parts yeah. of, of the era of some of the splits we've had. It was just a topsy-turvy year all around. You even have like a Mad Lions going from like almost not making playoffs <laughs> to winning in spring, taking down BDS in the reverse sweep. You have an XL that almost didn't even have a chance in playoffs. They finished second in the regular season. Oh, do I'm just right so, there? Yeah. Good job, Odo. Um, just yeah, just a wild year, wild year all around. Yeah, indeed. Uh, also, I think on-camera shenanigans. Maybe? I just thought of a, a better thing, though, because, like, forget Excel. We really don't care about them. Uh, <laughs> my favorite moments of this year was we just got to torture you, and I thought that was awesome. <laughs> that was really, really yeah, great. I think we so have some... Yeah, fun as well. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and look at it again, because I let's relive it. Amazing.
I mean, yeah, I, I absolutely love my producers and the things we get to do, all the things we're going through. It's what was, what was the most painful thing? Definitely the electrocution, I think. That was, I mean, not painful, but it was just weird with not being in control of your arm. <laughs> we appreciate it, and it was very entertaining to be. You had a great uh, year in the LEC as well. Uh, so had some players, namely Mickey X, because last week he was crowned the MVP of the season, and we'll hear from him on stage in just a few minutes. But first, let's look back at his amaz amazing rather career in the LEC. My first year in the league, I just joined Splice, and I joined a team with four Danish people, and Yamato, I guess, Swedish. I felt just everyone was just good. It felt quite easy to play the game because I didn't really have any pressure at all. So I just kind of got picked up from solo queue. Mickey X, when I brought him in to my team back in 2016, he was a rookie. I found him in solo queue because I believe that he could actually meet the standard of what it meant to be competing at the highest level in Europe. When we actually got the Worlds, that was a bit more stressful because then I'm representing the region. All the look down on the target. That was Mata gets hit. Oh, this is a bit risky though. Big going to run low on HP, but the shots are coming through. He's got one more ball in the chamber. Uzi's going to block it up. The bounce comes through. Can he get a The grid. He's got no HP, but Uzi gets the play, and Mickey X gets him back. My first year with Hans, that was the Misfits. I was very impressed how he clicks his mouse and how fast he moves everything. Like, i never seen anything like it. We also got along very well together. It's pretty nice, despite not making it very far. <laughs> Down to bottom side. All right, Mickey's in a lot of trouble, but take a look at that. The combination of Zaya and Rakan means Mickey stays alive. Feather storms come out. Hansom has got the ability to root some people down. Manages to lock in Cabo. Now Hansom oh. is it for his life. Mickey buys enough time for the rest of this. They got it. Oh my god! They are still not dead. So 2019, I guess winning my first split was very nice in Rotterdam. That was quite emotional, so that was a bit crazy, yeah. And then winning MSI was pretty crazy. They find that first stun, they find some daily, but Ignite means he will get the solo kill, the 1v2! And Caps tries it for Jensen, and here comes Mickey! Through dedication, discipline, and most importantly, an unwavering love for the game, Mickey has done more than just hit the bar. He has become the bar, he has become the standard, and Mickey, keeps making us all proud. I feel like I haven't reached the best support in Europe right now. I feel like Mickey is doing a great, great job. Mickey is the European support. The last time, the last time a support got the MVP title, Mickey, was in 2015 and it was Yellow Star. Watching this footage right now on the screen and getting this achievement finally, how does that make you feel? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty nice thing to get. Um, fuck. <coughs> I feel like... <laughs> It feels a little bit weird because, well, I think just gameplay-wise, I didn't really feel like I did anything special to deserve it. But I think at least this year was probably my best year so far, and I did put a lot of effort into it. So it feels nice to be rewarded with this. But uh, yeah, I think for the next one, I'll make sure to also make it so that I'll feel like I earned it. You deserve it completely, Mickey. It's been. They all agree. <laughs> it
it is actually crazy to realize that it took such a long time for another support to get MVP. And we often hear that it is such an underappreciated role. What does it, why do you think it makes it so hard and what does it take to stand out as a support, especially? Well, I think it is pretty difficult to stand out as a support and I don't really think I did that good job of it. I think it was mostly because um, I think since it's the reward for the whole year and we've been on top for the whole time, I guess, we won a lot. So I think usually the support of the winning team looks like he's inting the least or makes the less, less, least amount of mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of how, yeah. But yeah, when I thought I, when I thought I was going to get it at some point, I thought I was going to stand out by either doing a lot of 2v2 kills or sick engages or just like, yeah, roaming around the whole map, which I'm not sure if I did that match off, but I think that's what you can do as a support to stand out. But yeah. Yeah, I think it speaks for the achievement, everything that you've built for years, everything that you've been doing for years, because it takes so much to stay at the top, to keep on pushing yourself, challenging yourself. And today, you make it another time to the Grand Finals with G2, getting this jersey again, facing off against Wonder, reunited with Hans Sama in the bot lane. There's so much history for you around this matchup. What are you anticipating the most when it comes to this final? Um, well, since all the other uh, series went five games, we're hoping to make it a quick one. <laughs> and uh, so I can send Wunder back to vacation really fast. Strong words from the MVP. Miki, thank you so much. Montpellier, one more time for the MVP of the 2023 LEC season, Miki! Thank you. And Shox, back to you. Thank you so much, Lore. Oh, what a moment. We had it all. He said his signature, yeah, and then he said, oh, and then. He said know, that other thing. That other thing, then he. And then he made fun of Wonder, said he was sending him home. Of wonder. This, is, this was a perfect interview, but yeah, I mean. The bingo. It was, oh. <laughs> I don't think it's on No, there. Mickey swearing is not on my bingo card. <laughs> Anyways, a quick reaction because we do have to move on, but what a wonderful year for him. And I think especially when you see that video of the road he's traveled over all the years, it's kind of insane. The road he, he's been on since like the splice days all the way back in the day going internationally, then on to G2, the full circle coming back to play with G2 again this year next to Han Sama. It doesn't get any better than that. And the fact that he's elevated to have the best year of his entire career is just the cherry on top. Yes, wonderful to see. Of course, he has to be getting ready for that grand final. We're going to take a breather, but we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
sommes en direct du LEC Expo ici à l'occasion de la finale du LEC à Montpellier. Évidemment, je suis avec Arnaud et Pascal de Fortige. Comment ça va Ça va bien, depuis ça va bien depuis, euh, depuis deux ans. Oui, oui, oui. Tu ouais. vas bien Content d'être là Très bien. <rire> ça, ça représente quoi en fait pour Fortige d'être présent à un événement comme celui-ci Qu'est-ce que vous pensez de l'ambiance de la mise en avant aussi de votre travail bah, C'est un, un, un moment privilégié déjà euh, ouais. d'être euh, invité ici, de pouvoir avoir accès au backstage, euh, de pouvoir voir tout, ce que, tout le travail que Riot euh, avec les Golf Legends offre au public. Euh, nous on essaye de donner beaucoup de choses et, euh, et c'est super, super quoi. C'est l'occasion aussi de rencontrer euh, nos fans quelque part, c'est ça qui est aussi euh, bon, on vient arriver, on très intéressant <rire> pour nous. <rire> et on célèbre aussi euh, les 10 ans de, bah, de Jinx, ça ouais. va être son anniversaire d'ici euh, peu. Et Get Jinx, c'était un petit peu le premier projet de Fortige de musique vidéo que, euh, qui a été en fait en collaboration avec Riot. Est-ce qu'on peut revenir un petit peu sur le processus créatif de Get Jinx Qu'est-ce que ça représentait pour vous Quelle était l'idée derrière Que ce soit narratif ou même construction du clip en soi bah, c'est euh, euh, Christian de chez Riot qui, est, qui, est venu nous, qui nous a trouvé quoi, quelque ouais. part euh, pour, euh, pour euh, commencer ce projet et, euh, et nous euh, on, on venait en partie aussi de la, du clip vidéo déjà à la base, on avait déjà réalisé des clips pour euh, des artistes euh, euh, musicaux euh, plus ou moins connus, euh, donc on avait l'habitude aussi de traiter l'image et le son. Christian et lui, il s'occupait de la musique à Riot. Il n'était pas du tout euh, chef de projet, euh, on va dire... Euh, pas producteur à ce moment-là. Ouais. Pas producteur à ce moment-là. Christian, c'est euh, le showrunner euh, phare de, de League of Legends, enfin de Arkane, pardon. <rire> de Arkane. Et euh, du coup, euh, ça nous a paru, euh, tous les deux, entre Forti et Riot, euh, déjà le concept de faire un clip vidéo autour d'un personnage, euh, c'était un concept euh, original, quoi. c'était ouais. euh, le, le principe déjà abordé euh, au tout début du projet avec Jinx, et euh, du fait que ce soit un, un, un clip vidéo, on était un peu plus libre au niveau de la narration, et euh, nous ce qui nous intéressait c'était plus de dépeindre euh, différentes facettes euh, du personnage euh, euh, complexe euh, de Jinx. Euh, donc le clip vidéo, il, ça, ça se... Comment dire ça... C'est en général, c'est un, un, un moyen d'expérimenter les choses. Ouais. Et c'est vrai que quand on est arrivé, à, quand, quand Christian est venu nous voir, moi je pense que tu as, as mis juste, c'est la liberté. Ça. Dès le début, on, a, on, on savait qu'on avait déjà un client euh, dingue, et en plus qui avait nous laissé une liberté euh, totale. Et, et du coup, c'était vraiment <coughs> un, un, un des... Un, un vrai moment, un premier moment, on s'est dit tiens, on va un se faire plaisir, faire une, une, une belle vidéo, libre, que demander, que demander plus. C'est devenu phénoménal et vraiment il y a une patte fortiche à chaque fois dans, ce que, dans toutes les collaborations que vous pouvez faire avec Riot et je pense que ça s'est ressenti dans les retours de la communauté au final. Vous vous attendiez à un tel, euh, une, un tel retour de la communauté, le fait que les gens euh, répondent autant ah non, à, à Gedjou, comment vous l'avez vécu C'est incroyable, moi je me rappelle que nous on regardait euh, heure par heure les, les, le nombre de <rire> vues euh, changer, on, a, on hallucinait quoi. C ça a été, euh, je crois qu'un... Bon c'était pas pour Gadget mais pour euh, celui juste après euh, Warrior, je crois qu'on est rentré, du, euh, de, on a pris l'avion et quand on est redescendu, euh, j'ai allumé mon téléphone, il y avait tellement de messages que euh, tu vois j'avais plus porté de... Donc euh, c'est un, 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 un truc incroyable, je pense que c'est même... Euh, tiens, je pense que si aujourd'hui on en est là et qu'on a fait Ar Arcane, c'est aussi pour le soutien des fans, les retours qu'il y avait sur, euh, sur, euh, sur Internet et tous les fans qui demandaient d'avoir de, une série euh, de ce style-là. On vous en remercie. Et, ils ont, et, voilà, et Riot a entendu les fans, a écouté les fans et, et nous on les remercie beaucoup. Ouais. Ah, non, ce qui est agréable, c'est... Euh, euh, en fait, on... Quand on arrive à se faire plaisir, on en est à un point où quand on arrive à se faire plaisir nous-mêmes, on sait qu'on va faire plaisir aux fans. Euh, enfin, on arrive, à, on a un lien un peu particulier où, où euh, on, enfin, tout le monde se fait plaisir. C'est-à-dire, c'est euh, nous et les fans, et c'est agréable de, de, de faire des, des projets. Euh, dans ce sens-là. Bah écoute, j'espère que vous allez continuer de nous faire rêver pendant des années en tout cas. Merci encore hein, euh, d'avoir pris le temps de discuter avec moi et de revenir sur ce, bah, ce magnifique projet qui était euh, Get Jinx. Et, euh, et on va ouais, regarder. Bon, bah, on viendra fêter les 20 ans. <rire> on vous attend dans 10 ans. <rire> avec d'autres collaborations, euh, évidemment, euh, entre-temps. Merci, hein, Pascal et Arnaud. Et, euh, nous, bah, on va regarder justement une vidéo pour.
pour euh, se remémorer ses 10 ans de Kate Jinx et euh, la création de cette vidéo. On vient juste après. 10 ans. Ça fait que 10 ans. J'ai l'impression que c'était... ça fait longtemps. Les mecs ont le, le regard perdu qui se refont 10 ans dans leur tête, tu sais. <rire> On avait produit un petit clip pour des copains. Ça nous avait permis de tester des petits trucs un peu techniques, de faire du caméra mapping. Cette vidéo, Christian Linke est tombé dessus, je sais pas comment. On ne saura jamais. Il a essayé de nous contacter en direct. Qui nous ça... répondait pas au téléphone à l'époque. Ouais. <rire> ça fait longtemps qu'on faisait quand même un peu ce style mélange ouais. de D3D, mais ouais. là, on avait l'habitude de faire nos films un peu entre nous. C'était la première fois qu'on montait une vraie équipe en se disant on va se donner les moyens de faire un truc à notre style. On avait le design de Jinx, une gamine qui s'amuse avec des jouets qui sont mortels. Donc elle fait tout péter, mais elle ne le fait jamais de façon commune. Elle était déjà dans une psychose, quoi. On s'est dit, bah tiens, pourquoi on ne ferait pas un clip vidéo avec différentes facettes de Jinx présentées dans différents euh, tableaux. On appelait ça des tableaux. On savait ce qu'on voulait faire, mais ce n'était pas évident hein, de trouver la façon de le faire, quand même. Des effets de cinéma. Caméra à l'épaule, du flou, du motion blur, des filets, des travelling avant, dans des films peintures. 2D, dans des peintures. Comment composer en 2D un truc qui est fait en 3D bah, Soit c'est peint, soit c'est dessiné, soit c'est de la 3D. Il fallait trouver le petit truc. Et... On n'a pas trop tâtonné parce qu'on n'avait pas trop le temps, finalement, en se disant, tiens, bah, on va jouer un peu plus sur l'image et sur les tableaux. Quoi. Là, on voulait vraiment détacher le FX2D. C'est pour ça qu'on allait chercher tous ces gens à FX2D pour avoir ce, ce côté explosion, couleur, etc., quoi, qui caractérise le personnage. C'est là qu'on a rencontré l'équipe qui fait les FX2D maintenant sur Arkane. Donc, on a fait les premiers tests visuels. On se disait, elle peut regarder la caméra. Je disais, tiens, ça peut être marrant qu'elle soit pas assise sur la bombe parce qu'elle a un peu punk. Après, on a essayé de caractériser le personnage. Elle fait sport de la lèvre. Et au final, après, tous les cosplayers sont tout le temps en train de faire. Ah, celui-là, celui-là, ouais. On a refait 10 000 fois. La caméra du début, là. C'est Jérôme qui a fait ouais. tout <rire> Moi, j'avais fait de la texture dessus. J'avais fait la texture sur les bombes. Celui où on a le plus galéré, c'était pour finir un peu le clip, là, avec le travelling avant, là, le, singe. Le, le singe géant qui arrivait derrière, là. Ce qui paraîtrait pas insurmontable aujourd'hui. Non, 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 mais c'était dans le montage pas pourquoi, et tout ça ouais. marchait pas. C'est nous qui avons ramené l'idée du singe, enfin, je crois. Hein. Ouais, ouais, tout à fait. On disait, tiens, il faudrait qu'il y ait un petit animal euh, qui exprime un peu la folie. Ce personnage, il a remarqué les esprits des joueurs, même la série Arcane. Et à la fin, on n'avait pas de board. On a filmé à Hervé pour avoir le, le timing. Moi, je trouve qu'il est un peu vide. Oui, après, il y a encore des choses. Moi, la scène où tout explose autour d'elle, là, il y a des plans qui restent très quali. Après, bien sûr, qu'il y a des petites choses qu'on a approfondies au fil du temps, qu'on changerait, mais ça reste... C'est vraiment du do-it-yourself et du bricolage, mais le style était déjà là. Et ce qui est cool, c'est la liberté qu'on a eue et la, la rencontre avec Riot, qui a débouché sur, sur Arkane. <rire> Well, Jinx has left her mark on the game for the last 10 years. Thank you so much to Fortiche for an amazing trip down memory lane. And who knows, maybe we'll see Jinx make an appearance in the opening ceremony. Here, though, we see the winners of the Kit Kat Cosplay Contest from the LEC Expo, showcasing their amazing costumes on the big stage in Montpellier, Occitanie. Congratulations to Keely's Cosplay as Dragon Slayer Diana in first place, CK Cosplay as Arcane Vi in second place, and Stay Moo Cosplay as Porcelain Lissandra in third. These all look amazing. Congrats. And out of the 50 contestants, they won the prize of 4,000 euros for first place, 2,500 uh, 2, rather for second, and 1,500 for third. And
and a gift bag with peripherals sponsored by KitKat. And now they also get their big moment on stage ahead of the grand final between G2 and Fnatic. I was leaning in, I really wanted to see uh, what they looked like. Where and it was, was your stock on Yinori? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it didn't make the cut, you know, I, I submitted. Uh, then I had to play some games in the, in the summer, uh, in the summer finals, in the season finals, so. My schedule is a little bit packed, you know, but if I knew, if I didn't make some uh, the season finals, then I would have probably been here on stage. Yeah, well, I'm glad you joined us, Odo, because we're about to get into talking about this grand final, Fnatic versus G2 Esports. And let's start by setting the stage as to exactly why this is such an important and historical matchup, Dagda, in the LEC history. I mean, it's... It's kind of become the go-to marquee matchup in the LEC. Even when G2 joined way back in the day, this kind of very quickly became the finals that we we're going to see all the way through 2019 up till 2020. It felt like the amount of talent that came through these two teams that grew up and then went on to, I mean, even cross borders and become traders across these two teams <laughs> has made this such an incredible matchup. And today they own so many of the titles that are at home in the LEC. But it just felt like there was a time where no matter what happened in regular season, these were the only two that you were counting on making that finals as well. 2018, the year of Fnatic. 2019, the year of G2. 2020, once they close by, but still G2 leading ahead. But in the prime of both organizations. It's just always been them too, hasn't it? Yes, and I think especially between 2018 and 2020, and Oduwamne yourself as a competitor, it must have been frustrating. It was always them. Yeah, it was always tough because it felt like in any of the year I was competing, it felt like you have to play catch up to either G2 or Fnatic, you know? It became a lot easier after 2021 where they had a little bit of a draw, both G2 and Fnatic. They were not so dominant. Their roster wasn't as dominant as it was in, uh, in recent history past then. So it became, you know, a lot more of the show between Mad and, and everyone else. You know, it was up for grabs, but before that, it was it was just impossible. And you also just see how many of the historical players who have etched their name in history have come through the ranks of respectively Fnatic and G2. Yeah, I mean, the fact that these are the two teams that represented Europe in like world finals in years past as well like they have been at the pinnacle of european league of legends for such an incredibly long time and the fact that look g2 have managed to remain at the top says a lot about this team but the fact we've seen fanatic now rising back up <laughs> once more to find themselves in the season finals that's not distracting at all can you get one up here? That'd be kind of lovely. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. Don't uh, tempt him. Uh, Romain, of course, who, if you're not familiar, of course, manager for G2, always does something special in France, doubly a special. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. I, I mean, I also just think coming back to it, like the team hopping between two te these two teams has also been quite interesting. Just Wunder and Cavs, uh, even Reckless as well, going back and forth as well. So just the fact that there's been so many storied players that's not only performed on one of them, but then had to swap around and it's oh. completely changed the dynamic of them. I think Caps, of course, um, has been the most impressive out of all the different players on that roster as well. Yeah, I 100% agree. I, it just feels like it's, even like we're looking at the newer talent coming up, like players like Yike, this is where you go to. These are the teams that you kind of, you pick your side and you want to try and play for these if you want to play at the highest level. And it's incredible to see that once more we're getting these two teams in the finals. Yes, it is. G2, of course, solidified themselves as vehemently the best team in the LEC in 2023. There were a lot of steps to it, though, Odoamne, but I think overall uh, they stand head and shoulders above everyone else if you look at the competition. Yeah, I think they're quite uh, innovative with the style that they're playing right now. I fe it feels like they're really suffocating all the teams that they're playing against because um, they have this, this this style where they're just like playing dominant lanes, strong lanes, with, uh, with Yag looking to facilitate everyone. So. It feels like every other team in the league is playing catch up to them. It is, and it was a road because in winter they aren't necessarily playing like they are now. No, absolutely not. I mean, in winter it was a very much win lane, win game kind of style. And that's really where Hans Sommer Straven was uh, leaving his mark. That's where we saw the carry champions come through from Yai when nobody else was playing them. And they just had the philosophy that if we could beat them in the early game, well, we could just straight up win the game. Anything else did not have to matter. And at the time, the teams of Europe weren't really standing up to them either. Yeah, and that's where you could just, as you say, snowball this completely out of control. And I think that became synonymous with G2, right? Driving bands right, left, and bloody center to try and keep this team under control. But it felt inevitable. Yike was taking over. Y Hansama and Mickey were having a fantastic time, and it felt like it was just this 
tidal wave that was trying to overtake him in the early game. But as we progress then into spring, we start to see that shift. And particularly after MSI, we start to see them change into a kind of a new form where they start to figure out how they can then not only play that style, but many others as well. Yeah, it was uh, really interesting to see. It was kind of like a glimpse of what G2 will oh, show us this year, because starting with winter, um, all the teams were kind of struggling to find this this identity and G2 was just, you know, stacked talent in every single position. So it was really easy for them to steamroll through games and going into some, into spring split, you saw a lot of teams starting to forge this identity, you know, playing for each other, uh, looking to facilitate each other and G2 kind of fell a little bit behind. So they got a little bit exposed at MSI, but then leading into summer, they've been picking it up, you know, and really solidifying them themselves as a as a great team with a strong identity. Yeah, and I think what's been through uh, true rather of G2 historically is that they will try to improve even if they're at the top. And I think that's something that we saw from the coaching staff this year, specifically after MSI, saying this is not enough for us. We need to diversify the way we approach these games, especially when we're going to go up against LCK and LPL competition, because it's not going to cut it, right, Dagda? And I think that's a trait they've always had. I would even say Fnatic and G2 are both two teams that have always withstood all those challenges. And I mean, we even heard Dylan Falco talk about an euphoria where he was like, look, we came off of MSI and we're like, we want to slow the pace this down. We want to try and learn what we can from how the LPL and the LCK teams are playing. And we got to see that shift, right? Kogma Brahm suddenly coming up on the bot side. They were like, we're going to play this slow. We're going to play at our side lanes. We're going to make sure that we can have this suffocating solve that makes it so difficult for you in the long run to actually beat us both early and now late as well. Yeah, because it, it really does come back to Odo's point as well with the rest of the teams caught up. So you couldn't just beat them by being better in lane. You had to outsmount them up the map. And you can see in a situation like this as well, where they just completely open it up. They force you into a Baron. They force you to make decisions that not just based about feeling or playing the game right now. You need to have an answer for G2 when they play the game. And I think that's it. It's the fact that they've now created this suffocating style where it feels like no matter what you try to set up, they have an answer for you. Every time you try to go to an objective, they're coming in from left, right, and behind you. You don't know what you're supposed to do against this team because they're so creative. And that is such a terrifying prospect when this is the team you have to take down if you want to try and take this championship home. Yeah, and that's the ideal way to play League of Legends because it's such a, it's such a fluid game. There's so many options and a lot of teams, the way they approach practice is, you know, they go into review, they look, okay, in this situation, how are we going to react the, uh, next time this thing happens? But G2 kind of takes it a step further because they're like so fluid, they, they always try to catch you between plays and you never have this answer prepped because they're just thinking ahead. So, so they, they understand each other so well, you know, when someone makes a different different plan to make a different play, everyone knows how to adapt in split second decisions. Yeah, working like a hive mind, very much so. I think maybe a bit like Fnatic yesterday when they went into those team fights. And let's contrast this story, Goldberg, to what we saw out of Fnatic where it was just um, roster change galore, but in the end it worked out, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can say that. It was a bit of a road, and you can see it even on your screen right now. There's been so many substitution to finally get to the end product of where we currently are. And Fnatic sucked in winter. Fnatic <laughs> sucked in spring. It was really an only in summer when the substitutions came through that they uh, that they started performing. Yeah, and uh, we, we saw, you know, it became so dominant. It, they became all of a sudden this scary Fnatic that we've seen the years before. So it looked like going through all of these substitutions didn't really matter because they had solid pieces everywhere. Trimby came from Trimby came from Koi. Razor stepping up, it became a meta that was suitable for him. Humanoid waking up and finally showing why he's been such a such a feared mid laner in the league for for the, for the past year. So. Yeah, playing Fnatic at the beginning of Summer Split was not a fun experience. So I, I'm glad it, it transitioned so well into into this uh, into this finals. Yeah, we can't forget they were actually good at the beginning of summer. It's only as of late that we lost fate, but I guess the fans got it back in the end. Let's talk a little bit about the minutia of the games that we're going to see. Shout out to Ender for reintroducing that word yesterday. <laughs> what a flex. Anyways, let's talk about the early games. And I think when we have the context of what we saw at the season final so far, but especially right here in Montpellier, where things were so aggressive, is that going to be what we expect today as well? I mean, if you're fanatic, I feel like you have to, right? If you end up letting G2 take control of the game, they're going to play it. They can play it slow. They can play for the gold leads that they, you can see on your screen there. And then they'll just take over in the later game team fights where they have great objective setup. I think if you're Fnatic, I want to see them go hyper aggressive. Maybe we still see a slightly slower one with something like a Karthus coming out for Razor. But I feel like you need to get the ball rolling early against G2 or it's just done for. Yeah, I completely agree. But I also think it's how they temper themselves when doing that. You can see it on the stats right now. While G2 get a lot of kills, they also don't die a lot by getting those kills in early game. Fnatic is a bit of a different story because they will go in for these risky plays 
place, and they will also die a lot because of it. So they haven't really found the right boundary between what's an overcommitment and what's a perfectly committed play to go for. And it's not like it's anything new for Fnatic, <laughs> but it's certainly something that they need to polish if they want to beat a team like G2 in the early game. Yeah, I think you guys hit the nail on the head. I would love to see a little bit more of a tempered uh, aggression sort of approach because I feel like they really like to take these plays and they take uh, these fights. They like to take a lot of fights, but the way they have been approaching objectives, it's been both a blessing and a curse because there's some <laughs> situations where, where I look at it and I'm like, there is no way they can walk in here, but then they still do it because they are so eager to look for fights. But I think a lot of the fights they've been taking have been, have been great. It's just, I would really like them to be a little bit more patient because this style that they're also uh, taking with their jungler flicks and everything, I feel like it can work. It's, it's going to be something that will upset G2 today, but they really need to focus a little bit and find better angles to take these fights. I know, we were talking backstage, you made a great word for it. It was like Razark was the engine of Fnatic, right? And I think when we look towards him, it's about trying to see if you can get him to continue that pressure in the early stages and find that success, whether that is with lane supporting him on having these more aggressive picks that can bring out something like a Talia or a Karthus where he's able to pop off. But on the opposite side, you got Yike as well, who is no pushover at all when it comes to those jungle matches. Yeah, I think the, the main difference between the two junglers, at least in season finals, is that Razark has made some of these unorthodox junglers work, the AP junglers work, while Yike, when he's been trying out the Fiddlesticks, when he's been trying out the Evelyn, hasn't. But I really think a lot of that comes down to how the team has drafted around them, because it's not like we haven't seen Razzok, Sopha, and the Karthus, but it's when the entire team composition of Matic is designed to set up ahead, like his Talia game was yesterday as well, where it's just set up for success. This is so, so absolutely, cool. Absolutely. He even said, like, oh, Wonder didn't matter. I already, like, owned the play. He did. So. He did. <laughs> and, and this is where he thrives. Oh, it's amazing. Razzok, of course, is making it to his very first LEC final and for Yike, he was Rookie of the Split, and we cannot forget this was a gamble at the beginning of the year, um, but they gave Yike a lot of agency. Even now in Season Finals, he gets to try a Velvet. He gets to try a Fiddlesticks. That is something insane to see. What's also, I think, cool is that we saw Yoya versus Razor yesterday. He had the Rookie of the Split of yesteryear versus the most recent version, and now you get Razor versus Yike. The, the, the mantle is getting passed on. Also, just both of them looking for their first titles here, right? Obviously, yep. Yike only just coming in, but we saw Razor talk about yesterday how important this was for him, but I do agree with you. I think you're going to see a lot of flexibility coming in in the jungle, whether it's going back towards, you know, the two trees in the Ender, or in the Ender? <laughs> <Is that there? laughs> or in the, uh, the uh, Maokai, or in the Ivern. And then instead as well, if you end up looking towards things like, okay, well, we can go towards a Belvet, maybe not so much an Evelyn, but a lot of these more carry oriented picks that I won't be surprised to see like, trying to respond with when Razark brings out. Yeah, and I'm really, really excited for this jungle matchup because Razor has been, what, the rookie of the split two years ago, mm -hmm. maybe? And it, it, he kind of had a little bit of a fall from, from grace, but leading up to, to this finals, this whole uh, summer finals playoffs, he has been he has been great, he has been ramping up so much, and there's, there's been sure a lot of shows between uh, Trimby being great, Noah being great, Humanoid rising to form. But Razor is a silent hero here, because looking at him, at the beginning of the year, he hasn't been nearly as good as he has been now. It really feels like... This is his split to win. Yes, and he is peaking, it seems like, as well. Talking about the peak, let's look at the top side. Broken Blade is up versus Wonder. A matchup, of course, we've seen in the past, but it has such different connotations today. But Broken Blade, he's been a monster this split. I mean, Broken Blade has just straight up been the best top laner uh, of the league this year. And they, they, it is a mismatch coming into today. Despite how good Wonder has been and has scaled with the amount of games he's gotten in the lower bracket, they play a different style as well. Wonder's really only been aggressive on the Renekton, but even that Next and blind pick won't work against a guy like Broken Blade, who's got the Swain, who's got the Clet, a straight up answers to it. Wunder usually plays the weak side, while Broken Blade don't mind taking a strong side approach either. So I think there's a bit of a mismatch in the top lane. Yeah, I'm really excited for this because Wonder has been uh, has been stepping up. You have seen him ramping up through, throughout uh, his last series against BDS. He's been starting slow, not having the greatest performances, but already by game five we've seen him step up. And now against against Matt Lyons, he he was dominant. He was a lot a lot better than Chasey in the lane, but now. Now you're facing a different beast, you know, because you're not playing all of these meta champs. He's, you already see PP, you know, stepping up, being great, showing up all these, you know, new meta picks that he just bring out of nowhere. And yeah, it, it, said, it's, in rehearsal, you said you're not playing against Chasey or Adam anymore. That's what you said. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I have to keep it a little bit thin, you know. You but, uh, but yeah, it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be easy because you don't know what to what to expect from BB because no one expected the Swain last week, you know, no. especially into a pick like Renekton that is traditionally so lane dominant. So now I'm I'm excited I'm excited for what BB has been cooking today because I also want to see Wonder's response because he has been really good. Yeah, I mean, it's the top father, 
right? Like, uh. we've seen the solo carry performances on the Swain. I'm thinking of the Kled earlier in the year as well. Like, Broken Blade has been so dominant, especially in this latter half of 2023. But I think you have to take into consideration how much this matchup means for him, right? He is the heavy favorite. We all understand that. But he is going up against Wonder, who was the best top laner in Europe on the best European team that we've ever produced here. And he's doing it in a final. Wonder's coming back. The odds are all stacked against him. But for Broken Blade to take him down here at the pinnacle of European League of Legends is legit. And it's unreal. Oh, it is so cool to see. I feel so honored to be here to witness it, these two versus each other. Um, let's get into a bit more even of the nitty gritty. And that is then looking at the ban strategy that Fnatic may have. Because we cannot forget, Fnatic showed all their cards. In fact, they showed three full decks yesterday. They did. <laughs> Meanwhile, the, the one deck, the G2, you have to deal with is the Draven, right? You got to remove that. You know, you throw the cards on the ground, you slide the Draven pick away because Han Sama is just a completely different animal on that Draven. The problem is, though, even if you ban away the Draven, he can still destroy you in lane with the Kalista. He can still outscale you on the Kogba. He is such a well-rounded player, there's no way around it. No, oh, and Han Sama, he is the only French player in today's Grand Finals. So let's hear from him about his return to home soil. I'm very looking forward to it. Last time I uh, played in the French scene was 2017. Everyone was singing my birthday there, 2 September, and it was really amazing. I, I lost against G2, 0 unfortunately. But this time, uh, <laughs> I'm with G2. <laughs> I have to win, I have to, I have to taste the feeling of winning in such a big stage, the trophy. It's, it must be amazing. Some of my teammates already experienced that, for sure, right? But not me. It could bring me a new perspective, like, uh, let's say, reward, like, oh my god, I won in front of so many people. I really, I'm trying to imagine it, you know, I, I really want to make it happen and see, you know, <laughs> just, uh, I'm very excited. <laughs> My God, uh, between kind of all the legends we've seen play today and then the fact that Hans can win this trophy on home, home soil, that is an honor that is reserved for very, very little people in the world. And it would be tremendous. It would be insane. It would be such a cap off of such an already amazing return to the LEC. Yeah, your return over <laughs> from the year in North America and you just we don't dominate mention the it. <laughs> whole way through. Like Hans Sama is on such a meteoric tear this year and uh, it feels like everything stacked up to go his way today. Yes, but of course, never without the support. The Marksman, Trimby, is up versus Mickey uh, and Mickey, we've talked about him a lot already, so I think it's only fair. We give the floor to Trimby, who's been playing lights out in the season finals. I mean, yeah, we always talk about the Trifex of support, Trimby, Hillizang and Mickey, and I mean, Trimby specifically has generally been stepping up in this lower bracket run as well. He used to be known for the Enchanters, but he's rewriting that narrative about himself with his champions like the Nautilus, and specifically in yesterday's matchup, the Alistair that was pivotal in securing the grand victory. Yeah, he's been great all around because right now I feel like he's finding himself, even though Traditionally, you wouldn't say that this is meta of enchanters. Right now, he's stepping up so much on this engaged championship. But also because he's having this incredible synergy with Razok, and he's really feeling, you know, the whole team playing, the whole cohesion, every the whole Fnatic roster is just finding itself right now. 2023 has been the year of Mickey from winter until now. No one's looked like they've even come close in the support role. But yesterday, Trimby put on a championship performance. His Nautilus was insane. The 2v2 kills in the lane, the picks he found at the hooks, and then his All-Star, the gymnastics he was doing and button people around. It was unreal. If anyone's going to do it, it's Trimby after yesterday. Oh, it's great to see. Uh, and so many great plays of these players and of these teams across the years. But it all has to come down to this. So I want to know the predictions, both from the people at home as from my desk. And I guess we're just going to throw them all up to see what we are dealing with. G2 Esports versus Fnatic. I see how it is. It's stacked. It is stacked. But I think, of course, this is fair, right? When you look at the season G2 has had. Yeah. We've been hyping up Fnatic a lot, you know, here on the desk because we all see and feel the improvement that been, they've been having, but they're facing a beast in G2 because it's a G2 that has been ramping up throughout the whole year, getting better and better, and now it feels like they have dominant lanes everywhere, strong fundamentals, great objective approach, so it's going to take a lot. You know, I, I think Fnatic can win, but it's, G2 is just such a safe bet. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, wholeheartedly, I'm praying for five games. 
but looking at the games itself, like that <laughs> one game giving over to Fnatic, G2 is prone to make mistakes. They are not perfect. We've seen it both in draft, what they set themselves up sometimes, and then on the gameplay that executes it. I'm counting on Fnatic to recognize these things and actually have their own things prepared for when that moment strikes. But overall, I think G2 is the better team. Look, I agree, but it's all five games. G2 versus Fnatic, every time they meet in a BO5, it's a bloodbath. Fnatic showed they can do that yesterday. Okay, but still you haven't voted for them. Let's see. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's a lot of matchups we haven't even touched on, but there's one in particular I want to talk about, and it's the mid lane, Caps versus Humanoid, because Caps is hunting for his 10th total LEC title up against a Humanoid who he's never met in a final, but a Humanoid who had never lost a final he has played in. I mean, absolutely, and I think Caps, I mean, he's, he, well, people are hoping he's stepping up to a clap moment against this, but Humanoid has also shown some of the highest highs and ceilings we've seen on international performances just last year, and I'm hoping that's the version of Humanoid that will show up on the big stage as well. Look, this matchup is absolutely legit, right? Like Caps versus Humanoid, it doesn't get any better than this. The whole year has been building up to it, right? Humanoid has been playing out of his mind here in the summer season, leading into season finals, dominating in the one versus one matchups. It's been so beautiful. Yeah, it's great to see because Humanoid, you know, after that 2021 year, he has been incredible. And then he had a little bit of a, he was stagnating a little bit. He wasn't doing the greatest, but right now he's back in form and he's here to challenge Caps. Look, Caps versus Humanoid is the iconic mid lane matchup of the 2020s, bar none. And no European has ever found as much success versus Caps as Humanoid. The record currently stands 26 wins to Caps, 21 wins to Humanoid. That is the best win rate versus Caps, period. No one can touch that. And today they will play in their 50th official game in their first time ever meeting in a grand final. This would be Caps' 10th ever title. Caps is European League of Legends. That is what Humanoid faces today, and it might be Humanoid's ever, only ever chance to take it from him in a grand final. Wow, that build up. That's it. And that was crazy. You put that into words so fantastically. <laughs> it's like they heard it here, of course. We're pretty close to going to that opening ceremony wow. as well. Um, and yeah, this is it because everything we've built up, it doesn't matter if you can't perform today, you absolutely have to. And for the first time since Athens in 2019, the most decorated organizations in LEC history are facing off in another road show final. Very long have we been waiting, but tonight, a new page in the history between these arch rivals will be written here in Montpellier, Occitanie. After nine months of blood, sweat and tears only one can crown themselves the lec 2023 season champion it's time for the opening ceremony presented by mastercard
t'appelle dans tes rêves Une vie jamais en Tu tiens au bord des gouffres Aussi fin qu'un film Et le destin peut s'abattre sur toi Pendant que le diable frappe Là à ta porte
What a way to kick off the grand final. Fnatic in G2 facing off against each other. And a little bit of mischief there from Jinx as well to kick us off. I'm Medic, I'm joined by Kajor and by Ivedi for the cast today. And what a historic day it is, gentlemen. 1,099 days since these two teams last faced off in a final. Oh, it's just, it's, you always get so emotional when you're hitting the arena. The roar of this crowd is like something very special. And to hear the G2 chants already, yeah. the <laughs> Fnatic fans are coming in strong. How can we not be excited for what will be a fantastic grand final? My ears were blown out when Hans Summer was announced <laughs> coming onto the stage. All of the French fans went ballistic as soon as they heard his name. A lot of crowd support for G2, a lot of crowd support for Fnatic as well. I feel like the fan base has really been revitalized towards the later stages of the year when everything looked doom and gloom. The fire is ignited once again. It really is. You have to remember for Fnatic, it has been five long years since they last picked up an LEC title all the way back in 2018. That's when Camps was playing for them and when they made the world's finals for G2. Slightly more recent memory than winning a title. Obviously, they picked up both winter and summer here. Did lose to Rogue last time we were in an arena, though. And I think a lot of people are favoring uh, G2 coming into this, similar to last year, you know, where they did falter to That's Rogue true. in those finals. And you always thought, you know, despite Rogue taking down Fnatic in those semis last year, you really favor G2. And I think it's a similar story here. G2, definitely the favorites, but Fnatic have got magic. Yeah. They've got a lot of magic behind them and a lot of momentum as well. You bring in Wonder as a substitute. He's already played 10 games for Fnatic competitively in these last two weeks. That's an entire regular season he's got under his belt with Fnatic. Coming into his first, uh, his 11th now in the first game of this series. I think they'll know exactly how they want to plan things out. Fnatic very limited when it comes to picks. G2 very, very creative and has a lot of answers. Gents, I'm just so excited that we have Humanoid versus Caps in a final. Yeah, like, first time ever. Like, happened before. How insane is that? Humanoid, he kind of took the spot away from Caps. He was touted as the best mid laner for such a long time. Caps very quickly came back to reclaim that title as top dog in Europe and it feels like that both are in their form right now it feels like based yep. on their performances throughout the season finals they are ready to play they're ready to showcase the best of what they can be and we know that in an environment like this is where these players thrive it is this is where the clutch happens you know because players either play incredibly aggressive and they get lost in chaos or they play incredibly reserved and they try to slow things down it's the clear-headed players that amongst all this crowd the stage vibrating the noise that you actually make that concise plan and execute it correctly. And if you don't, everything just falls apart around you. So it's about keeping the energy, keeping your team on the same page, keeping everyone calm, I think, in these moments. I mean, it's going to be interesting because we talk about these two veterans, rookies alongside them, to, the, to a live arena like this for the Grand Finals. Razzle never making a finals in his career. Yike, of course, only joining the roster this year. Mm. It's going to be so interesting to see how they can handle the pressure, handle the nerves. Perhaps they've already gotten used to it. Perhaps this is just another day in the office for them. Yep. Razzle getting to play yesterday, getting used to the stage. I'm very excited to see MVP Mickey as well in the bot lane going up against Trimby, who was in form in his series yesterday. He is in fine form, but it's G2. It's always been G2 throughout the whole year. If they didn't drop that best of five to Mad in spring, there's a very high chance they would have won the entire split. And then it would be the golden road for G2 domestically. All pro, five all pro, MVP. Uh, rookie, uh, rookie of the year in Yike, you know, winning almost every finals, but they didn't make it in spring and they dropped the ball. And G2 are very upset about that. They really, yeah. really want to make sure they put a stamp on Europe here in this best of five and claim that season finals title. But Fnatic and Magic is ready to stop them. Into draft we go. Fnatic already taking away the Ivor and Tristana, something you've got to look at, especially for Fnatic. Talia taken away from Razor, no surprise there. The Poppy ban onto Wunder, maybe Broken Blade was saying to Dylan, I don't really have any picks into it. He gets away with murder if he picks up blinds. So let's try and kind of close that pull down a bit. And the thing is, as well, Fnatic have looked towards the Venecton blind, and we know that Broken Blade has an answer to that. The Kled obviously worked so well for them a couple of weeks ago. There's the Tristana band away by G2, actually. LeBlanc removed by Fnatic. So where would G2 go first? Probably the Rel. The Rel, Maokai. It's got to be one of those two that you have to look at, and it's going to be the Rel. Fnatic can take the Maokai here. They need to be careful of Renekton, though. If they pick Renekton blind, Broken Blade will play Kled. If they pick Renekton Sejuani blind, he'll play Swain. Yep. They've got answers to this. This is the Poppy band. Yesterday we saw a couple of Reddington bands, but it's just they're trying to get Wunder to pick it. They need to make sure they don't fall for that trap. I mean, the challenge of playing into G2 is they often have answers for a lot of things. The Zyre is, of course, left up. Yesterday we saw Noah run amok on the champion, but it does seem that they want to make sure that Wunder gets his priority. He's been playing this Renekton since he joined the Fnatic squad as a sub, and they're going to lock it in once again. I think it's a trap, you know. I think G2 
Did, did, did they go for the Kled now? I think Fnatic took the bait. They should know that they're going to play Kled into it. So I don't think Fnatic will be too surprised if Broken Blade locks it in. I don't know. Did you see Wonder staring at Broken Blade as he locked it? I think he knows and he's challenging it. Yeah, he, I think he was, he's like, it's a game on, of chicken. Don't bring it. it. Yeah. Let's see the Kled in game one. Let's see if you can answer my Rennington blind. Is G2 going to call the bluff? You know, they've gone for a zero already. I think that's a smart takeaway from Humanoid. Mad Lions did that yesterday and it worked pretty well getting it in Niski's hands. Are you going to pick Kled? Are you going to pick Zaya? These are the things that I'm asking myself. I mean, G2 have a lot of flexibility. That rel can always be flexed, depending on what they're feeling. The I'm ultimate question is, what will they do with this top lane pick? Yeah. I know that Broken Blade has so many answers, so many options. Is he oh. going to play it safe? He's going to go for the Cassante in game one. OK, not something we have, well, we have seen Broken Blade play it once, but not something we really know him for. Gives you a neutralizing matchup, at least in that top lane. I'm surprised to see Azir. Caps' last game on Azir was week two of summer regular season. He's been playing Tristanas, Nikos, Lucians, LeBlancs. He's been very playmaking centric yeah. when it comes to comes to G2 and unlocking him on the map. I'm surprised to see him in a game one final, so just pick Azir. It seems to me that their goal is to limit Humanoid and his options in the mid lane. We saw him play the Talia, we saw him play the Trist. You take away the Azir and you're forcing him down onto the few champions that he has left in the Kaiser and the Syndra. We see them making sure that they can get that Syndra locked in for Humanoid. Does mean that the Zaya can now be banned away by G2 as these AD carries start to get targeted from both sides. There's always the option for G2 as well to just say, let's play a team fight game. Let's just play it slow. Let's play something that isn't too explosive in the early game because we know when we get to later team fights, when we get to later battles, we're yeah. actually going to be able to out skirmish and out battle Fnatic. But I think G2's trick up their sleeve was always throwing you off in game one. Sure. You know, they throw you a Kled or they throw you a Lissandra support. Yep. And now you have to think about that for the entire series. G2 look very stock standard here. The Brown band covers off Kogmo Brown. I'm looking at Zeri now. I'm looking at Nautilus blind on four here for Fnatic. I mean, Fnatic. Yeah, you have to imagine that Nautilus will be a high priority. Whether or not they want to pair it up with the Kaisa or the Aphelios is up to them. Uh, typically, we've seen Noah lean towards those champions, and G2, I think, smartly ban away the Nautilus, recognizing that this was something Trimmy had massive success on yesterday. The question is, will that Alistair still be a priority, or is that something that they exclusively wanted to keep alongside things like the Callista? Yeah, they could go Alistair here. Aphelios, Zeri, are the 280 carries you think of on Noah, for Noah when it comes to this four pick here, so I don't think they're going to shy away from just giving counter pick to support. But with Braum and Nautilus down and Alistar blinded here from Mickey, which could be likely, I wonder what they're going to pick into it. But Mickey's not played any Alistar yet in Summer. He hasn't touched it. But this champion is so powerful when uh, things like the Nautilus and Braum are down. Rakan is still open as well, Rakan which is, is a very one, powerful yeah. champ. And uh, obviously Nautilus being that counter is gone. The Alistar will do well into it. Let's see if that was what G2 decide to go in the bottom lane. Could see Fnatic picking up something like the Thresh just to give that Aphelios a little bit more safety. Obviously, it's a tried and true combination. There's the Kaiser for G2 first. I'm a little surprised they didn't consider something like the Ezreal yeah. if they wanted to go for a little bit more range, a little bit more poke. Mickey, for those that don't know, originally when Mickey joined the league many year years ago, he was known as a Bard one trick. It was one of his special, one of his favorite champions as well. But Rakan will naturally be the lock-in. Another form of reliable engage, locking Yike onto the rail and rounding out G2's team composition. Yeah, I think Trimby kind of has to go Alistar here. Uh, anything else would be a surprise. We saw, I think Leona can also work, but I think Alistar has to be the pick. We saw Thresh yesterday, didn't like it at all, especially in this much engage. Zillion uh -huh. would be... The hilly special. Into, they don't really have any burst though. You know, we really want Zillion into burst champions like Syndra, but you're against a lot of flat DPS here. So yeah, it's going to be an Alistar. I think the most surprising thing to me is we've got two very stock standard drafts. I didn't expect G2 to go the scaling route, the, the team fight route. I expected a very early game, kind of mid-centric skirmishing comp coming out of them. Um, but yeah, G2 just playing it cool, playing it safe for this game one. And Fnatic, we saw all these champions yesterday. I yeah. think you're no surprise, Noah, Filios, Trimby's Alistar was fantastic in that game five. Uh, and Humanoid Syndrome. Expectation should be that early game, we don't see a huge amount of action. Bot prior could be a really important thing. Alistair doesn't have the easiest way of gaining control over the laning phase during those early levels, but Aphelios may be able with a couple of good trades could force his way in. But regardless, this mid matchup as well, Caps versus Humanoid, to start off our best of five, a matchup we were very excited to see. Uh, it will be a little safe in the early laning phase, but once we get into these team fights, is where you're really going to feel the presence of these two mid laners. Look, I was promised Bloodstone. Yesterday, there were like 160 kills in there five were games. I was just hoping for that again, but obviously, yeah. these two teams want to play it a little bit slower to kick things off. It's been a while since we've seen them on a stage against each other. Have to look all the way back to 2019 in Athens for their last arena game. That went to five, seen as one of the greatest LEC finals of all time. We can only hope for that once again today.
The rivalry reignited our first G2 versus Fnatic best of five of the whole year. And we're seeing it here at the season finals in Montpellier. I'm excited. Here we go. We're getting ready for game one. breath and hope that this is a banger. Talked a little bit in the draft about what lanes will get priority, what we expect to see perhaps in the early game as France there, represented on Summoner's Rift. Maybe it's an Arcane Season 2 spoiler, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we just went to a boulangerie and had croissants. <laughs> but uh, what a weekend it's been. Two five-game bangers so far with the Emilia Masters. And with Fnatic versus Man yesterday, we see Invade coming in from Broken Blade here, getting some vision down, Wonder covering it off on the other side. Fnatic are doing the same. G2 have, uh, they've overcommitted resources here on this top side for that ward, maybe looking for a level one play. Hansama has been marking the bot side, but I'm not sure if Fnatic got spotted walking in here to this Raptors. You know, Razor can take three camps um, away from Yike. Is Mickey gonna suspect it? He doesn't have a ward, so even if he does, He's uh, going to be face checking. Now it's on Fnatic's bot lanes pathing back to lane. They need to be very careful in how they approach this bot wave because if you approach it from certain angles, it becomes obvious as to what you were doing in that level one. So maybe they're going to run around the side of the ramp here, or maybe they'll hug the brush and go around the wall. Because um, otherwise, if they came from the left side, it becomes a bit obvious. So yeah, unsuspected here, G2, unaware. But it's weird because you'll see they have two wards level one. They have one on the blue and one on the red. Yep. In the next 30 seconds, they're going to realize something's up when they don't see the Maokai on his buff. The assumption has to be for Yike that his camps are being stolen. The map being split means the Hansam and Mickey have to be very careful. We talked about how Alistair can struggle as a support during the early levels. There's not a huge amount of value that he can offer. You can already see Mickey and Hansam are posturing very far forward in the lane, getting that first level two and already looking for a trade. And it's this type of situation that Fnatic, I imagine, is hoping for is now there's an opportunity for Razzle to wrap around and look for a gang. This would catch them off guard. I'm waiting for the question mark things on the minimap yeah. as to what Yike's saying. You know, where is, where is Maokai? Uh, they're about to get a surprise as to where Maokai is. Oftentimes in situations like this, you need level two on bot and you need to focus down the Rakan. But they if G2 can two. hold on for five seconds, they'll realize Raptors are gone and they should know now. Question mark ping's coming out. But Hansama the though, immediately in. walking away. How is he going to get out of this one? The Bramble's bash short. Hansama dodges it to the advance of the cleanse. Oh, Hansama, Hansama could flash away, but Hings uh, uh, Trimby going forward. Hansama low, the Ignite's not going to be enough. The Trimby's down. Not. Means that Trimby falls for first blood. And Yike is coming in for more. Razzle has to flash away. The crash down. We're not quite able to connect. Noah and Razzle should be able to walk this one out, but they are hella wounded. Mickey with the three-man knock-up to secure first blood for G2. Fnatic had the perfect plan, but the execution just was better by Mickey. The way that this bot lane navigated that play, spectacular for G2. They draw first blood. I see that again because this was a game of chicken. Razork wanted Kansama to flash here. That's why he backsteps. W comes in, cleanses it. He actually tanks the flash combo. I don't know if Hans wants to react to that or not, but the, the Q from the Aphelios misses. Flash ulti doesn't oh. get the kill. Triple knock up under tower. Yike is mid. Humanoid stunned up. Does still have the flash, but Caps is sliding in and Yike is flashing. The second blood. G2 absolutely rolling through this early game. Blunders through bot side. They had such an insane jungle lead in terms of camps, but they threw it away on that bot gank, losing all their summoners apart from the ghost. And now Yike transitions to mid and gets a kill too. So this is a rel with three camps that's managed to pull off two plays in just under four minutes. You wanted a bloodbath, man. I did. Game I did. one, and you're already getting. We expected a slower early game, but G2, they're not known for that. Their early game dominance. It's not, it's, a, it's not an award. I imagine he gets spotted here. No, oh, he, he doesn't. What the a circumvents oh. the vision. Humanoids, he thinks he's safe. That, that thinks, what? An incredible play there from Yike. The mid-jungle duo make the play happen. The ward was not quite in position to spot him out. And you can see from the skin, it's definitely not a ward. So unsurprising there that he was <laughs> able to sneak past. But what a start from G2 and what a start from Yike. Able to respond both in the bottom lane and get that kill in the mid. And now a thousand gold lead building up for G2. Yeah, so that ward just checked. Uh, Caps pinged that the ward is around that area. 
So Yike kind of soft guessed that he should hug the wall if he wanted a good chance. Wow. So we've got maybe we've got a bot wave stacking up here. G2 looking for a dive would be very difficult. The Alistar is only level two, so not having access to that stun makes the dive a bit easier. But I think they're just here to crash the wave. And let's not forget a lot of camps still up for Razork here. Blue buff still available. Yike's going to take that one away. And Razork individually still even slash ahead despite the kill. Oh, he's reset oh. it. Oh, that's going to sting. He should get it in time, but yeah, he's fine. We'll be able to get it. Hex flash over the wall there to get to safety. But yeah, even though Razzok is even ish, nice. Wonder has a slight lead in the top lane as Trimpy goes forward for Hans Summer. Everywhere else on the map, Fnatico ahead. A 400 gold lead for Hans Summer and a 12 CS lead as well early on. I'm surprised at what's happening in top lane. I think Wonder is bullying Broken Blade out of this lane. Razzok will be on a ward, so I don't think G2 will be. Uh, Falling for a play here unless they decide to step up and try and contest. But yeah, I wonder doing a great job in the top side. Root. Oh, hang on. Yeah, Mickey can dance away. Yeah, on Summer getting ever closer to level five. Wow. But yeah, Wonder's been playing the lane very well. Again, they did give him his comfort champion. Yep. He's played it a number of times throughout the season finals. And uh, it's been the champion they often fly and pick. We expected Broken Blade to have answers to it. And starting game one with the Cassante, let's not forget the number of kills he was able to get against Kars, Kars Chasey as the plate looks for it in bot Trippy league. Ignited. He goes in, trying to knock Han Summer away, but he's stunned as he does, and now Noah trying to trade in with the red, white, he wants to fight, but Yike is on his way. Noah doing everything he can, he dodges the crash down, but he just doesn't have the damage. And G2 will be 4-0 up in a second. Noah, the turrets, he dashes the into the alcove, and he gets one! In response, Noah does everything to get a kill. Big greedy from Hans. I think he wanted to walk up and get that kill, but the turret was placed, and Noah weaved in the attacks, nice kiting there from the Fnatic AD carry. I mean, it was very clear that G2 wanted to hand that kill over the Hans, and the way in which they set up this 2v2, initial knockup from Mickey, a level advantage over Trimby, his health already at about 50%, the Ignite helped him secure that one as Hans picks it up in the end. Noah, though, you called it, Medic, the red-white means that he has so much trading power. Yike arrives there, at this point they're saying, oh, you know what, he doesn't have the power to turn this one around. Another Caps. play in mid. Jimmy going in, the Emperor's Divide coming out as well as Yike tries to join the play. Cam's going to be able to put damage down to Humanoid because he has no mana. He manages to get under the tower, but the Emperor brings up a soldier and sentences Humanoid to death. They're punishing the lack of flash on this Syndra. They made that early play, and now they're making the repeat appearance. 2K is already the gold lead for G2. And they have just been finding angles in both bot and mid. And by unlocking bot, Mickey is roaming up to mid, but now he might be punished. Nope, he's going to walk away just fine. Is he? Maybe he's going to go in here. Noah, I get knocked up. Mickey gets the double knockup. Jimby, though, can trade back in as Mickey with the Gleaming Crew will heal himself up. Jimby down to about 400 HP. Noah, though, still very healthy in this bottom lane. Fnatic look a little bit all over the place since that level three failed attempt. G2 seem to be responding really well to lanes where they have advantages and resources when it comes to summoners being down for Fnatic, punishing Humanoid twice now, and uh, the bot to be two going in their favor. Fnatic need to find a way to calm themselves down, steady the pace, find the next play, ask themselves questions, figure out what the plan is. Looks like Herald might be contested soon by Fnatic, because Wonder, again, look at this lane, he's 20, 30 CS up. I was going to say, with the pressure the Wonder has at top, I feel like that there is an easy, easy avenue for Fnatic to play through this top side. The problem right now is being able to get this mid prior. Credit to Humanoid, he's still doing very well in the farm department. He's not too far behind in terms of experience, but now with his flash back up, he should be a little bit safer, but it's so much easier for Caps to be the aggressor in this matchup, knowing that he has the advantage to the there's a knockback with the scatter of the week. Flash switch to advance. Caps trying to get away, but the nature's oh. grass with Rude and Humanoid doesn't quite have the damage. Needs to hit one more order. Oh, oh, but he can't get close enough. Yank comes in for the stun. The shattering strike and the magnet storm. And once again, everything Fnatic trying to make happen. Throw back in their faces. And it was Humanoid that was finally getting a gank back. This was a great opportunity to knock up. No one doesn't have the best guns here. Purple, blue, but they try and turn oh, it on. Oh, he's damaged. Hunt Summer dashes forward. McKellar is down. He's down. Noah now trading back onto Mickey, and that's two for the Fnatic bot lane. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Wonder flashes from the Q3 out of Broken Blade. Fnatic aren't done just yet. They're throwing a lot of things at the wall. Nothing sticking, but now the bot lane has found a double kill. 3-1 on this Aphelios now getting the upper hand onto Hunt Summer and Mickey. Maybe looking for a Herald here is Yike. Razork's right behind him, and it's on Vision. Humanoid's coming out of base as well. Trimby needs to get down here as quick as he can. Wonder's fighting Broken Blade. Razor could take the blast cone over here, gank top, and then bring Wonder down. Let's see if Broken Blade 
force for this player. I'm not sure if they know that Razork's in the area. No ultimate on the Maokai. No ultimate on the Rel. Here comes Humanoid. Yike has no flash. Broken Blade, is he going to face check the Maokai? He is. He goes in. No flash path. Make it try and get away. But the Rambo Smash knocks him back. And the Ruthless Predator will stun him up. Broken Blade, no way out from the 2v1. Meanwhile, Humanoid forced away his caps. Mickey, Yike, and Hansama make sure that G2 secure the Herald. Fnatic could look for a little bit more, but they don't really have the avenue to approach. I mean, G2 still walk away with the Herald. They were able to bring Han Summer and Mickey up to the play first, even without having the level six on Mickey. The fact that there was no real way for the rest of Fnatic to collapse on that play after securing that initial pick mean they walk away with the objective. But you look at the gold, it's very quickly closing. 1.2k is the gold lead for Wonder right now. That's where pretty much all of the advantage for Fnatic is sitting. As I say that, Noah also finding his mojo in this game yep. as well. 3-1 and 0 in the bot lane. Surprising, isn't it? It's it's Noah and Wunder coming alive. I feel like yesterday was really the Razor and Humanite show at times when Zaya was down and Wunder was just kind of left to take bad matchups. He's going to walk into this top side here as G2 drop down the Herald. A bit of an awkward map state here where I think Fnatic needs to fight back against G2. They don't have any cross map available. One is going to try and do it, but he doesn't have the Dominus. He doesn't have a way out of Wonder. this fight. A great call that makes heals him up. The Nature Scar's coming out as well. And now Fnatic looking for fight. Humanoid TP into it. The Scatter League fights one. Hot Summer already down. Unleash power for a second. And Fnatic find exactly what they were looking for. Maybe even up the scoreline. Razork maybe chasing for more. Yike has no flash. Smite comes in to re reduce the move speed a little bit. He's going to get the W in time. Yike gets the Done, the sapling. The, the sapling slow? Not gonna go any further. Noah, fighting on the broken blade here. He's stepping up a bit too far. Broken blade still has the all out and they will pull him into the river. And this is broken blade's domain, but Noah with a great flash can't beat that! 200 years get defeated by the might of Cassante! Action all across the board. The top laners all of a sudden making incredible plays. Wonder surviving the one versus three to buy time for his team to come and save him. In the bot lane, Broken Blade punishing Noah. The gold continues to stay even. It is just a bloodbath 12 minutes in. This is what we all wanted for G2 versus Fnatic. Gold is, like I said, getting very even here. Right? Mickey, what did he almost oh, got no. it? <laughs> <laughs> almost stealing away a blue buff. Trimby's now looking top. He's only level five at 12 minutes. Can't the, the flash. flash. Yeah, he can just dash away. Can be no flash of his own, so no Q flash combo. Oh. No one's done dragon yet. I was Both just top the laners. Same thing. <laughs> BB just TP'd bots. Wonder has used his TP as well. Humanoids is down. They've got both mid laners top. Bot top laners the are bots. are coming through now, though. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, it's all about having their their bot lanes mid really contesting these waves. But Fnatic have ignored the wave. They've gone straight towards this dragon. BB does have a pink if he wants to place it over the pit. Boom, I don't think comes. they're going to contest. I yeah. don't think it's worth it. With Cap sitting top, he's going to prioritize securing those plates for himself. Yike might go for it though. Boss comes in. Wait. Can always crash down now. 59 HP. Twisted the bounce forward. Yike's now going to be knocked back, but he should be able to get to the wall and find an escape route as Mickey gets the knockup. Dominus used. Hex flashing by Trimby, but he decides to flash away instead. Guys, we're 13 minutes in. There have been 13 kills. Let's take a breath. Let's take a moment. Let's assess the state of the game. As we've been saying, pretty even in terms of gold, but where that gold is on either team really differs. Yeah, the gold. Very even, it's all over the place. I think the carry of uh, the Azir being ahead is great, but look at the vision, the bot side vision that G2 have. They always have this deep vision on your on the side that they're playing towards. Now Mickey's trying to transition it towards the top side as Wunder and Broken Blade trading heavily. Wunder not having the ultimate there is going to decide to back away, but it's become about a mid to top game. Fnatic need to get this mid push into top and keep caps under tower. That way they can kind of suppress this Azir and try to look for plays. They have the mythic advantage in mid lane for now, so caps needs to take a base soon. I mean, one of the biggest differences you'll see is the experience. Caps getting closer to level 11 as Humanoid very close to ticking over to level 10. All of those early ganks really paying off in the favor of Caps to move off to a side lane. Broken Blade now looks at the 1v1. Still no Dominus for Wonder. Does use the Iron Spike Whip and the, uh, the Gore Drinker. In fact, the Cold Meat, but it's not enough. It's Broken Blade tries to kill me by the mid lane. No one should be caught out on this lonesome G2 strike in two places at once. Just like that, G2 find two quick kills. The early laning phase went heavily in favor of Wonder, but Broken Blade, after completing that mythic, is looking so much stronger. We're gonna look back now as Noah gets punished. Why is Noah alone here? He's catching midwave by himself. His jungler's on Krux. His support took a base as waves were being contested. Whereas the G2 three-man core stays together and punishes those reset timers, those clear timers, finding these windows. Well played from Broken Blade. Wonder didn't have the Dominus for that 1v1. G2, they're a team that's not afraid to make the play. They found a good angle there, and they're able to punish Noah for it. We now look at Herald as the next major objective on the map, spawning in about a minute and a half.
TP's going to be unavailable for Caps. Should be up for Wonder and for Humanoid. Fnatic will have options to be able to contest this. Look at Guy, because he's trying to navigate That's his way sneaky. through this vision. I think he was seen on this ward at the back of the lane, though, as he walked into the first push. So Humanoid able to back away a little bit. Trimby here for protection. The control ward's helping Fnatic keep vision, at least for the moment. And Humanoid should not step up here, but you never know. You'll see Noah doing what he can to stay relevant in the game. Catching that mid wave, even with Han Sama in terms of experience, I think he should have enough gold. The pings are coming down about his base. I wonder if this gives an opportunity for G2 to look for something. Looks like that there's no window there. Instead, Han Sama just going to look to try and push this wave in as quickly as possible. But there we are, first item now completed for Noah. Already got that Kraken Slayer Mythics across the board. Uh, only uh, Trimby actually lacking his first item. 30 seconds on the Herald, two minutes on the Drake means that we expect to see the teams funneling resources up towards that top side. Obviously help you break those mid-tier ones. Yeah, you can see Razor trying to get a little bit of vision with Sapling. He's going to see Yike on his blue. Can try and force him back here and take it away because the G2 bot lane was leaning towards the bot side of the map. Maybe trying to cover off a play onto Broken Blade or look for a pick onto Wonder. WA, smite it. Down it goes. Doesn't have the upgraded jungle pet, so they can't actually access that. But it play on mid again. Noah's alone. Mickey going in with the quickness. Dashes onto Hunt Summer. Noah able to flash away in time. Moonlight Vigil doesn't connect, but G2 can now push in as three. The thing is, it gives a mid control, which then gives them access to the top. No river. quickness on Mickey. That's the, the TP, TP behind. behind. Knock back. Nature's Grass coming out as well as Noah begins to step forward. Yike able to keep Trimby and Razzle busy for a moment. But now Mickey has to dash away. Hunt Summer able to escape with his flash and his cleanse. Fnatic now funneling in. They're going to looking for more in the river. They want to chase, as you say, Cajun. The flash towards the advance. Knock back. Bramble smash. Not enough to keep Mickey at bay. Trimby, flash, headbutt. Knock back. But Cavs has a flash of his own. Summon his fly across the map, but no one dies. As of yet, the Riptail, though, Wonder's is going to die. At the moment, it's Wonder. It's the first. Summer going in. Broken Blade trying to get up to the back line. Noah, nowhere to go. He's in the pen. No flash, no back. SG2 begins to open up the fight. And Summer down. down, though, with the Unleashed Power. Humanoid, though, hello, a man of Tribune. Same. A double for Humanoid so far now. As Broken Blade is trading with Razzle, but Broken Blade will take it. Humanoid trying to escape. The cat is on the, on the chains alongside. Yike. What can you do here, Humanoid? Do you have anything? A Montpellier miracle, perhaps, for you. But now, Caps and Yike continue to close in. Wolves hungry for blood. But Humanoid able to keep Caps at bay because Caps knows a single spear would spell his demise. Good knock back to Blast Cone there in time and Humanoid escapes. These fights are setting the scene for this series. Endless pursuit from Fnatic that eventually backfires as G2 find the turn. Fnatic invested four flashes and two TPs to make this happen. Yeah. They needed to chase them. They needed kills. Here comes the first one as the double TP comes onto this ward. Noah lost his flash already, and Mickey has the ultimate, so they focus down the front line. Hans is forced back with his summoners gone. But G2 are so slippery, but Fnatic were forced to go for this because they invested so many resources to try and get something. Fnatic just couldn't lock anyone down, and after they'd overchase, G2 find a punish. Trippy hit flash, are. straight onto Yike, knocked him back into Humanoid. Next is going to keep the rest of G2 from getting in. Broken Blade with a TP behind though, and I don't think oh, they're going A great stun, Yike able to get it in. Diving into the middle as one against one. Meanwhile, it's just a cluster of damage. Spells flying caps, everywhere. Caps, caps. Trying to trade back one for one so far. Humanoid dashing around. Caps is going to fall. And now Broken Blade, Mickey and Hunt Summer needs to get out with the twisted advance. Will lock Hunt Summer in place. Fnatic continue to fight. G2 oh, and Broken Blade. Blade continue to do everything they can. Everything in their power! An artist at the edge of the abyss! Brush strokes at the brink of death! But Rob complained! And once again, he proves he is the best top in EU! 17 kills to 11. Send the scaling to hell. This is just a brawl in the river. The dragon still goes down to Fnatic. But what a crazy fight. I thought that knockup from Mickey would have cemented it. 4G2. Look at this play from Mickey. He's hiding off on the flank. The engage onto Yike. It looks like he's going to be isolated here, but three members knocked up, and then Fnatic find a way to turn it around. Brokenbit also pushes Noah into the into the fray, and he also ults him in. Cap stopwatch is on top of all. Fnatic caps is down. I thought the fight was over, but it's broken blade. And it's broken blade. And it's broken blade it again. Is. It's basically a 1v4 at this point because Han Sama's gonna die off to the left here, I believe, up against Trimby, Razork, and Wunder. They turn thinking they can clean up the fight. Humanoid's down in the 1v1. Broken blade flashing to get that kill onto Razork. Trimby has to run for the hills, and Wunder doesn't have the rage to fight back. Mickey's just there to support him in case they jump on top of him. But BB, calm and collected. He knows he's got a big job ahead of him. He cracks Fnatic's next, and then he cracks his own.
And now the Rift Held, we saw a fight around here like 10 minutes ago, and now it will finally be taken by G2. What, what a game, lads. Like, yeah. come on, just... Uh, it's just game it's, one, it's, it's still got a to go. I think you'll find more of these, buddy. Moly. I mean, huge credit to Trimby as well. He's finding some incredible plays. It's just the rest of Fnatic can't quite follow up. He has now found Broken Blade. Not the person he wants to find. He's got the all out. Could bring Trimby back, but Trimby able to keep himself away from the wall, away from danger. Humanoid is catching at top wave while Wonder is being matched by Caps down towards the bottom side. And in scenarios like this, I would say, you know, Fnatic, slow it down, try and scale, but, you know, don't. I don't think they should. They have two dragons, they need to fight the next one. They need to make sure Baron doesn't get burst down by the Azir Kaisa, so they can't drop map control, so they have to walk in, throw a jungle and clear off pinks in the face of G2 and kind of dare them to go in, and G2 aren't going to flinch. They're going to call your bluff again, the game of chicken. Here they go. Broken Blade pulling back Razzle. TP coming in, killer insect by Hans Hammer, but Razzle will burn the flash to escape. Gets an ultimate, gets a TP out. Will G2 decide to stay around and continue to gain control of this area of the map? They have the control ward in there. But it looks like it's just going to be recourse. Broken Blade will go bot to match Wonder. But now TP advantage for the next few minutes for Fnatic. They've got two and there's none on G2. G Fnatic need to keep just walking in non-stop. Just face check. Use saplings, use Syndra QE to make sure the bushes are clear. Get wards down, get that pink on Baron you can see there at the back of the pit. They need to keep that. They've got two blue orbs as well, so they've got a bit of resources to slow this Baron down. But the second they drop the ball for upwards of 10 seconds, that Baron is gone. And once the Baron's gone, the game's gone. The problem that Fnatic have right now is answering Broken Blades. Like, Wonder has hit level 14. He's matched in terms of experience, but Broken Blade alone is kind of forcing Razzle and Trimby out of their own half of the map. He is the protector of vision right now. He's now moved over to the weak side of the map. His TP is going to be relatively soon available for a potential Baron fight. But also, with the Herald now being dropped in bot, it gives them a window to generate some pressure. The Dragon is going to be spawning in about a minute, 20 seconds. Both teams are already thinking about this as G2 continue to keep this pressure around Baron. They can force the Herald bots to make Wunder have to respawn and maybe get his TP here. You can see Wunder instantly facing as Broken Blade's moving up. This mid wave could be pushed in and G2 could start Baron off a bit, so Wunder needs to be quick on the TP because their bot towers are going to start bleeding. I think G2 are going to start up Nash here because they've got such good map setup. Fnatic. They've got That's what they're going to do. No, they're blue orbs. They need to spot this out soon. This is probably going to get melted. Wonder. It's a bit of an awkward call. Does he TP in? He's so close already. I think he might have to. Fnatic, how yeah, do you respond to this? No flash on Razor, which means he has to take the long way around. Mickey trying to get the quickness in TP as well by Wonder, but already the Baron has been secured. Kind of instinct forward by Hot Summer. He's going to get twisted to Vance forward, but the cleanse coming out. And now Fnatic crowd into another Yank! But Yank goes in! And the four man Magnus Storm is enough for G2 to absolutely wipe Fnatic off the face. Of the it is a an ace for G2. Han Summer will sacrifice his life, but he still secures the triple kill. Unbelievable engage from the man in the jungle. The young rookie, yike, rookie of the year. What an incredible engage. G2 not missing a single beat. Put Fnatic in the ground, secure the Baron. And now they're knocking on the doors of Fnatic's base. What a setup. That was flawless map setup from G2. Fnatic, it's such an awkward response because do you TP, do you don't? You're so close, but G2 are forcing your hand. Eventually, you have to go for it. And it's at the point where Fnatic say to themselves, well, we've TP'd in now. If we let them get out, it's over. We have to fight and we have to stand our ground. So in they come. G2 aren't hesitating. They're going to fight back. And it's Yike who sets it up. Caps follows up as well. Instant oh, engage. Oh. Now watch Caps dashes in, gets the push, actually misses half the members. Maybe he got CC'd. Split the team up, Kajal. Yeah, splits the team up, but then G2 clean them up. Yeah, you can see Hans will die here, I think, to uh, Razork, but. Oh. Wow. What a and setup. That's just magnificent from Yai. The guy in it, though, his rookie season here in the LEC. Wins rookie for split, wins two titles, undefeated in finals so far in Europe. And now finds the perfect re-engage after a great scout of the week from Humanoid and hit three of his teammates. G2 now barreling through the base, 24 minutes in, 34 kills and a 9,000 gold lead for G2. And everything Fnatic's done, every moment that they've tried has just been stymied by G2. G2 playing safe. Not going to go for the push here, not going to try and finish, going to get the Dragon, deny any kind of soul point, and then play through top. Uh, Noah just finished his Gale Force. It's 24 minutes into the game. Caps is almost level 16. This Aphelios is level 12. They're so far behind at this point. I don't think there's a way of coming back. 
But I think there was a lot of success here in Fnatic in, from Fnatic in this game in terms of being able to fight back. Yep. But G2, man, even if they drop the ball sometimes in the early game and give you a way back into it, their mid to late game, their setup around objectives is just fantastic. And I Fnatic mean, really need to find a way to crack that. It was the small mistakes, right? Noah staying alone in the mid tower. How many times did they attack him? Yep. That flank that we saw from Fnatic in mid was off the back of that initial engage onto Noah. They knew that he had no flash and they wanted to try Well, they actually forced his flash out from him. And then Fnatic tried to find a collapse, but G2 then played the fight very well once again. There's a reason why they sit at the top of Europe. After MSI, they were very clear and that we were not good enough. We needed to level up dramatically. And the G2 from Spring is not the same G2 that we are seeing right now. Continue to grow and evolve. Broken Blade most of all. He's had a very good year, but he continues just to excel. Like, I mean, it's his best year ever yeah. in his career. Right? Easily. It's also Mickey's. Easily. Yeah, and yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and Summer's doing pretty damn well as well. You know, Caps. Yeah, he's letting the team down. Really. I mean, obviously, like, you know, it's easy to use the argument when you're winning, it's easy to look good, but they're winning because they look so exactly. damn good. CP's coming in. Fnatic need to hold this wave. Razorak might need to pop the ultimate. There it is. They need to stop Major G2 on this wave. Out. Mickey on the front line. Wonder trying to get forward. As Broken Blade is locked up, but he has the gargoyles and he'll tank that, and that's okay for him. Yike. Towards the bottom side of the fight does not have the flash. In fact, we're lacking flashes across the board here. Broken Blade has one, could pull back as Mickey dashes forward, jumps away. It's a matter of time. G2 are going to now force on the next cannon wave. Razorak's ult is down. Wunder's ult is down. G2 are going to look for the dive. Fnatic. Need to defend this inhibitor. Ooh. They have to go in. Can be good double knock up immediately. They dive forward, but oh. knock back. And they move like they not quite enough. The ignite is ticking, but Broken Blade will live through it. And once again, close but no cigar for Fnatic in these fights. So many times they have been on the brink of winning out, but here Broken Blade survives. They can TP back, and with Wade pushing in mid and Bot Wave double supers on its way forward. Wonder. Good dash back with this Predator here on Mickey. No Unleashed Power used by Humanoid, the TP, and by Broken Blade as they look to try and take the final inhibitor tower. Mickey's low, Hans Summer too. Humanoid He's down. and he unleashes hell upon the face of Hans Summer. Now G2 all hell to retreat. Humanoid, an incredible scatter Yike. But Yike again with the back of Storm Scaps. Gets one, no way, but it's that way. But it's everything for G2 once again. Humanoid does what he can to save the game for Fnatic, but it is just not enough in the face of Broken Blade. G2 will look to secure game one in this best of five. Fnatic, and what a game it was. They found such a good engage. They chunk out BB, Mickey's really low, Hans is dead. It's basically a 3v5, but it's, it's the rookie of the year again. Two solid game-winning engages. Caps was basically free hitting at the back. And that was a game with upwards of 41 kills. So you wanted 40 kills a game, <laughs> similar to yesterday, you got yeah. it. I'm just saying, my analyst told me it'd be really slow early game. So <laughs> maybe I need to get like Dagger and Mikkel yeah. up here or something. I mean, what a game though. Yeah, I mean, props to Fnatic. I think that they tried some things. I think a couple of their ideas are pretty good. Credit to Wonder in the early laning phase. He did a great job on the top side of the map, but once you entered the mid game, just every small mistake w was massively exploited by G2. They feel a cut above. Fnatic are gonna have to go back to the drawing board moving into game two. We'll see what Fnatic can do and we'll see what the analyst desk says about game one. Well, uh, I think first of all, we'll say that we're really happy that we're getting this slugfest. Much like we had the games yesterday, the team's not afraid to fight, going head to head immediately in this game. 41 kills in 27 minutes, but it was G2 who saw the discipline in the chaos, I guess, did they? They were able to carve <laughs> through somehow. Yesterday, that was Fnatic. But look, I think of G2 Fnatic, it's a grudge match. <laughs> we got to rebrand this. It's a slugfest <laughs> between these two teams. Just haymakers left and right. You couldn't ask for a better way to kick off the day. No, absolutely. And we were asking in the beginning of the day, will Fnatic show off with the same early game aggression? We saw them come through with some crazy level one. We saw them match it later into the game. Even at points where it looked like, all right, G2 has got this now. They're going to take it into the mid game. They were still fighting back. I'm looking back at a top lane dive as well. Fnatic were looking to match it despite being off tempo in a lot of the uh, instances that we had. And I love it because it all feels like it's controlled chaos. You know, there's all of these fights around neutral objectives, around middle town. Every time there's a top lane play to take the top or a middle lane to take the tower. There is a fight happening and
everywhere around neutral object. This feels like so much control chaos. I think both teams are doing a great job, but G2 is just edging ahead because it feels like they're finding this this calm in the middle of the storm. They're luling Fnatic in a lot in these plays where they're just using a lot of ultimates and a lot of key abilities to force these fights and. They're just prevailing because they're picking their moments so much better. Yeah, it felt like every fight for G2, there was one player that saw the vision. Yeah. Whether it was like the Mickey flank around Dragon or Broken Blade going nuts in that fight, the Yike ult around the Baron. They each found their moments just guarantee win a fight. And a beauty to kick us off. I know you're going to talk about the early kills and their, but that Mickey moment where he was like, did you not remember I got just interviewed as the MVP? I got <laughs> yeah. my trophy? It was ridiculous. You're talking about the first blood, yeah. right? Where, where, where everything is looking fanatic. They're coming out here ready to fight. I actually we want to take a look at that early game because I thought Fnatic had a really good plan where they were able to sort of sneak inside uh, the enemy jungle yeah. to set up for that. We're going to take a look so. uh, in just a second in case. Uh, yeah, I think it was an uppercut immediately that Mickey saw that play. It was literally an uppercut yeah. for them and, and staved them off. So it wasn't a good start for Fnatic. Yeah, so uh, we can go ahead and roll this clip right here. I don't think I have the ability to draw. So we can go on through this for, for the meantime. But Fnatic, you'll see, they're able to find with this visual top side they see Yike toward the top area of the map, and they look to walk into the enemy bot side jungle. And what they're trying to do is split the map so they can punish Han Sama in the early game, break apart one of G2's most consistent lanes throughout the year. So they go in, uh, sort of unspotted through this. Razorka is going to go ahead and full clear on the bot side of the map. It really disrupts the pathing that Yike is going to have. But you also have Noah and Trimby getting this push going in the bot side to, to try and set it up. I'm sorry, uh, on the opposite end, Hans and Mickey have the push, of course, and it opens them up for this angle. Razor's going to look for the gank, but Hans and Mickey already sort of feeling it. They're a little bit concerned. They don't know what's going on. Enemy jungler has now seen him in the bot side, and watch Mickey wrapping around into Tribrush and find the flash trick oh. on up to guarantee the kill and save Hansama. Game over. Yeah, I think this was a great team effort from G2 because we already saw from the level one, they got two deep wards. It's already 2.30. You don't see Maokai on either of the camps. He's not on red. He's not on blue. Where can he be? He needs to be on one of the buffs. So the only logical solution is that he invaded our bot side, you know, and Hans did a great job by getting the deep ward. And after that, it's just all the jungle camps are dissing. Yeah. There is no way you try, Kiyaki. This is really, really unfortunate that Yike has to sneak past this ward. Humanoid is playing as respectful as he can, but then Yike just comes out of nowhere. They're like, where did he come from? This is just How so unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> so after this, it's just it's just the Yike show because the camps are going to be so desynced. You're never going to see him again. All the camps are up. Razork is saying, Yike needs to be topside. All his camps are up. He's probably going to be topside. And then all of a sudden, he's, he's ganking mid from, from <laughs> both sides again. Then he's ganking bot and is you can't track him because he just he's not doing any logical yeah. things. He's just finding such creative pathings to just impact all of these volatile lanes. And he's finding it, you know, hiding inside the pockets of where vision isn't, right? Like you think you're safe if you're a humanoid in that mid lane situation. And there were multiple moments throughout that game where it was both Yike and uh, Mickey that were using hex flashes to get around Vision that they knew was there to set up lane ganks, set up dives, everything. It was a very chaotic map. It was indeed. And I want to go back to GB, who uh, was uh, kind of in defense of Broken Blade at the beginning of the day, not even needing to be in defense because he's had an insane year. And if Wonder could be an X Factor, but he blinded Renekton and then Broken Blade slammed Cassante and said, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, but I, initially I thought it was really interesting blind picking the Renekton and then inviting one of the things from Broken Blade to come through in terms of his counters, but he didn't do that. He took the Kinsanta, which can be a bit of a skill matchup, and he even fell down in the laning phase, where he then came back with some of the skirmishes and solo kills he took, some of the team fights as well. BB's positioning was absolutely perfect, and just the threat that he was. The shutdown he also got from solo killing Noah, bit of an oopsie from Noah's side, yeah. but it really propelled Broken Blade into becoming the threat that really made it so much easier for G2 to pilot the team fights. And I guess it created that circumstance in which Fnatic, when they were still wanting to fight back, it, it didn't really matter if they took out one of the targets because one of the others would pick up the slack. And, and you know, we saw it at multiple moments. We had Caps with a triple kill at the end, but then before it was Hansama, it was Kasanti very, very often. You know, it was hard. Yeah, I mean, and this is a situation where Fnatic thought they had the plan, right? That's a double teleport coming to the back line. They're going to blow up Hansama, but he can flash ults away. And then they're split, right? They've got a lot of damage and cooldowns that they spent on Mickey and on Hans, but it's no kills. They keep going for the chase, but they can't finish anything off. And I think this is really where you get lured into the trap of G2 as well. You overreach, and G2, they wait for their ultimate. They still have it around. And then even at this time with the low HP bar at Mickey, that doesn't stop him from being a factor. Just coming around as well, aiding up with a bit of healing. Broken Blade in the middle of it all to really set them up. And despite that, Mickey once again goes down. But it's still the rest of the members coming through until Yike finds the perfect engage in a bit. 
Yeah, and this is one of the trends that we've been seeing from Fnatic this series. It's just they're just overreaching a little bit with all of the tools that they have. They're just going in, and Jin is just, as I said earlier, just the calm in the storm. You know, it's just. Watch Mickey here, though. I mean, look at this coming in around while they have the teleport in from Broken Blade. That's a three player knockup. Four players end up getting charmed. Talk about a perfect engage. Fnatic still have firepower to make it close, but this is where BB comes alive. Oh, absolutely. There's so much space for him as well. He's so unkillable as well. Gargoyle's going fade as well. Protein Shoe as well coming through and just taking care of Humanoid on the back end. And I mean, it's low HP spots, but it's still Cassante things, and there's not much you can do about it when he gets this ahead in the game. And this is just one of the dangers of Cassante. You know, He's a yeah. traditional tank, you know. Fnatic is probably saying, okay, their backline is dead, we're killing, we're killing human, we're killing caps, we're killing Hans, and then all of a sudden, the seven kills Cassante is there, full HP, ult up, ready to just ravage through everything. Yeah, we know now that uh, Fnatic is going to select blue going into the next map, but um, when we the next, the next game, rather, yeah, next it's, game, Summoner's Rift. it's Summoner's Rift all the time. That's you never know. Bring that, back you back never know, maybe something happens. Uh, any case, but uh, Ender, we know we were talking about this game and about like, oh, you know, who really was the standout on G2 because it was hard, and you said definitively, yike, why is that? Uh, because from start to finish, it was just gorgeous from him. I think you could also say Mickey writes for so many of the Gauges that Yike and Mickey found throughout the, the game. The collapses, three players in the mid, diving Noah like three times underneath the mid lane tower. What sold it for me was this Baron. He just slams everybody on the Fnatic team. He was busy with the Baron, but then when he comes in and sees these four players group up together, after Fnatic think they have the re-engage, lights out on Humanoid trying to use that, that Unleashed power. Yeah, I thought we had this team fight earlier, but it's also just Han Summer initially blowing a lot of his cooldowns, maybe a bit over eager, but it spies the team where Fnatic now is completely tunnel visioning on the Kaiser. They forget about the rest of the members on G2, and as soon as they forget that, it's already over for them. Indeed, uh, it's a rough one, I think, right, for Fnatic, who we thought maybe after the five games yesterday, they they will know exactly where their priorities lie, but I think that is one of the difficulties in going against, uh, up against this G2. There's a lot of priorities to take out on their side, and then on top of that, you need to be sharp in every single one of these little skirmishes through to the big ones. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't think the draft really mattered in this yeah. game, right? It was just punch after punch. G2 were the more cohesive team in the team fights. That's what it came down to. The individuals finding their moments, like the amount of in ridiculous, like three, four player engagements that we saw between Mickey and Yike, I don't know how you realistically beat that as Fnatic. Yeah, What's their I mean, name together? Yeah. Mike. <laughs> Mike. Mike. <laughs> Mike Drop. Mike Drop. Yeah, I think Fnatic was still, you know, had a good showing. I feel like their uh, their approach to macro game and everything, the trades that they were doing around the map, around the Heralds, and just the overall early mid game was great. It's just, it's just one of those small things. They just falter around, you know, team fight execution. But I feel like a lot of the aspects of their game was actually pretty good. Oh, awesome! That means hopefully we'll see an even closer game going into the next one. But uh, we're now minutes away from game two, and as we head to a break, it looks like the audience is taking one as well with Kit Kat. We'll be back after this. Enjoy, guys. The Bramble Special, Hans Summer dodges it to advance the defense. Oh, Hans Summer could flash away, Trimby going forward. Hans Summer low, the Ignite's not going to be enough. The Trimby game's down. down, means that Trimby falls for first blood. Coming out as well as Yike tries to join the play. Cam's going to be able to put damage down to Humanoid because he has no mana. He manages to get under the tower. Has. No one doesn't have the best guns here. Purple, blue, but they try and turn oh, it on. Oh, damage. Summer, Hunt Summer dashes forward. The killer instinct is is down. No one now trading back onto Mickey, and that's two. Nice, uh, three beer. I'm going. Oh, good, 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 good. It's fine. I think we win. I think we win. We win this hard. We win this hard, guys. Good job. Good engage. That's from Yike Roo. Thank you, mate. Let's go!
find some sort of stun or ultimate, he actually just gets chunked out of it. Oh, yeah. If you've all had a moment, catch your breath. Let's jump on in to game two. Draft starting in just a moment. And what a game one we had. Betty, Kajo, tell me what we feel Fnatic needs to do to adapt coming into game two. Well, I don't think that the drafts were necessarily the problem. I think that this ultimately came down to a lot of what happened in the mid game with WoW. G2 were constantly finding ways to catch Noah off guard, the way in which the positioning of Razor and Trimmy were on the map. 
G2 had great information. Kedro highlighted it early in the game. This deep vision that they consistently had was so valuable of being able to find these picks. But right now, we're looking at these bands. Talia is still up and available. I feel like G2 really need to consider taking that away with the Trist and Azir both up as well. That's the thing. Tristana, Azir, Talia, Rel, Mal uh, Malkai rather instead of Rel. So there's four champions open. If you ban one mid laner, what you're saying is if you first pick Malkai, we can take things like the Azir away. Um, we can take things like the Talia away. So, Fnatic, I think the first pick Talia might be the best, but I the problem agree, is yeah. they're blue side, so they can't really hard flex it on red. Getting Talia on red side is a nightmare to deal with. And we'll see if G2 want to pick it. We haven't seen much Talia from Yike at all. Uh, right, Caps, yeah. we know that you can play it, but I think they need to take it away here. They need to stop that red side flex. I also think Fnatic should look at Zaya 2-3. Uh, I think this, this Aphelios, I'm happy with it. I don't think Noah played exceptionally bad that game. I think his jungle support just wasn't on mid-wave timer, so he just got really exposed when yeah. catching waves, and G2 punished that mistake. So he needs to be more in sync. Um, did get some nice early 2v2 kills, but yeah, it's on G2 now. Do they want to early rotate the Renek to denial? Poppy's open as Wunder's response. Looks like the Maokai is going to be the choice. Wow. I admit, like, this is what Razzle loves, being able to play these scaling mages into these more team fight focus. The early game, he can really run away with it. We saw that delayed invade or the lame, the control that he had of the bot side jungle from level one didn't quite pan out in terms of that early gank, but this is a great opportunity for him to get huge advantages over Yike in the jungle. I think Renekton, Zaya 2-3 for Fnatic's nice, especially if G2 oh, yeah. go for Azir, but Jace is open. I wonder if they're gonna go some Jace Maokai draft. Yeah, there's the Jace. So I think Renekton, Zaya could work. Zaya struggles into poke, but that's Fnatic comfort. Um, can alternatively just drop, I think dropping mid is good because you're playing Talia and you can flex till 4-5. So AD top really screams to me here unless they want to early rotate Nautilus. So Renekton Zaya makes sense. It's good comfort, but yeah, G2's poke comp is going to be super hard to deal with. So they might re reconsider it and play for a later on something like an Ornn, you know, something more hard engage. Are they going to go for it? There's the Renekton. Okay. And as much as Wonder has had a great return to the LEC stage. We have to remember he has only been here for a couple of weeks again. So having comfort sometimes just usurps every other uh, potential advantage that you can find in a draft. The Renekton once again, obviously Wonder had a great performance against Broken Blade again on it in game one. Uh, this this lock-in for Cinder is very telling for Fnatic. Yeah. Uh, we've seen Humanoid have a fairly limited champion pool, largely consisting of Tristana, Azia, and Jace being his main go-tos. With G2 showcasing in game one, pitching that pool, putting caps on the Azir. Game two now, they've prioritized taking the Jace away from him. You can see that he's being forced onto this Cinder, and G2 is saying, we're happy for you to do that because we have ways to deal with it. Olaf top for BB. Oh, that is an amazing pick into Renix and Talia. One to six, it's a bit risky, but after that, you're gonna run straight through them. Double mage against Olaf is a struggle, so things like Leandris would be important for both of them. Yeah, so G2, Poe, Kompan, and Olaf. This is gonna be... Fnatic have got good champs for their players, but this is not gonna be an easy draft for them, considering they have the blind pick support and their bot lanes going 4-5. Yes, uh, G2's is as well, but they can first select AD, right? So if they take away things like the Alistar, I think Brown might actually be taken away from uh, from Fnatic to stop the Kogmo Brown. And then Nautilus Rakan, they can just take their pick of the litter. I wonder if G2 will look towards the Zaya ban as well, just to removoving that comfort from Noah. Yeah, Kaiser ban, I was going to say. Kaiser well. makes sense as well, yeah. yeah. Totally agree with you, Kajro. Obviously, in game one, Noah did struggle a little bit. He had a really good early start, three and one, but ever since. Uh, G2 just started to isolate him in that mid lane. Became very hard for the AD carry to play the game. I think they have a small problem here. Yeah, so they ban Alistar Nautilus, they ban Braum. Do you ban Kaisa or Rakan now? Because if you ban Rakan, they pick Kaisa and counter support. Yep. If you ban Kaisa, they pick Rak Rakan and last pick AD. So I'm kind of, this is why I'm worried for Fnatic dropping uh, bot lane to 4 5, because as much as you'll get Zaya, I think it's the support matchup which becomes a bit of a pain. G2's other option is to pick Kaisa when Rakan's open and play Maokai Kaisa bot lane into Rakan. Yep. And then last pick some kind of jungle. And they also have the Lissandra into the Rakan as the, well. Like, the, the thing they could do here is Kaisa on four, Maokai support into Rakan and pick Nocturne on five. You know, they have this option which is really scary. Let's see what G2 does. Rakan blind here makes the most sense with the current support bands. But does G2 have that little trap in there? Uh, I mean, there's their always team? the possibility of the Ezreal. If they want to kind of leverage their range, have more poke at their disposal. Do they want to prioritize their support? Do they want to prioritize the AD carry? Oh, I, I think they have Maokai support knocked yeah. on five here. I'd be a bit scared if I was Fnatic blinding Rakan. And Mickey, obviously, the prototypical inventive support. We saw him bring out Lissandra earlier on in 
the split here. Zaya I mean, do you, think more, do you think they're more likely to move the, the Maokai to support rather than just put the Lissandra there and pick something else in mid? They could also do the Lissandra, you're yeah. right. Yeah, that was a really good pick for them. But I like the creativity of having Nocturne with Poke. If Kaiser goes AP, you don't really lose out on that damage here. Uh, with a uh, triple AD top I mean, side. Nocturne in Desire is a bit miserable, but aside from that... It's a really good matchup into Talia, though. It's a really yeah, good way sure. of shutting and her down. Enough poke on the rest of your team to get the Zaya low before you have to go in with that paranoia. You can see the discussion right now. I think yeah. Fnatic are kind of aware of this Rakan blind. Do they just take the risk? G2 have set up this Rakan blind for them. It's very uncommon to ban Nautilus, Alistar, and give Rakan. Yeah. So they have something up their sleeve. They must be thinking about how they're going to go for it. Okay, so G2... Then, so what's their answer? Is it Lissandra support or is it Nocturne on five Maokai support? The it's Chandra the Lissandra support, you're right, yeah. Okay. I think G2 were ready for that Rakan blind bait that this they had set up. This is the biggest problem with playing G2, though. We talked about it extensively. The desk talked about it. They just have answers for yeah. everything. And again, we go back to the first half of Fnatic's draft. This priority on Syndra, it also goes to show G2 understands by attacking Humanoid in the draft, they also get to dictate some of their big strengths in the draft as well. So G2 are going to walk away from this draft feeling very good. Oh, yeah, 100%. I think itemization for Fnatic is really tough. Uh, when they have a poke champ like Jace and Olaf, you know, very kind of high damage, uh, base damage or lethality for Jace in that case. And then they have Lissandra, Maokai, you really need tenacity. But Fnatic's comp, well-rounded. Talia Renek's a great top jungle combo. Oh, yeah. Zaya Rakan, great bot lane. Syndra is a great mid-game champ to get yeah. you ahead and find picks. Their comp overall for Fnatic, it makes sense. It's just G2 always have responses to these things that shut down everything you want to do. So uh, game one, very stock standard, but here's the G2 we, uh, we've we known throughout the year. I will definitely say that Fnatic's comp give them a lot of tools to fight in the early game. If it is going to be a lot of brawling, Zaya Rakan, incredibly powerful. Renekton and Talia, Kedra was talking about it, an easy lane that you can play through. Razzle has more options, I think, than he did on the Maokai. Let's see if he can utilize these options to get a game back from G2. We have to feel Fnatic are going to come back in this series. Doing it in a game like this is where you want it to happen. G2 taking on Fnatic. G2 do have a tendency in game two to bring something out a little bit spicy, think of the Evelyn uh, for Yike. This Lissandra support is a known counter into a It makes it very difficult for him to ever actually do anything, because as soon as you jump in, you just get Ring of Frost or you get frozen tombed and you're locked up for quite a while. Mickey brought it out against the Mad Lions earlier on in the season finals, and G2 won that game in 20 minutes and 46 seconds. Fairly swift there. Yeah. I'm excited to see it once again in Mickey's hands. Game one was a bloodbath. Pretty much what everyone wants to see in G2 versus Fnatic. It is the rivalry here in Europe. And the arena has been nothing but electric throughout game one. Both G2 fans, Fnatic fans just going wild at every single engagement. Such a storied matchup between these two teams. Obviously, you know, you look back to when G2 joined the league all the way back in 2016. Ever since then, it has been, who's going to win? Is it G2 or is it Fnatic? And it's ebbed and it's flowed, but over the last five years or so, G2 have always come out the victors. Here we see Humanoid trading with Caps. Mickey and Hans Summer walking down towards the bottom lane. Oh, he missed it. Waiting, but he misses. Hans Summer can't quite land the knockup now. It's rooted, ignited, and needs to get away. Able to escape, but that's his flash burnt early on. Look at bot, look at mid. Fnatic already level one on the back foot. Cap's got an incredible trade onto Humanoid as the Jace just auto attacking him down. Look at top oh, as well, Kedro. Oh, yeah, Wunder started E. I think that's pretty smart. He shouldn't die, but uh, the E start there just making it so he can live. But the trades aren't great. These lanes <laughs> are not going to be easy for wow. Fnatic. Razark has a tough task ahead of him. He's got a ward on his blue buff area as well, so G2 know exactly where he is. Fnatic could go for a risky play here. They could go for Red Crux into bot gank if Trimby can just look for the W onto Mickey if he oversteps. You can see how aggressive he's playing. There's no ward for G2 in the tri so Razor could run around quickly and catch G2 off guard, but the problem is they're going to be at a level disadvantage on this bot side. I think it's... Razor really wants to play for bot side camp. But no, the first Noah Mickey. cleanses immediately. Noah down to 100 HP. Trimby with a good double knocker, but no one from G2 was under tower. And if Razor doesn't stay bot side here and clears his top camps, Yike's gonna path down and dive them, so he has to try and get some lane push. He's gonna look mid, but there's actually a... Is that a zombie ward yeah. that's there already? Razor is he not gonna... Is, does he not see it? He must see it. There we are. Things it out. And clears it. Wave pushing in. It was a good time to gank, but the zombie ward 
obviously stopping any advance from Fnatic. But look at what Yikes now doing with this information. They've littered the top side of Fnatic's jungle with wards. Oh. Razok is gonna start on his walls. Yike is gonna know this. He's gonna have the time. He has the smite up. Olaf also making his way down from the top lane means that dead. this is an easy steal. G2 there looking for a play. If he walks that blue, he's dead. He's Razzle, dead. No, Locked up he he's got to be a little suspicious, right? Razzle. Razzle. Seismic shot back with the medium. They locked up with a twisted advance, and he's dead. First block to the Viking in the top lane. Not spotting out that zombie ward was so crucial. It gave Yike all the information he needed with the push in top lane as well. Broken Blade and Yike, they find first blood and G2 on the board once again. Yeah, they had that sweeper level one on Vicky to get that zombie ward to slow Razor down. And they pulled Broken Blade down from top side. Trip B. Very low. low. And Summer oh, manages and to flash the knock of the United Stick and Trip B is able to escape for the moment. And no one's going to get one in response. One more in the bottom lane and the AD carry starts to. Party starts a fight. And summon no mana means the heal back away. He needs to crash the wave here, Noah. Razork's around. Yike is pinging bot side. I think they know that Talia's down here. Razork could flash over this wall and just full send it, but it's a bit tough. Doesn't have the information, doesn't know where Mickey is, so he'll help Noah get this wave in. Noah actually trying to take a recall there. Maybe having push the wave. Yeah, it yeah. should eventually. So it's not the end of the world. I guess kind of even, right? In a sense, a yeah, little yeah. slow push into it, but the next wave will help a bit. Now Broken Blade with Red Buff and Wonder really with nowhere to go. Slice and Dice away, still has the flash, but the Undertow connects and Wonder. When you're gonna flash, because Broken Blade is hungry for a kill. A flash away from Wonder, no TP on him as well. Broken Blade I can push this wave in. You have to imagine. I mean, we've all seen Adam's Olaf. <laughs> we know what it can do. Obviously a big inspiration for so many top laners picking up the champion as an answer into Renekton. And Broken Blade, one of the better top laners for Olaf that we have in Europe. Getting a bit of revenge from Wonder, but get, again, in the laning phase, Wonder really has come into his own. It feels like the, the more stage experience he's gotten, and he's gotten a fair amount of it now <laughs> over the last two series, is feeling good. Now, a lot of junglers hovering around the bot side of the map. Lane gank is really good, waves pushing into them. It's just a case of landing the Rakan W into the Talia CC, so maybe Fnatic can find this. It's just a case of whether they landed Razork. I mean, it's such no, a big wave, hand though. stepping up a bit. Oh, oh Razork. Sidesteps that. A little bit greedy, considering there's no flash on Hans. Only that supercharge is E to dodge away. Yike needs to reset. He hasn't faced yet. He needs to spend that gold. It's a horror early game for Fnatic. They're losing every lane. They're getting pushed in. They have some vision in River there. You can see on the bot side of the map, but that's going to get swept away soon. When Yike comes out of base, pings already towards that bot side to get some vision for Hans and Mickey. And it just feels like Razor doesn't have a lane to play through. Mid's tough. Bot side is losing. Can't really go top because Olaf will hit six soon. They just have to hold on at the moment. If they can do that, obviously we've seen Razzle in mid-game team fights on this Talia just absolutely rip through his opposition. Did it yesterday against the Mad Lions alongside Wonder Scion. Here, only level four. A couple of camps down on Yike, who's already ticked over to that level five. Might even be G2 here using their bot prior to start up the first dragon of the game on the six minute mark. TP will be committed from camps, getting that quick base off, returns the lane. I mean, even after what was a pretty miserable trade for Humanoid in the mid lane matchups, it's done a great job of keeping the lane pretty neutral. This is the value of that Syndra pick. We'll see how valuable it will be later. We heard Cadrill talking earlier in the draft about how Olaf into double mages. Great time for the Olaf, yep. not so great a time for the mages. We'll see how Humanoid navigates that battle. But uh, right now, TP now coming in from Humanoid, Mickey just offering some support for Caps in the mid lane. Caps, Doran, Shield, Mercury Treads, he's not dying really, is he? Doesn't have the phase rush, so can be exposed to those ganks, but yeah, the first strike will help uh, when it comes to that poke and getting some extra gold. If I'm, if I'm Razak right now, I'm not sure. Just double down in bot, it looks like. I mean, we're thinking next objective is Harold, right? Yeah. What options the Fnatic potentially have to answer that? Maybe they just accept sacrificing it and commit to funneling plates bot side. Maybe they do actually think that if they can get ahead on the objective, they can find a favorable fight. The question is, do you really want to fight this Olaf this early on now that he's level seven with the Tiamat completed? Yeah, he can get top push here. The wave's bouncing into him, but with Tiamat and with his Qs, he just automatically collaterals the wave down anyway. So yeah, I wonder even in bouncing waves cannot get the push on stacks and Yike just has to secure bot side. I feel like it's a game state where because you're losing so many lanes, if Razork shows top, your bot lane is annihilated. So he needs to stay in Fog of War, use pink wards, cover bots. You can see Yikes hovering. If Razork wants to show, BP was looking in vision in bot side river, it would be lights out. Yikes is six already. Razork yet to get there. BB trading in the top lane with Wonder once again. 
Nope. Not yet. Trimby. Spotted Trimby. Stepping forward, gleaming Quill. There's the ring of frost, and immediately Trimby's locked up and shut out. Nature's grass not quite gonna connect with another glacial path forward as Razzle tries to join the fray. Hits level six on the crooks, but can't get there in time to help his AD carry. Look at Capsule, Razork sandwich. He might have to flash or alt away here. Tall. There we are. Uses the ult to get out. Maybe he's the trade back in. I don't really think they have the damage as oh. Mickey goes forward. Noah with a big cleanse. Flash away with the killer instinct from Hans Zimmer. The friends beat him. Binds two in Montpellier. Meanwhile, Humanoid and Chaos trading in the mid lane. Humanoid knocked away from the tower. Chaos low on mana. Humanoid trying to dodge everything he can. The shock blast not quite able to connect. And Humanoid escapes with his life. The Rakan is really struggling against Maokai Lissandra. Trimby cannot move without these Mercury Treads. He cannot. He won't be able to move for the rest of the game when he looks to these what uh, looks towards these three v threes. Excuse me. Uh, so you'll see here. He just goes in, gets rooted up. There's nowhere for him to go. But it's just Fnatic. Razorx out, but they look for a turn with a little damage from the uh, Talia. But it's the flash from Yike and then the ult from Hans. They just both fall. The response from G2. Again, they, they, there's just zero hesitation from this team. They follow the calls to the letter. The collapse from Caps was so crucial. Another play doesn't quite work out in the mid lane, but look at this knockback from Razork. It just invites G2 in. Hans Summer with the ultimate secures himself a double kill. 3-0-1 now for the AD carry of G2. Phoebe just uses ult there. We saw on the bottom left, Trippy flash W in Caps with flash up. Caps just dodged it, wasn't in range for the knock-up, and uh, yeah, G2, 3,000 gold up, they've got the first dragon, they're moving towards Herald, base is coming in from Fnatic, Humanoid actually stopping his reset, that basically means Herald's gone, so he's gonna catch his mid wave, pulling up Trippy, yeah, Fnatic have top push, Wunder has TP soon, but yeah, they can't contest. Mickey even soaking up the mid lane XP just to guarantee that level 6. They do want to make sure they get this reset in though, Mickey gonna stick around to make sure that Yike is safe. They don't have the sweeper up just yet. Instead, he's going to invest some deep control wards, get information as to where Razzok is, but Fnatic are conceding this objective. They say it's not worth the fight. And so G2 should be able to secure this one. Five to one in kills, two and a half Ks, the gold lead already. G2 from draft to laning to where we're at now. Yeah. It's just been a one-sided dominance. And oftentimes when Herald's being taken, you can cross map, but Hans is going to run bombs. He should be in time for the wave to get Static Shift propped, but actually, Mickey's not there yet, so he's being very respectful, knowing that Razork's down here, might lose out on the melees, but I think he should be back in time for the cannon, so on paper he's losing a plate, but I think he'll be in time for the wave. Caps also has the mid push, Fnatic are gonna get collapsed on here, Mickey doesn't have the flash, but neither does Razork. Trimby, good look for the knockup here, Caps going forward, Caps able to dodge away from it, Noah popping the feather storm in the bottom lane, and there's the frozen tomb, and there's Noah being sent packing in the arc, he's flooded! by G2 in the bottom lane. Caps going forward with Trimby. That will be another. One order from Caps would be enough, but Trimby's just left under the tower. The Ring of Frost forward as Razzle falls as well. An accelerated shot blast for an accelerated game here by G2. Wonder TPing in behind the Dominus Popper. No, it's, he's already half HP. Wonder down to 200. Yike trying to escape. Prey Seeker from Hans Summer. From long range, Wonder and Trimby. And walk away wounded. And Hans Summer will not let them escape. Trimby falls for a double double. G2 is just tearing Fnatic apart. They have no answers, they have no options. Everything they try to do is just dissected by G2. And this all starts with Caps and Yike coming in from mid. Yike has just secured the Herald. He's trying to assist and prevent this potential dive on bot. But G2 then sees an opportunity as Noah is isolated. The ultimate doesn't actually get cancelled from Mickey. It just goes on a short cooldown, gets interrupted, can then still use it, and Noah has no way of escaping. G2 then hunt down the jungle and support of Fnatic. I like what Caps did here. Doesn't go for Trimby. He has the shock blast up. You know what? I'll just turn around and kill Razork then. Where can he go? Yeah, he's as good as dead. Humanoid comes in. TP from Wonder was nice, but Wonder's TP stings because he knows Broker Play is just going to get a lot of plates for this and win out the lane, but he has to help his team. Gets Mickey down, tries to look for a Yike alongside Trimby, but he doesn't have the health bar, does he? Caps is fighting off against Humanoid. Hansama has the flash ready, finishes off Wunder, finishes off Trimby. And Fnatic look pretty finished in this game if they can't find a fight soon. See, uh, Broken Blade's gonna, gonna kill Wunder here. Flash forward, there's the Ragnarok, and that Ravenous Hydra is hungry for blood. Wunder down! Broken Blade 2 0. And that's what happens, he's 700 gold down, Wunder. 400 before the kill. But it's the plates that he got there. Trippy with a good knockup. No way. He would have dashed across the wall. The nature's grass still gets the root. Yike 
in the pit. He's going to lock it down. Razzle knowing now with the frozen two. Mickey, he's in the midst of three and he doesn't give a damn. Oh, the only watch. power stopped by the stopwatch. Mickey's still able to flash away and dash away. And everything that Fnatic do is met by the unyielding hand of G2. What can Fnatic do? The answer is watch as their comrades die in battle. Oh, oh the ultimate force out from Noah to escape the long range snipe Mickey, from the 9 0 1 Hans. Mickey is looking for more. Oh. Noah's dead. That's an ace, all five dead. Fnatic are crumbling at the seams 13 minutes in, and it's a 9k gold lead. Mickey will pay for it with his life, but complete. Decimation from G2. It's ruthless, isn't it? It's just non stop. Fnatic, it doesn't get any better either. The Rakan's only going to struggle more and more. The Olaf's ahead. They have Coke. They have a 3k god lead on AD carry. And we'll look at this again. Fnatic looking for a dragon. Maybe thinking he had some tempo, but yeah, Caps TPs and ignores Midway. Pushes Noah out to fight. Razork stuck in the pits with. I think he has Flash up, but he's rooted to chain CC'd. And Fnatic just run for the hills. They get chased down. Mickey going in. Hans has the killer instinct as well to follow up the stopwatch. Prevents all the burst from Humanoid. And it's just an easy cleanup then, isn't it? There's the Killer Instinct, there's the kills. Humanoid falls, Noah's forced to ult, he dies to Mickey later on. And yeah, it's uh, about an 8 to 9k gold did I expect now. I mean, in an interview earlier, we heard from Mickey saying that he feels like that he doesn't do anything particularly impressive. And like this game is a perfect representation of the impressive things that yep. this man does do. He's incredibly deep champion, Paul. The way that they set it all up in draft. Kedro, you talked about it extensively. And it feels like that this game is done and dusted. And if the storyline has con continues the way that it has done through season finals, Fnatic will find a way to force us to a game five. But with a 14 minute, 9,000 gold lead, you feel like the Fnatic is going to have to pull out one hell of a magic trick to slow down this train that is G2. I just think this Rakan trap was just beautiful. I think Fnatic knew what they were getting themselves into, but they thought they could handle it. Mickey could be all right here. The route doesn't even land. But they, they, they knew what they were getting themselves into with this blind pick. Fnatic, their drafting is quite obvious. They've played 10 games in two weeks. G2 have all the information they need and all the answers ready. Fnatic need to go out of their comfort zone, perhaps, but Mickey, Mickey maybe not. Caught out Glacial Park just in time. Once again, the Frozen Tomb stops the only power. Charm coming out by Trimby as Fnatic are desperate for anything. Mickey dodging, but the Ignite will be enough to take him out. In fact, Humanoid, the one to take the kill. TP, from TP in by Fnatic. They're looking. They've drawn some blood. They're looking for more. Can they find anything? Instead, the TP just for mid-prio there from Wonder. Yeah, Wonder's gonna lose more and more top. Kinda sucks to be uh, the Renekton right now. He's forced to help his team while Broken Blade can kinda lean one versus zero at times, just knowing that he just has to sit here, do his job, and he gets kills onto Wonder when he falls behind. Cap's trying to threaten the bots here too. TP behind from okay. Humanoid. Razor has the ultimate as well. Wonder's there. G2 could get collapsed on. They don't have any TPs of their own. Noah has the Feather Storm. Caps has to flash away. The Weaver's Water, but great knockback by Yike. The Bramble Smash stopped from Razzle from getting too close. Humanoid, though, should be able to take out Caps' Seismic Shot back. And the Gifted shut down over the Humanoid. I mean, it's the best play that Fnatic really had. Caps somewhat isolated with Yike trying to provide peel on the bot side. But the problem is Broken Blade is just going to continue to do damage in top lane. Look at Han Summer in mid. This is where all your goal difference is sitting right now. 3.5k for Hans, 2.3 now for Broken Blade. And while again, it is a good opportunity to get that kill onto Caps. Noah's barely got more gold than Mickey does. Oh, it's just incredible from G2 so far. Fnatic still oh, looking for anything nice. they can find, but the killer instinct lives up to his name. Hans Summer goes legendary. And I feel there's a little bit of vengeance for Six years ago, when Hans Sommer was stopped by G2 here in France from claiming his first LEC title here alongside his comrades in G2. 2017. Yeah. Six years Long time ago. ago. And back here with is. Misfits. Yeah, here he is at his peak alongside a lot of other G2 players who feel like they're in their peak right now. Uh, this Kaiser has three items at 17 minutes. And yeah. has a Leandris. That's absurd. 10-0 yeah. and 1 right now for the G2 AD carry. Have to give props to Yike and Mickey again, though. Lots and lots of setup for the team. Oh, Game I mean, one was the Yike show as well with Broken Blade in those fights. It's, it's it's so incredible to see the growth that Yike has made. The shoes that he had to fill. Again, like this game feels like it's done and dusted. We're already thinking about Game three now, and Fnatic, they're gonna have to do something miraculous because look at Mickey Zero has it alone walking. 
into the enemy jungle. He's setting up this side. vision. He's got vision absolutely everywhere right now. If we have an opportunity, one razzle. It, yes. Uh, he's Evan Trout though. So oh, true. Like, I don't know if he has enough damage. He Doesn't can be a nuisance. Stop, won't stop him from trying. From I feel. And now Humanoid's gonna get the same treatment he just dished out to Caps. Caps doesn't need a helping hand though. Another kill for the Dust Blade. Jay Smith. And for Fnatic, everything reeks of desperation. Glacial path forward. Krimby has to try and block it, but Mickey doesn't even have to take the E if he decides against it. Noah takes a third of his HP. Oh, if the next W lands, he's just gonna go. Oh, there Two goes. Yep, down Razzle's down well. now being chipped away at. And G2, well, they have so much time here. They control the bot side of the map. They threaten the bot tier two. They're happy to sacrifice the tier one top lane. This also gives them control over the dragon. They've left Broken Blade to solo that objective out. Yike is just here covering for caps. You can also see Mickey hovering off in the wing. The amount of vision control that Razzle G2 doesn't have. Know. Razzle doesn't know. Now he does knock back to the bot. Flash away. Trimby trying to dash away, but already Razzle's down and Trimby. Follow suit sent to the grave by G2. G2 have Herald. I've seen them do these kind of things before. If they want to pop it and maybe oh, try and push the right now. for an end. Mickey I don't know if it's... the towers that they can keep the minion alive, but they decide against it. They back away. It's broken blades. No TPs on G2. They don't have that ability to. They're getting greedy here. In Frozen 2, Mickey low, but the Unleashed power has been used. Humanoid able to cut him off with the Dark Spirits. Humanoid looks for a little bit more. Caps, charmed, quickness going in as Humanoid doesn't really have the spells right now. No cooldowns, and Broken Blade begins to tank the tower in the mid lane. G2 start to retreat, start to back away, maybe a little bit bloodthirsty. King be ticking, but not enough as Hunt Summer flashes the wall to escape the clutches of Noah. Wonder's gonna get a top tier two. His TP's just about to come up. He would have loved to have joined that fight, but that's gonna be another objective bounty over to Fnatic. Still, yeah, the 11k heavily. goal difference will go down to 10. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> it ain't much, but it counts. <laughs> Wonder is doing his best on the side lane. But you called it right, Kedrol. That was a bit cocky from G2. They wanted to go for more. They didn't play it calm and collected there. They were feeling themselves. They saw a clear window to end the game. And Fnatic held the line. They had to burn a decent amount. But at the very least, they'll keep their inhibitor alive. This Baron's going to spawn and get a surprise when he sees a three-item Kaiser just <laughs> destroying his health bar. On that, once that uh, gets forced up, I think that's it. Fnatic will probably try and contest it. You can see Trimby's putting down wards there. If we could look at the top side of the map, there's some sneaky vision that they've gotten down. You know, you put a pink in the pit, you think you've taken away their vision of the, of the Baron, but there's that one over the wall on the left. There is so. options here for Fnatic. Are there? Well, yeah, it's... They run in and die, run away and die, or... I didn't yeah. say they were good options. They were good options. <laughs> <laughs> right now, they want to... Catch this mid wave at the very least. I mean, the big problem for Fnatic here is they are on a timer because of the Rift Hell pushing in the bottom lane. Right, that Rift Hell will Slowly take the inhibitor surely. by yeah, itself. It's going to take a while. Through three lanes. They did this in game one. Herald bots forced towards Nash, and just yep. the, the longer it takes, the better. The Fnatic's just going to bleed. Uh, and G2 will probably force this up soon. Next mid wave's coming in, though, so they're going to have to contest this. The poke's going to be. Oh. Trimby. Caps is going to go in. Sides against the Edge of Night on him, though. Taken away by the spell shield. Razzle with a good knockback onto Yike. Recall coming out from Mickey. I mean, the damage has been done, right? They don't need to greet for that kill. They can immediately move back towards the Baron. Trimby is not healthy enough to fight this. Their core engage is now gone. And Fnatic, they can't face check. They've got nothing. This Baron will be secured by G2. 21 minutes in. G2 are 11,000 gold in the lead. They have three dragons. They have a Herald pushing in the bot lane. They won't get any further because Noah is here to stop it. But it is... A demolition is putting it lightly. What is so impressive about what G2 is doing is it's not just a matter of... Noah will secure it. But it's not just a matter of Fnatic playing bad and G2 exploiting them from draft to lane execution to the way in which they're playing this mid game. It's just fantastic League of Legends. Yep. G2 feels like a cut above right now. And now it's just a matter of securing that Nexus and unlocking in game two, bringing us to match point. I think it's also the discipline at times. Yes, we have seen them get over eager. We saw them at that bot lane inhibitor take a set too far, but here they clear out all the vision behind them. Make sure there's no possibility of a TP flank. They have vision on anywhere Trimby could look to get in with a quickness, and then they slowly push in, and then they sink their waves. G2 looking for the siege here. Nature's got the ultimate. Where's Hunt? When's he gonna dive in? 
Kill him instantly on Trimby, doing the half age. The glacial path forward, and Trimby's already down. Broken Blade with the Ragnarok can tank that tower for a little bit. G2 will take it out with the cycling shot perfectly timed as the Ragnarok turns out. One for one so far, top for support. Noah Lowe, he's gonna have to go back and get some help to rejoin this fight. Glacial path forward once again. The inhibitor tower did fall, but G2 still. On the brink of this, we'll see if Fnatic can fight back. I respect Hans for holding the ultimate. He's just poking away at Fnatic. Yep. They're so hesitant about when he's going to pull the trigger. The poke, it stinks so much. Fnatic have no real engage. That's... There it is again. Killer Instinct. Oh, Ooh, Humanoid. He is being shipped away at by the sapling. And G2 will restrain themselves and go back to base. And Humanoid has got a decent amount of damage. Noah's got two items, but... Every fight's such a disadvantage. First, you have to run away from the Maokai ult. Then you've got an Olaf running at you full speed ahead. The Jace poke, the Kaiser poke, Hansama's just chipping away at you. And now, as much as they get Trimby and Caps will fall, I believe, or get a lot of damage where he's forced out. Watch Noah here. Watch Noah's HP bar as they go on to BB. That lands, you're out. The fight, <laughs> the passive's slowly stacked up, you're gone. And so you've killed Olaf, let's try it. Okay, well, we have to back away. Caps looking for Trimby. The rest of Fnatic are closing in. Edge of Nylon Caps means that Trimby can't just go in with the quickness. He has to dash away. Mickey, Frozen Tomb as the Killer Instinct dashes forward from Hansama already. Razzle is down. G2 can look for more, and Broken Blade is ghosting forward. He wants a little bit more of this action. He wants the game to be over. Humanoid, nowhere to go. As a mage, what can you do with a, when a man with two axes just runs into your face? Broken Blade rooted up, but the Void Seeker just clips the heels of Noah. The Shock Blast will do more than that, though. And the axe in the back is all of that for Fnatic. Wonder, the last man standing. G2 will chase for the kill as the bot lane will look to end the game. They have the waves, they have the Baron. Sub 25 minutes. This has just been a one-sided demolition from G2. Can they end with Razzle up in three seconds? Humanoid in 10, Trimby up as well. Maybe they get one Nexus Tower, but Razzle could slow this push forward by G2. I think it would just be a single Nexus Tower and they will decide to back away. Wonder pops a stopwatch, able to flash away. He's still keeping all of G2 on a little bit of a merry dance, but that dance is stop likely split by Caps. Looking for three inhibitors, RG2. Top's already dead, mid's gone, bot's exposed. Waves are coming in, one tower left. Caps has TP up soon if he wants to recall and TP in, but I think he's healthy enough for them to look for a push. They can Maokai ult this next wave coming into the Nexus Tower, and Fnatic don't really have any flashes to stop it or fight back. There's the Nature's Grasp, Razzle has to flash away, but the tower, the target for G2, Han Summer misses a Void Seeker on a stun target. And that's the worst mistake G2 have made this game, you feel. Mickey knocked back with a seismic shove. The Nexus down to half, Hans Summer down with the Unleashed Power as well. And just as we spoke of discipline with G2, they almost lose it at the Nexus. But they will take it, and they are one game away from being season champions. As always, having a little bit of fun towards the end. They knew it was in the bag. It was a 12,000 gold lead going into that Nexus push. Fnatic are running out of picks. We've seen two comfort comps already now with Razork getting the Talia, it not working, getting things like the Syndra, the Renekton, nothing is an answer to G2. It, I feel like G2 can respond to anything you throw at them in, in so much better fashion. I feel like the rosters that have Humanoid on them need Humanoid to be a centerpiece in their success. And they are, G2 are just suffocating him. They're taking his champions away, they're forcing him onto the Syndra, and we see him try to make these plays, but they are just not working. They really aren't. What can Fnatic do? Will we see our third five game series of the weekend? Every other storyline has been 2-0 into 2-2 into five games. And I'm hoping to all help that happens once again. Analysts, take it away. I don't think it's happening. I don't want to be a party pooper, but oh my god, G2 um, just looking very, very strong. And I think that was a great summarization there at the end about kind of the, the importance that Humanoid has to any roster he plays in, but specifically this Fnatic. I think Yamato has outlined this many times before as well, because they play for him, they give him gold later into the game and they need him to, to work. But I don't also want to like decimate it to just that. I think Fnatic is all the way out of sorts with what um, G2 is, is throwing towards them, rather. Yeah, I think a lot of the success that we saw coming through from uh, Fnatic over the course of this season finals was that mid-jungle. The fact that Humanoid was able to step up, Razork was having a fantastic time, but it felt like coming into this game, that entirely has just fallen apart. Razork wasn't able to get the leads that we expected from on this Talia, like we saw from him yesterday. And when you're getting invaded on your top side, nothing is going to go your way if you're already stepping behind from literally four minutes into the game. 
Yeah, it just felt like he, he gets pushed out of the game very early on, and then all of a sudden G2's bot lane is able to just run over Fnatic, right? Like, this is the Lissandra counterpick that we've seen yeah. uh, G2 go for in the past, and they walk straight into it, right? The Zyra Khan come in, and then all of a sudden, the 3v2s around bot lane with Yike getting involved, it was just full steam ahead. Yeah, it's just, he wanted as much as he has a centerpiece, everything's just falling apart around him. It's just, I feel like he's not, he's not really, he's kind of like a victim of what's going on with Fnatic early game. I feel like they're just a little bit way too over eager. It's just game one, they've been very active trying to make things happen. And now, it's just as much as just G2 is just tracking them so well. And Humanoid doesn't really get to have this stable early game where he can come online. Yeah, and I think a huge portion of that in this game was the fact that you had this, well, Olaf in the top lane was constantly shoving in and immediately going and getting vision into that top side jungle. So it made tracking Razor significantly easier in the early stages. Caps on that AD mid was able to get control against Humanoid. He was constantly coming down onto this bot side to help out or else preventing Humanoid from being able to support his bot lane. And from that point forward, G2 were just in such a massive position, consistently have to play around this bot side. Yeah, you know, it's all well and good. Top lane did well, jungle did well, mid lane did well. <laughs> oh, Pun Sama! <laughs> just killed them! And like, there's just no hope for Fnatic playing against Hans if he is performing like this. He was a menace in the team fights, repositioning forward with the ultimate with the flashes, always catching more on the back of an already won fight. Yeah, it's I, just a light out for Hans here in France. I don't know how many kills we had this time, but he has 12 of them. Like, he was 10 and, and 0. At like 15 minutes? 15 minutes into the what? game. And I think you have games in which you think, you know, you can counter when a certain carry is fed. Not when he's this fed, though. Yeah, it's it's crazy. He's feeling it. This is this is prime Hans, you know. When yeah. he's feeling it, this is the, these are the sort of performances that he's just able to drop on any day. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna lose on home turf again. <laughs> no way. No, I mean, no way. Is it the, we're not jinxing it. I don't think it's like one of those that feels so crazy. And I know the casters talked about. We've seen the five game series. We've seen the fake reverse sweeps actually twice in a row now. Um, do you feel it in the air for Fnatic at all? Do they have any of that magic that they've so shown us in the season finals that that Grinta up until now? Yeah, I think they have it in them because it's it's a little bit it's a little bit odd because we've been always saying to Fnatic about Fnatic even in the pregame segment we need them to match G2 in the early game. But I feel like now they're kind of taking it a little bit too far. I feel like in game one they've been you know they've been trying to do this bot uh, bot lane uh, bot lane gang. Yeah, like a level two, right? Yeah, it's just I feel like they're not doing their setups properly level one, and then they're kind of overreaching. I, I would really love them to kind of do what they did yesterday. Yesterday, we saw, you know, stable games. The Razor bringing out Talia, bringing out Kartus. Having slow games where he can just cycle this full clear into full clear, and then everything comes to comes uh, comes online and alive at like five, six minutes, and then everyone's ready to play. But I feel like right now, it seems they're maybe pressure is getting a little bit to them, but it feels like they're trying to trade blows in the early game against G2, when they don't really need to do it because I feel like G2, these two games, they have just been punishing mistakes, you know, in, a, in great fashion. You know, the way they use their vision early game, level one, keeping track of Razork everywhere. It's just a very big difference compared to what Fnatic is doing level one, because I feel like they're not active enough level one to set up for these stable early games, and it shows. And, and they're really showing their hand early, right? In this game, it was Razork sitting on that ward for a good 20 yeah. seconds before he realized he was on a ward, and that's what ends up leading to the invade. Here we have it, just trying to set up for that gank. And that's what you're saying is, after going for the bot lane gank in game one, the, the gank here in game two, he gets invaded and punished. The top lane priority is just perfect from G2 to play around that. And G2 are always at their best when they're abusing their lane priority to set up Yike to invade. Since day one of the winter split, this is how they've been playing, and they destroy Razork in game two with it. But that's the thing, their vision control has been next to none this entire way through the series. We think back to game one, the reason they could make that bot lane play work was red buff, blue buff, we've got wards on both, and we're just gonna go right. Well, now we know exactly where Razork's playing, he's split the map, we're gonna try and play around this bottom side, make sure we're in a position to cover it. This game from level one, they had like four wards spread out around the map, one was on the blue buff on top side as well, so they're that's just operating rude. with full invision. Are you oh, calling the Fnatic players for <laughs> Whoa! Oh my wow. god! I said about Mad Lives yeah, today, uh, probably. Yeah. Oh my god! Anyways, and that's it, wild. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting to see the the stylistical difference between yeah. game one and, and game two between the junglers because it feels like they they traded roles. In game one, we saw Yike being very very active, skipping camps with Trill, finding plays left and right, and now in this game. Yeah, it felt like he was the one who was taking his time, you know, doing full clears, trying to get himself ahead. Yeah. <laughs> tracking <laughs> tracking <Fine>. Razork <laughs> everywhere he goes. So it felt like 
they're just in control. It all goes that back to that level one. So I'm really, really interested to see how this jungle dynamic is going to shape up going into game three. We'll see. Fnatic have selected red side. That is, in fact, the first Whoa. time in the season finals that a, a team, when they have the, the, ch the side, side selection. Oh, it's dropping. There we go. There you go. Dropping yeah. off on it's going to be me next. <laughs> side selection. Uh, they, they move to that red side willingly. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And I feel like this almost has to be trying to set up for a counter pick, obviously, somewhere, right? I, I think in mid lane, they've been getting the Syndra twice in a row now. It hasn't felt like that's been a huge advantage for them. In this game, of course, they get run into the R3 Olaf, which proved to be a very big issue. So maybe trying to sidestep that here in game three. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's I think going to actually be going down towards the bot lane. I think the fact that we've kind of seen Trimby hasn't had the best of times here at the moment, even having the Lissandra come out as a counter pick, I think they baited out the Zyra Khan really well. And I think they don't want to get caught by it again. And even then on 2 3 as well, there's a lot of power picks in them, and at the moment, they're actually seeing teams starting to get a few, like on those two, three rotations. Yes, you might get a rel, but oftentimes there's good responses that can come through. So I think Fnatic just trying to get something that can actually suit them better coming into this. Yeah, usually when a team goes red side, it's kind of a symptom where they don't really have, you know, their first pick is not working. They can't really get the power pick that can, you know, you can put all the eggs yeah. in that basket and be like, okay, this power pick is going to carry us the game. It felt like. When you go red side, you force enemies to blind pick something. You get better lane matchups, better jungle situation where you can create something and have more stable early games. But now it's, it feels a little bit like desperation, but it might also just be like, you know, we can get better better stuff. Razok is more comfortable get, uh, having these sort of lanes. So I'm curious to see. That's what I was going to say is like, because you're, you're right, like first pick, maybe they go away from the Tali, even though it's been so good for him. Maybe he needs something that he wants to fight more in the early game because they have the option. Do they full clear like you were talking about and look to stabilize early, play scaling with Razork? Or do they just try to fight harder and all in? Because it seems very clear that was the read they had at the start of the day, is we want to disrupt early on. Yes, and uh, we'll see if they can disrupt G2 at all. It's Caps just leisurely on his way to a 10th title. It's Hansama with his eyes on the prize in terms of getting that trophy on home soil. And uh, yeah, they've had a lot of finals. And the last two finals between G2 and Fnatic were, in fact, a 3-0. Uh, and zero. Yeah, how can Fnatic stop the streak? Can they? I, it's going to be so tough for them, right? They, they have to be able to find some way to disrupt. For me, I think they need to, to look around mid lane and jungle and get that gear working for them again. That has been such a power point for them throughout the season finals. If they can tap into that and attack the man you see on your screen here, tear that trophy out of his goddamn hands and bring it back. Yeah, I, I, to jump on that, I think, I think that's the way to go. But it might be, again, just full clear, bro. Just do full clear. <laughs> just, just full clear. Keep just, the game stable. It's and just that simple. Yeah. Full clear. Yeah, that's what worked for them. So just go back to it. In fact, full clear the whole season finals and win that trophy. <laughs> Maybe. Hopefully we get five games. It's going to be so, so tough. We'll see if Fnatic can bounce back after this. Trade back in. I don't really think they have the damage and oh. make it go forward. No, it was a big cleanse. Flash away with the killer instinct from Hunt Summer. The friends beat him. See, uh, Broken Blade's gonna, he's gonna kill Wonder here. Flash forward, there's the Ragnarok and that ravenous Hydra is hungry for blood. Wonder down. Broken Blade 2 0. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, and then, oh, and then I'm in the thing. Uh, and hitters? And hitters? Hit hitters? Bro, you guys, guys, are, you guys are trolling. Guys, <laughs> you guys are dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Finally over. To witness the most legendary team of all time. Take on Europe's finest. This is... Red Bull League of its own. Each game is inspired by movement. The drive is to be one move ahead of everyone else. 
to be legendary. Are you ready to make your move? Make it legendary. Join Kia at the League of Legends EMEA Championship. Kia, movement that inspires. Welcome back to the LEC Season Finals. The grand final between Fnatic and G2. Game one was a slugfest. Game two was a slaughter. Will game three be more of the same? Or will we see a changing of the tide? Well, Fnatic have opted to go red side. Okay. So they're clearly trying to change some things up. Mm. Uh, in terms of the, well, I say change things up. I mean, they experienced game one. But that at was least closer. It was closer. Least, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was definitely closer. We're definitely hoping for Fnatic to bounce back. We want more games between these two teams. But the Talia, unsurprisingly, are going to be taken off the board. The Poppy likely to be removed as well from the uh, pool, along with the Tristana, emulating exactly what G2 did in game one. Similar bands coming in, like you said. I think Fnatic quite smart to go red side, I think. Blue side, 
As much as giving G2 red allows them to flex, I think G, uh, Fnatic need to find uh, those flexes, those counter picks on supports. Blinding support just feels impossible on blue side for Fnatic. So, yeah, very similar bands coming through. Wow. And uh, Broken Blade's taunting the Kled here to tell Wunder, don't you dare blind pick that Reddington again. Now, what has Fnatic got? We haven't seen them adapt much in these 10... 12 games that we've seen of them throughout the last few weeks. I mean, Razzle talked about it on PGL yesterday. He's like, we we basically shown what we've got. Like, we have to try and find something overnight yeah. to really surprise G2. And obviously, that's a struggle. And obviously, Fnatic have fought very hard to be here, especially since <laughs> you look back at their, like, their season. They started off so poorly in spring, but now, can they find that final oh. bit of spark, that final Maokai fight? Jace. Maokai Jace or Maokai Azir. What's their pick of the poison? It's gonna be the Azir for Fnatic. Okay. So, I mean, Caps can take away the Jace here if he wants. They can keep the Relflex alive and they can pick uh, things like the Renekton if they want. They can pick a Draven. They can, uh, I think G2, it's really hard to say. Well, they, they can do Cogmore Brown. That's a G2 classic yeah. here on 2-3 as well on blue side. So, do they run up blind the Brawn though? Yeah, Rakan is up, which is a bit of a struggle, isn't it? They could just do Rakan on three on their Cogmore Brown. So I think top, yeah, Cassante could work. Um, not to. The Jace could work. They could grab themselves Zaya now, but AD carry has not been a huge priority. Mid does make the most sense. The question is, I think what does Caps want to bring? I was thinking the Nico actually. It's something that we have seen with the LeBlanc band away. Tristana also gone. Yeah, well, Caps Nico is really good, and uh, as much as it's been nerfed, I think with Rel with a melee support, just need a bit of damage, really. Don't you sprinkled on top, and it's good setup. What direction oh. will they go? Are we actually? Oh. No. Caps okay, it's, oh! it's game three. It's game three, lads. They won the last two. This is where we get the little see, bit of spice. Okay. Caps Yone is locked in. Now, Wonder can match top if he wants. Pick up that Renekton if he doesn't want to go on to the 4-5. They can prioritize an AD carry for Noah. If they want to take away things like the Kaiser, they can pick Nautilus here and ban away the Brown. But yeah, the Renekton is the easy option. Now, Fnatic dropping bot lane to 4-5 is a bit easier than it was last game because they'll have uh, their pick of the litter on support. I think Brown ban is good for Fnatic. He yep. stops Cogwar Brown, you can blind Nautilus if you want. I think Nautilus Alistar ban could come out from G2 if they ban away that Brown. And then uh, they could drop a Lissandra ban and take the Rakan. They could then go AD instead and, and leave the Rakan open. It's a bit of a... I think they have many options in this 4-5. In game one, they ban away Draven and Brawn. Question is, do they consider Draven to still be a threat? But there's always the possibility of this Rel going into the support. The Cogmore going to be taken away. So they don't ban the Brown, they ban the Cogmore instead. They could do Cogmore Draven then. Yeah. And uh, force Mickey to blind pick support. You know, if all supports are open, that's even better for Fnatic. So does G2 pinch it? No, they're going to match ADs. I'm mean, um, surprised. I actually thought direction G2 could go with something like the Zaya Rel and then flex something else into the jungle. Like they've shown the fiddlesticks before. They have AP jungle. None of it worked for G2. That's though. true. But they, still, they have it as an option. Yeah. I think the risk as well is if you leave the Zaya open, Fnatic just pick it on four and then on five they have their support counter pick. Well, I would love for them to take away the Kai'Sa, especially yep. when you're playing Maokai. I think Kai'Sa with the hybrid damage just suits G2's comp quite nicely. So there's the Kog'Maw Draven. Kai'Sa on four would be nice here. Does G2 take it away? Then Zeri feels like the next best one, unless you want to play mean, an Ezreal, Ezreal game. Yeah, Ezreal is the other one I'm thinking about. When you think about range, decent team fighting, good scaling. Fnatic could always look towards the Aphelios as well. You know, if they ban Kai'Sa, I think Hansama's pinched a bit. So leaving it open is probably better. But I do think a Kai'Sa denial has to happen. Alistar's banned, so that could be G2 signaling a, a Nautilus or Rakan, but Brown's open. Kai'Sa, Brown, not the best, though, uh, in terms of a 2v2 lane, so... It does deny the bomb, though, yeah, and Kaisa removes the uh, ability Kaisa. to stop right. that Malco. To be honest, Kaisa. now the blind support for G2 becomes a bit easier, because if you just pick Nautilus, they're kind of forced into Brown. They can go Kai'Sa, Rakan, but it's not going to be something winning. Uh, but I think Aphelios here could work. They could also do Lucian, Melio. Um, Ezreal's not ideal. Where will G2 go? Already a bit of a surprise with the Yone in the mid lane. Caps only brought that out twice in his career. Once against Koi earlier in the year. And once against SK Gaming all the way back in 2021. They did win both those games, but Caps does tend to be on the winning side. There's the Rakan locked in, so no Nautilus as wow. of yet. Why, why did they blind Rakan? Uh, Trippy will happily pick Nautilus into Rakan. It's yep. one of his most played throughout the season finals. They don't deny it. And now he doesn't have to go Brown, which is, you know, good into those melee sports, but team fights can be a bit sketchy, especially when you're playing. That's why. Yeah, I that's see. why. That could, that, that could answer the... <laughs> that could answer the yeah, question. Yeah, that could answer yep. the question. Yep. Oh. Oh. I mean, we always got to be... Sivir. Sivir, all right. We did see that band in the previous game, and a little bit more scaling on the side of G2. What no a way. comp no from way. G2 have drafted for themselves. Fnatic, I feel, are going in the direction that we expect. I wonder if 
do they still want to play the Nautilus into this? I think they should. Ooh, it's... Yeah, okay, Nautilus they've gone All right, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. It's a very effective front line. Like, you look at their team fighting, their range, that, like, this is such a, a well-rounded composition from Fnatic. It gives them so many tools, good scaling. G2's is a little bit more of a mismatch, a mishmash of different champions that we don't typically see in the meta. Obviously, we've seen them through various places and around the world. I'm looking forward to seeing what G2 can do. With I like Fnatic's draft. I think they can win yep. this game. I agree. They've got completely. tools. G2 haven't counted anything. This Rakan blind is questionable for me into Fnatic's comp. I hope Noah goes AD, though. I, I don't go AP Kaiser this game. Please don't go AP Kaiser. It just hinders your draft so much. If he goes AD, things like the Navori, um, I think. I think Vanek's traps will be overall stronger. They need yep. to get this Yone ahead. They need to get him on a side lane. The Renekton can match. Vanek has better scaling, more front to back. They've got great front line, good CC. They've got decent poke. This is uh, this is a game that's winnable for Fnatic from draft. I mean, for Fnatic, it has been a year of grit and determination. It has been a year of rising from the dirt. Can they do it once again here? Game two was a slaughter. It was one-sided for G2, but Fnatic have shown us across the years, across the storied history of this organization, that when they are down and out, don't count them out yet, because they are always able to come back. G2, on the other hand, have shown us sometimes they're just the goats of Europe. Can Fnatic find something, a little spark, a little bit of magic to fight back here as we get on in to game three? of Europe at their feet. So Fnatic, the dream has been more like a nightmare, but a fairy tale can Don't do it. out. Trimby gonna face check, and G2 find him, and now Trimby needs to get the hell out of there. Nice the flash, down. he has the hook as well, but G2 can chase, and Trimby really doesn't have anywhere to go. The ghost out from Hunt Summer. Trimby, can you get out of this one? It would be miraculous, but he can't find it. No miracle today, as G2 strike first. He face checks the brush, and G2, there's little they had to do, they just grouped and prepared for that early ward. And they're able to punish him for it. First blood, three games in a row now for G2. Not a great start. Not the worst that it went onto the rel. And the fact that Yike hasn't faced to spend that gold means the game is still even. But he's lost his flash, so that hurts the 2v2. That's the most important thing, really. It's not really the gold, it's just the summoner. Because that's targetable. Yike, right now, the fact you have no flash, the game can change now. Yike maybe wants the full clear uh, uh, top to bot, but now he can do three camps bot side into enemy blue. He can do three camps into bot gank into enemy blue. Losing that summoner opens up so many windows. He can even level two gank bot if he wants, you know? Uh, very unlikely, but still. It just opens up so many options when a, a, a quote unquote, a lane that's can kind of. What's the word I'm looking for? Contesting yeah. the bot push is now just going to have to give up. Yeah, it's basically impossible for Trimby and Noah. Obviously, they do still have power. Kaiser Nautilus, a very strong 2v2 duo, but we'll have to see if they can find anything. Hansama did burn the ghost in the level one trade. So uh, I'll be happy enough with this. G2 able to force Trimby and Noah back. You can see them respecting the fact that Mickey can step forward. The Gleaming Quill first, something we see quite commonly on Rakans now, just to get you that bit of extra sustain in the level one traits. So here it comes. You can see the Rel is leaning to the right side of her Raptors on the mini map, so she's probably going to walk into the bot side jungle. What Yai can also do is go behind the wall on the Tribush, flash over, and Wonder. then just look to W the Nautilus. So he strikes it. One day able to dodge it. Right now. Oh, the sapling stopped him. Really good spot there by Razor. He wants to flash over that big wall, yeah. but uh, it's gone now. A bit like a Rek'Sai gank. Trimby here trading. Gleaming Quill for Mickey will heal him up a little bit, but that's a very good trade for Noah. As he continues to put the damage down onto Hans Summer. Both Mickey and Hans Summer were below half HP. Mickey pops the potion to get himself back up. Gleaming Quill will heal Hans Summer as well. Credit to Razor. He's adapted his Earth early path as well, with Humanoid now having presence from the mid lane makes it harder for Yike to really do much more. That ward will be spotted out by G2. He's going to be forced to move back up towards his top side. You can't look across the map right now. Wonder has push in the top lane. Humanoid has push in mid. In the bot lane, even though it's been a close back and forth, they should be able to get level three off this. Will they look for a fight? They might. Razzle 
Wave pushing in towards Fnatic here. And Summer, though, backs away. Razzle gave to realize that he would be spotted in that tri bush, and so Ward goes down. Razzle now looking towards mid, and Gaps is pushed He's quite really far, far forward. No flash. He uses the, the knock up as well. That Q. He's dead. He should be dead. Can Fnatic strike back the flash away? Fate sealed as Razzle takes the kill on Summer and Mickey now trading. Good hook. As uh, Trimby tries to keep Mickey at bay. And just great timing from Razork. The ward was placed by Han Summer in that tri bush, but it was a second too late, which means they didn't have full information on where Razork was. And that gave him an opportunity to find a play in mid. Now Broken Blade once again going toe to toe with Wonder. Nice trades from him. Gait looking for a gank in top. Yeah, Razork's trying to follow him. You can see sprinting towards where his razor beaks would be. Realizes they're not there. Now some parts up towards the top lane, and Yike calls off the gank. Razork works his way across it. Should just be able to take his crux. Wonderwall back has the TP to get back into the lane. Broken Blade has already invested his. I think Razork will also take a big base after these crux. Maybe he wants to cover top. But uh, yeah, map stayed in a pretty healthy situation for uh, Fnatic. Mid's in a good spot. Flash down for the Yone makes it so Humanoid can play a little bit more aggressive. But I think he needs to start focusing on the bot side of the map now. Razork has the Nautilus Flash slowly comes back up. They can start to contest that 3v3. Broken Blade having a much better time in the top lane than he was against Wonder in game one on this Renekton and Cassante matchup. Wonder, though, has been performing relatively well for Fnatic across the last couple well, of weeks. I have to remember, has. he's uh, one of the most storied top laners, probably the most storied top laner in Europe. He's on that G2 lineup. The, the funniest thing about the Wonder story is it was back in 2018 when Whippo had to sub in for Soaz mm -hmm. against Wonder, who was on G2 at the time, and then Fnatic were able to win. Uh, and that was the year of winning for yeah. Fnatic, as you rightly said at the beginning of the cast, back when Caps was originally on the roster. Uh, so for now, him to be the sub and to get them here, I'm sure they'd be disappointed if they okay. could get themselves another game. Yike looking for it. Razork no smite, I think he used it as he started the Grump, but he doesn't know that Yike. And uh, he's going to move back into the bot side of River. One ward covering off Humanoid, as Caps should get towards that level 6 after one minion, there it is. Wave slowly pushing out. Razork on the bot side of the map still. If they push up here at G2, he could look to maybe flash over the wall, look for an engage onto Mickey, who's low on mana. But I think G2 will respect it. The yeah, sapling coming across the wall, yeah, they'll know. So a very respectful early game from both sides. A lot of trading during Not the anymore. The all out's coming out. Workplay trying to pull Wonder back. Doesn't have the flash. Would just be a flash for flash. Workplay doesn't even need his. It's the early level six, or the first level six, at least for Broken Blade, means that Wonder has to respect the kill threat of Cassante. He's able to get away with his life, and he should be able to soak up this whole wave as well. A lot of resets going to be coming through. You'll start to see supports get unlocked on the map as well. Keep your eyes on Mickey making his way back towards base. Let's see what he decides to do, whether he looks for an opportunity in mid. We saw a couple of pings from Fnatic suggesting that Mickey might be making his way out onto the map. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Trimby doing the same. It's awkward here because Crab's up on the top side, and Razork wants to contest it, but Wonder really needs to take a base right now. Humanoid has insane mid push, it would have been ideal to contest that 3v3, but because Broken Blade was winning out on the trade, if Wunder doesn't take this base here, it makes his lane so, so difficult. So he's gonna take that reset, they're gonna drop the crab. Mickey's here to cover Caps off. No Dragon Start just yet. There's a pink in the bot side river for Fnatic. Trying to hold some vision as the Seaver really wants to keep that perma push up. Mickey's trying to cover. Caps has the ult, but he should be alright. Just unbind his soul back away. Humanoid looking for the plate here. Just one order will be enough to secure it. Gets the first plate for Fnatic. Mickey hooked. Should be able to dodge away from this one. Should be doing a good job of making sure that Mickey doesn't isn't allowed to get out to his own devices on the map. Good man marking by the Fnatic support. And something we've seen so much of him this weekend is just how well he can impact Caps. his early game. Caps going forward. Oh, he buffers. Right comes back, but he buffers his ult. He manages to escape. Well played there by Caps. We saw him do that a lot on his Tristana. Yeah. <laughs> replicating the same performance. But now this does give a window for Fnatic to move into this bot river. Humanoid does need a base though, he's got no mana. I think this would be a difficult Drake start. There are a couple of pings actually coming down onto the Herald as Yike ticks over to six. Cap Razzle stayed. though looking for a play in mid. Yeah, Cap stayed and Razzle has flash, he could die here. If he finds he the window. The but he shows himself and now Yike will start up that Herald, but he's on vision. Fnatic know what's going on and Razzle it's going to be a bit tough to cross through mid, so he's going to start up the Dragon instead. It'll be a neutral objective trade. 
Mostly G2 favored. First Herald is quite strong in getting the game rolling in your favor. Pings coming out from uh, G2. I think they know they're on this dragon. And uh, no contest. So this game a lot slower than the previous two. Eight minutes in, only a couple of kills, but it's given us time to talk about the two teams facing off against each other. There's no trades in with Han Summer here. Mickey would dash away with the battle dance. And oh, it does have that six. So does Han Summer. I mean, the, uh, back to this wave. Yeah. <laughs> Han Summer and Mickey making it. Jimmy's about to hit six. He's one minion away. Will they go in with a depth charge? Broken Blade trading onto Wonder here. Dragon taken. Yike looking for a fight in the top lane. The Rift Held might just come down. Broken Blade with a good knockback, but he tanks another tower. Wonder. No Iron Spike Whip on him yet, but Double Sword, Ruby Crystal, and a Doran Shield will keep him healthy enough. Yike stops his recall. If they lose this 2v1, the uh, Cassante will just die to the Renekton Dominus, so they're just going to call that payoff. Maybe a few two tower shots there taken by Broken Blade. I think he had an ult angle to pull him back instead of pushing him up against the wall, but he didn't find it. Wonder managed to dash just about in time. Question mark pings on the bot side jungle of G2, maybe considering. If the Maokai is in their jungle, but Razorak's just going to clear out his Grom, get towards that level 7. No team fights just yet. A ward behind Wunder and Caps TP up soon, but I'm not sure if they'll try to action anything on the top side because mid bot is really what matters at the moment. Yeah, remember like three, four minutes ago when I said the Broken Blade was having a better time into Wonder in the top. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder now 26 six CS up. Uh, did manage to take the plate as well, so he's 300 gold. Advantages for Yike and Han Samu in terms of gold as well. Some obviously getting the early assist and Yike getting the kill. But uh, all in all, Fnatic have been able to stop G2 from doing anything with this early game. G2 have done the same, really, for Fnatic. So honors even, cresting over the 10 minute mark. I mean, the best news here for Fnatic is that the game has slowed down a lot. It's given them more of an opportunity to think about what they want to do, how they want to approach the next fight. Something that Odo Omni was talking about on the desk was he felt that Fnatic was getting, they were trying too hard to kind of match G2's aggression in the early game. and. They end up getting punished for it a lot of the times. But now with a slightly steadier game, a small goal deficit is not something they're going to be too concerned about. And they're in a great spot right now. Humanoid, no flash. Yeah, I can go for the rebound. Flash done. Mickey X follow up with the ult as well. But I think Humanoid's just out of range. Yeah, Mickey was spotted on this ward as he came across as well. So Humanoid just playing respectfully there in the mid lane, backing away. Trimby's going to come across. Mickey steals away. His scry is bloom. And Trimby will have to take the long way around to get back to the lane. So Noah is going for that AD Kaiser build, going towards that Kraken Slayer. Smart not to go towards the AP, you've got a Demonic Embrace, First Strike, Red Smite, Maokai and Azir, you've got enough AP, the Nautilus too. It's about juggling really, Humanoids, the vulnerable state of the map right now for Fnatic as he has no flash. A lot of chain CCs readily available for the Rel and the Rakan if they can lock him down there. It's the Herald place just to get some platings onto Caps. Wonder if he'll go for some kind of Evan Trial, the Yone build that we saw Chove doing, but we'll have to see mid bot contest coming in. See Mickey's walking into the bot side jungle of Razor trying to contest this area. Such a bot focused map. Both teams investing heavily in getting vision down. G2 once again coming out the victors, you have to feel. Littered the Fnatic jungle with wards. A couple of wards from Fnatic though, one in the tri bush and one behind the dragon pit will give them a little bit of an awareness. And oh, the sampling. Oh, good hook there. Mickey though pops the quickness. He gets knocked up with the death charge and Mickey kill him instinct in, but he charmed immediately. No, I still able to get the kill. Someone trying to go in and it's buff. Gonna chase him down. But a spell shield just in time from the G2 AD carry. Look a bit though, Yike is hovering. There's an easy dive set up here for G2. If he flashes over the wall and crash down, see what could die. Flashes, misses the stun, but the Magnus Dorm enough. The fate sealed. Humanoid, the Emperor's Divide won't be enough. Yike might fall. One more tower shot would be enough, but it's not in the range. Wonder trying to trade in the top lane is the all out coming out from Broken Blade. He misses. Flashes forward and he misses. And Wonder will happily accept your donation. All three lanes kick off into action. It's Fnatic that win out on both sides. Humanoid falls to the gank, but wonders. Rennington's gonna have about a thousand gold lead after this wave, and that plating's gonna fall. Getting the upper hand up against Broken Blade with these Rennington blind picks. Every game you have to feel like in this laning phase. Humanoid gonna take a bit of damage from Caps as he TPs back to the lane. 3 2 on the kill score. Gold basically dead even. Herald already used. Mid Tower has taken a lot of hits. One minute on the next dragon. I mean, credit to Fnatic. After what was such a one-sided game two, they've maintained composure. Oh, humanoid. humanoid in some serious danger he here. Has flash, he, has flash. he should be able to get away to safety. Trippy there as well to assist. But you see this three-man mid-play that G2 keeps making. It's a common strategy against Humanoid. Try and put that pressure on him, suffocate him. He's got himself a champion that he has a lot more comfort on with the Azir. He can do a lot with it as the game progresses. And 
They're doing what they can to shut him down. There is a significant lead starting to build for the Caps. But for the time being, Fnatic's still in an overall solid position. But but I think resource-wise, yeah, Fnatic is in a great position. They, they have TP advantage top. Dragon's up soon, 20 seconds. They already have the first. That'll put them on the second. They have bot side vision. They have bot push. Humanoid safe and can push out mid. He can lean into Fog of War. They have pressure here, Fnatic. For the first time in the series, it really yep. feels like around this next Dragon, they'll have setup. And G2 will be the ones to have to break that setup. Wonder hitting level 11. Wonder two levels up on both of them. It's been a clinic in the top lane. 40 CS the lead as well. And we'll say in game one, Wonder did get a lane lead and then Broken Blade ended 9, 1, and 8. So it's not all done. But if Wonder can translate that lead in the top lane towards the rest of the map. Top dive onto Wonder. I've seen this a He's thousand the times. He don't wins dive these. Wonder. You don't dive Wonder. Caps is here as well. Wonder can pop the Dominus, can call the meek. He's going to get pulled back with the path maker, but there's the Dominus and the all now. It's going to take him out of tower range. Caps taking it now. The Magnus Storm. You do not dive Wonder. Once again, he survives three men. And now Fnatic really strike on the other side of the map. Mickey trying to dodge away. Fnatic taking everything they can as Wonder continues to show why he is here. Flash down from Hans Summer. Had to use the ultimate as well. Ghost is down to Winner's gonna TP back up to this top side. He wants to fight off Caps, stop him from getting this top wave in. Uses the E. See if Caps wants to go in on this because now he's got the Q3 and the ultimate. Maybe he's gonna look up to Wonder. He doesn't have the flash just yet. Yeah, he still tries to dodge away with the slice and dice. Wonder trading in, but the Conqueror Caps takes out his former teammate. <laughs> Wonder without the Dominus wasn't able to win out on that 1v1. Caps knew the limits of his champion. And G2 find themselves. An important solo kill, now the Herald's gonna be started off. Caps, will he look to reset here? Noah making his way back towards top. BB no TP, so it will be a 4v4 if Noah can get here in time. You can see top waves bleeding into this tower. They're dropping that wave to try and stop this Herald from G2. So now that it's reset, he's gonna go back towards that top side. Caps no TP, they can start to push in top here against Fnatic. They might lose a lot on this bot tier one in terms of tower health, but they have enough setup to try and force this Herald down if they want. It's just on Broken Blade here after he clears out this wave. Is he just gonna run top? He'll get there first if Wonder does go back towards the spot side to look at him on the minimap. Wonder pivoting, maybe considering running towards mid. He's gonna run through the jungle to see what Broken Blade does, but it looks like BB's committing to the tower. So first tower might fall for G2. Fnatic being pushed out of the top side as well. A little bit tentative from Fnatic at times. Now they step in, they push out the top wave. Caps is answering it. Humanoid has control of the mid wave if he wants. And he slice, slides oh, in with the quickness immediately from Mickey. The twisted advance will chase him down, and Mickey's able to dash away. Nature's Grass coming out as Fnatic know they need to find something. Good block on the route by Mickey before he, he sacrifices his life. Yike trying to get into the backside. Caps knocked up with the depth charge as well. No all on him. For four seconds time, Broken Blade's gonna TP in and wonder. Cannot match that. Broken Blade has the all out, but no flash. Fnatic. All hell, the retreat, good Riptide for the slow. Trimby able to flash away, Cap still chasing forward. He's got the bait sealed back, but he can't find the angle. Humanoid still has the ultimate, he continues to hold on to it. Razork now isolated from his team. Yeah, q is gonna come out. There's the stun, there's the knockback, and Razork is sacrificed by Fnatic. Caps, maybe looking for it, ult across the wall, it's gonna dash Ooh. back. Under a little bit of threat from Fnatic there, Wonder's gonna get the first tower of the game on the bounce. He's gonna get bot tier one, 1,000 gold lead over to Fnatic. Not the end of the world. Actually, a fine play for Fnatic. They got the TP out from the Cassante. They got the kill onto Mickey. Overall, no, no yet. it's a one for one. Herald's not taken yet. TP back top from Humanoid. They need to maintain some topside tempo. Noah hasn't reset. That's the biggest pain point for Fnatic. He's sitting on a lot of gold. And he's pushed underneath this tower. G2, maybe going to start this Herald up. Thankfully, Hansama hasn't backed either for Noah. Yeah, so they're both sitting on about 1,000 gold right now. Humanoid green for this top yeah, tower. Mickey's on the way. Yikes here too. Nope. No quickness. Humanoid has the flash, but Yike able to blast Kono over. Caps now joins the fight. Flash forward by Mickey, but a straight dash away by Humanoid. And continues to dodge away from everything. Humanoid put in on a clinic. He's been in two finals, and he hasn't lost one yet. And he hasn't lost yet today. Wonder didn't go towards bot. He's gonna lose bot tower, so they're investing a lot here from Fnatic to get this Herald. Good they up. need to look for kills. Nature's Grass coming out. Mickey's gonna get locked up by this. He blocks it for Caps, but Trimby's on the chase. Mickey able to dash away, but the Twisted Advance were following home. And now Fnatic begin to open up the hook just short. Mickey, 100 HP, smashed into the dirt by Razor. I mean, Fnatic are really taking advantage of that last fight. Because the fact that G2 Whoa. were delayed in actually starting that objective, the fact that Wanda didn't have his TP available, they traded one for one. Noah now looking Noah, for a dive. he's just diving. He's just diving on some of the killer instinct. Noah, you absolute beauty, magnificent here in Montpellier by Noah. Now, 
Live Trading with Wonder Noah's on his way across. 200 HP and a dream for the Fnatic ADC. And that dream is coming to life. Noah is back. He's been very quiet this series. He was suppressed against Mad Lions in game three and four. But now solo killing hands, Biggie face checking. Losers, predators, and the son of He's gonna die, Wonder. Wonder. Wonder takes him out. Now, Fnatic are in control. The momentum has shifted in their favor. They are 2,000 gold ahead, and they have a ripped out. You can see the confidence really starting to come through for Fnatic, moving into G2's jungle, looking for these picks. They're not hesitating when going for these skirmishes, and Noah finally finding his footing, getting a solo kill onto Han Sama is going to do so much for the individual's confidence. And it was Caps that TP'd away from mid to get that bot tier two alongside Broken Blade. They got it, but was it worth it? They lost Mickey, they lost Yike, they lost Han Sama, they lost the Herald. And now the dragon has been started. The dragon. Setup isn't ideal from Fnatic. G2 are in the river. Hunts is a bit far. BB's Trim, walking no up. Ultimate. No one, no ultimate. Humanoid has his. So does Razzle. One is eight seconds away. It's Broken Blade looks to trade. The quickness coming out. Trimby doesn't have a flash. Watch doesn't caps, really have a hope to get away. As Cavs gets onto Noah on the back line. Noah flashing away. But no killer in from Noah means that he can't do enough. Cavs trading on Razzle now. Emperor's divide out by Humanoid at the top of the fight. As Broken Blade dashes in. Cavs still in the pit. It's secured by Yike. Wonder dashing. Trying to get Yike with a knock up. The grand entrance. Yike. Cavs. Dashing back into Fate Sealed, Wonder Solo J2 playing with everything they can, and now Hans Summer has free reign to open up. Humanoid trading with Broken Blade Caps, gonna be able to kill off Razzle, you have the feel. Humanoid, you only want to get away as G2 take the drink. G2 actually win that fight out with all of the momentum swinging back in the favor of Fnatic. Will the blades be enough? No, they can't quite connect onto Humanoid. He will be able to escape with his life. The gold is practically dead even, but G2, st stave off the soul for now. Caps, you are a man possessed. I think he basically destroyed this fight because G2 are fighting up towards the top side against Wunder and Trimby, but let's look at what he does. He's over. Solo kills Noah. He doesn't have the killer instinct up just yet. Gets the kill. He's back. Now watch this. Razor goes on top of him. He has lethal tempo. Fights against him. And now you'll see the rest of Fnatic turn towards the pit as they try and get BB down. They realize Caps is a target, but Caps, look how he uses his spells. He's gonna flash over the wall, or dash rather, and then E back over. Get some damage down. Ult on to Wunder. Try and get that kill. Dash back away again. It's just a clinic. Hans tries to clean up. Razork misses the Q flash. He dashes over the wall, preemptively expecting him to possibly hit. And then he cleans up Razork. Wonder saw a window where he could get so many kills, and there were just so many annoying things that kept getting in his way. The Mickey knockup, the mobility from Caps, the stun from Yike. Wonder was so close to just cleaning up that fight for Fnatic, but it was Caps that wins it out for G2. What a masterclass. Hans was free hitting, like I said, Yike with really good setup. Mickey was just trying to peel, and BB was being the frontliner. But it's an infinity edge on the Yone. Crit Cloak coming through as well. It's not going to be any kind of Evan Shroud build. Just going to go straight for damage. Level 14 now on this Yone. Radiant Virtue complete for Razor. Cumuloid building up towards that Void Staff now too. So items coming through for Fnatic, but this game's back in Jesus' favor. This, oh, Caps. Caps on again. Great. Wonder, Pump the Dominus should be able to survive this. Caps should get pulled back, but Wonder oh. is the leader. No going in for Caps, and that's the shutdown. 800 gold over to the Fnatic AD carry. Caps is the strongest point of G2. Is that a barren start for Fnatic, it perhaps? They have the Herald. They can use it into mid to push in and get the tower. They can then rotate towards the Herald if they want, uh, the, the Nash, sorry, if they want. There's TP on Caps up in 30 seconds, but they have a Zier Kaisa. Are they going to go for it? Noah. No. Looks like oh, they're back not away. The risk. Not taking the risk. I agree with you, Kedra. I think that was a massive window that they could have exploited. You look at the bottom of your screen. All of the cold advantage is sitting on G2, on, on that mid laner. Right now, there was a window where Fnatic could have looked to force something, and instead they chose to just take Wait, the tower for now. Would you ever just play straight they onto could the look for the this. rush. No one has could. not reset. And they have good vision, but it's tricky. Looks Fnatic like Yike is just going to finish his recall, so... Yeah, Fnatic didn't sink their recalls. They, they made sure numbers were committed and stayed around just in case. So, oh. smart by them. But uh, you can see the side lane is falling apart a bit for Fnatic. We talked about it in draft. If the Yone can get ahead on side, that's going to be a big pain point for Fnatic. And that's the second time he's gone and killed Wunder. Yeah, so because Wunder should be the only guy that can deal with him, right? That Renekton, two items. You think there are very few champions that can deal with him. But Caps demonstrating at this point in the game, he has reached that point. His scaling is fully online. He's already working towards his third item. Level 15 now, a full level over both Humanoid and Wonder. He is a problem, 
that Fnatic will have to find some solution for. And a solution maybe Noah. He has been so consistent in this game, has struggled sometimes this weekend. Have to remember his first final hit in Europe as well. Came into the team a relatively fresh face from Zero Tenacity, and now Humano is dashing forward. Tough spot for Fnatic. Yone wins on side. Let's try and force Baron. They didn't start it up. Humanoid did, but they didn't actually commit Fnatic. So now there's a threat. A bot tier three creeps bleeding out. Now Fnatic have to run back towards their towers, and G2 can clear vision. I mean, when G2 played against Mad, they found themselves in a similar situation when Broken Blade on the Yone top. And rather than getting forced into fights against Mad, which is exactly what Mad wanted, they just kept splitting the map. Oh, Mickey. Mickey. Scramble smash. They don't want to go any further. They don't have vision. But G2 are just doing exactly what they did. They're slowing the map down and they're just trying to play on sides. They're forcing Fnatic to make difficult choices. And the moment that Fnatic make that slip up is when G2 is looking to strike. I think they're waiting for Kai'Sa third item. Kai'Sa flash to come back up, waiting for this dragon in 20 seconds, seeing if they can find a pick on the caps. The W's gonna land, but Noah does not want to jump on top of that. Yone almost level 16 is caps and you're completely right, Billy. They're playing on, on sides. They're playing on bot side. They're playing on Caps' push. They're using it like a seesaw. As he pushes in, they retake vision. When he gets pushed back, they decide to run away a little bit. But you can see they're playing on two lanes, mid and bots. G2 really want to set up around this dragon. And Fedanek face checking into this. It's going to be a bit of a, a tough one. There's TP wards behind them as well, just littered, ready for Caps to just jump in on a flank. Good but it's uh, be starting up the Drake here, is Caps. Yeah, Someone's got it down. It solo. Fnatic pushing forward. Raz does have that nature's grasp. Wonder's going to step forward, but they don't have vision in the pit. The dragon's secured. Trippy off towards the top side is just being isolated by Caps, but he's doing a great job of keeping Caps from getting in the fight. The Ember's divide as well, but Caps already taking out one broken play low. Meanwhile, Hunt Summer solo as Noah starts to open up. The shutdown. Fnatic, I finally find the bounty we're looking Noah. for. And maybe they can reward no, it. Killer Instinct in the exhaust. Not enough to stop Noah. Baron is on the cards. Azir Kaisa alive. The bot lane is down. TP coming in from Broken Blade. Caps is recalling. He has the ultimate. Caps will TP back in as well. Does he have the Bloodthirster? What item oh, does yeah. Caps buy here? One it's breath before the, the drop. One, One moment stopwatch. that could define the series. Can Fnatic secure this yeah. diamond? Yikes, spotted Hex Flash. flash. You missed it, you get the Hexflash. Hexflash, Caps goes into the pit. The bait seal, but he can just dash back. He's trying to get up Humanoid the heal. Not enough, Caps. Humanoid down low. Razor going in and the shutdown. Broken Blade joins the fight, but now Yank and Broken Blade are on the wrong. Damn side. back. Rip. And Fnatic will have their prize. Baron down. Caps down. That's two raid bosses gone. And now Fnatic can reset, plan the map, use this lead, and look for a win. The Fnatic magic is not gone just yet. Look at this fight, and keep your eyes on Caps once again. We talked about how he is this raid boss. He goes over the wall, Trippy just keeps him chained CC'd, and then Noah comes online, forces Broken Blade out of the fight, finds Han Summer isolated, and this wall from the Humanoid prevents Caps from getting involved anymore in the fight. An impressive team coordination effort prevents G2 from getting the fight that they want, and oh. they secure the Baron. Next flash into the wall, Caps tries his best, but he already this is the ult, he lands it onto Wonder, flashes onto Humanoid, try and get that kill, he lives on 1 HP, oh. the W follows him through, Trimby's coming back from base after having died, BB tries his best, but G2 are cornered, only three members, not enough resources to help them out, and now Fnatic are running away with this one, Noah 7 and 1 on the Kai'Sa right now, really showing up in this game for Fnatic. And you see Yike heading his hands after missing that hex flash across the wall, but now Fnatic advancing, battle lines drawn as they push in towards this bottom lane, it looks like it's just going to be multiple tier twos for them off this Baron. 90 seconds remain on it. They have a wave pushing in mid. You can see the pings mid top. They've already taken that tier two in the bottom lane, and that gold lead will extend already at 5k. Yeah, looking at mid tier two, but top wave is really good right now. Yeah, Humanoid, why is Humanoid here? Humanoid just gets blanked. It doesn't have a flash, doesn't have an open hell of surviving that as G2 find a pick. How did Mickey get how there as well? How did Mickey get there? Mickey was sitting in a bot brush for how long? I'm looking back, maybe a minute, two minutes, just sitting in that bush, waiting for someone to walk up, waiting for a window. But they'll Fnatic still get yeah. a it's... tower, they'll still get mid, they'll still get bot and top tier two, but that's a big pick. It's a huge pick, but I think the important thing to note is Fnatic still got what they wanted out yep. of the Baron. They still took bot tier two, they still took mid tier two, they still took top tier two, and they got a five. 5,000 gold Baron power play. They definitely did, and, and they did exceptionally well in terms of the map state and setting up the waves, but I just want to see how Mickey got there. Like, oh, the yeah, I, I, I want to see that in a replay I mean, somewhere. I mean, like, what? what Mickey has done is bought time for G2, right? 
Well, Fnatic were able to get those two tier two towers, at the very least, they're not threatening onto those inhibitors. Mickey constantly finding creative ways. So the push in mid gave him a window to oh, move into the dry really brush. Smart, and what is he? Oh, he, he goes, goes into the bot lane. He knows they're going to push them. That's He's going to sit here for a minute. Man. They still need to take bot tower. They still need to run mid. He is just waiting. And he waits for the wave to pass. Wave. Doesn't get spotted yeah. on vision. Wow. Spotted and then he navigates his way through. Catches Humanoid off guard. I mean, you can't blame Humanoid for that, who was not nah, expecting that. At first, I was like, why is he there? But then I realized, OK, well, now I can kind of get it. They thought they had the information. But now Fnatic back out onto the map. And well in control of this game. Well, the Baron has worn off. Dragon will be spawning in about a minute's time, and they're going to keep this pressure up. Yone continues to be on a side lane. And look, Mickey hovering around him, which means that if anyone tries to answer, G2 could find a potential pick. They can Maokai ult the tower if they want to force them back. You can use spells to yeah. force off towers. Or an old GP ult there, Maokai ult. But yeah, Hans Summer can block this with the spell too. If he gets rooted and then pulls the shell, they're diving, they're diving. immediately. They all dive onto Hans Summer. What a mistake that was by the G2 AD Kami. Fnatic fight two off their broken blade, left wounded. No one doing back to base. The flash away from Noah is the quickest of Mickey but now, Fnatic are marching towards the inevitable. It's Fnatic G2, and there's no way in hell it was going to end in a quick 3-0 today. Fnatic strike back, and they will take every life they can from G2 before they take the Nexus. Fnatic put a stamp in game three. I think the draft was much better. The adaptation, red side works for them very nicely. They didn't get countered by anything the G2 wanted to throw at them on the blind picks. And so their draft just had so much more cohesion and actually was able to go toe to toe up against G2. I think Wonder played fantastically and tried to micromanage as much as he could on the top side with very little resources. But it's Noah who gets those resources, finds those picks on the caps and plays those teams fights well to shut down Hans Summer. I think some of the crucial things were Mickey on the Rakan, you question it in the draft. He didn't have the same playmaking ability that we've seen from him so far in this series. Yike didn't have the same presence that he could typically in the early game. Broken Blade was limited in terms of his impact because of how well Wonder was playing overall. And Caps, that bastion of hope that kind of shone very brightly in the mid game, yep. was very quickly shut down by a a well-played team effort from Fnatic. Trimby with the chain CC, Humanoid with some great plays from the ultimates, and Noah coming up clutch. Noah ending 9-1-5 in that game, so often he was the one finding that extra pick, finding that extra kill. We're gonna hand it over to the Anastet to break down that game, but we have a series on our hands, Montpellier! We sure do, and it isn't really true until you utter those words, uh, Medic. So great on you and fantastic on Fnatic. They still have something left in the tank, and uh, it was a fantastic fight back. And, uh, you know, we said that they went to red, and it was the first time, actually, that a team elected to move to the red side in all of the season finals. That must make that they made it pay dividends. What were the most correct choices that they made in order to facilitate this victory. So I think it was less about specific, like individual choices in the draft and just going for stability over uh, uh, volatility. I think in the early game, right? They, they decided to go for the Azir in mid lane, lots of scaling. They take away the Kai'Sa and ban the Kog'Ma as well so that there's no real good AP options in the bot lane for Hansama. Uh, and I honestly, I just love this when they didn't have to go crazy in the early game. Yeah, I think the big one for me that stood out was just, hey, look, we've actually got mid-priority for once in this series. We can take control here. We can operate around Razork. We can actually play through what has been the strength of Fnatic. And from that, when you've got that mid-jungle working together, it becomes significantly easier. You can see how much of a better time Noah was having on, down in that bot lane as well, because he wasn't having caps and everyone down in that bot side as well. It felt like not only was it, as Zender was pointing out, some of the draft picks and going back towards that comfort, but also the fact that comfort gave you the control you needed. Yeah, and from that Red side being able to make the decisions that they wanted the way they wanted Goldberg. And I think you're going to run us through the 18 minute sequence. Absolutely. It was a very slow tempered game in the beginning, and it took some time before we really got into it. But 4 4 by 17 minute mark coming into it. As we queue out the play, you can actually see down on the bottom side. BB doesn't have teleport. He's pushing bot. What G2 is trying to do on the minimap right now is collapse on Humanoid, see if they can catch him off to get an advantage 4 versus 4 around the Rift Herald. It does not happen. So if we pause right here, you can see they're actually starting it up, and it's a bit of a mistake. Because right now for BP, 
he still wants to push this turret. He thinks he can just get a turret. They'll probably have to forfeit the Rift Herald because they're already moving all five members of Fatigue up towards the top side, which means we're having a five versus four on the top side. So as you queue out the play, all G2 has to do here is just abandon, abandon, abandon but it just don't happen in this scenario. And they even extend the play after this to the point where after they've killed them in the top side, they're gonna continue in the enemy jungle and it turns into a very big mistake. This is the first one where they could say, let's cut our losses, it's gonna be fine. But after they continue to walk in and walk in, try to contest the Rift Herald, even after TPing in with caps on the bot side and it just ends up being a disaster. And also, you gotta keep your eyes on mid lane. Look at Noah just going Super Saiyan, solo killing Han Sama underneath the enemy tower. Like, yeah, you can talk about macro decision making all you want. That was Noah just literally losing his freaking mind. But let's talk about it again, because now Caps is still pushing on that bot side, right? Yike goes down. So you think to yourself, there's no way they will walk into this top side anymore. But Mickey still ends up doing it afterwards, and he falls too. It was just one, two, three, four kids just going over to the side of Fnatic for, for no reason at all whatsoever. For no reason at all, but as always, you know, you, you give them that, um, that possibility Absolutely. and they execute on it. Noah had a great game. I feel like it's been a lot of, even though we say for Fnatic it's all around humanoid, a lot of the games in the season finals, and I think specifically back to yesterday as well, have been when Noah has had a lights out performance. Um, I guess the issue has been that it hasn't been able to be repl replicated. It's it's either it's either all or nothing, but on the other hand, same for the other bot lane. Yeah, I think just from draft, he was set up beautifully here, right? As we were kind of alluding to already, the fact that you're trying to go for some sort of AP option gets taken away by the Kai'Sa. There's not an awful lot of picks that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe at the moment, but also the fact you get comfort for Trimby, right? This is his ninth game, I want to say, across the point of season finals has been his most successful pick as yeah. well. He looks like he's having a great time. And when you're able to play around that and you're into a good matchup into the Rakan as well, you're just setting your bot lane up for success. And I think being able to play through that has really given Fnatic life coming into this game. I think it's so perfect for Noah because Kaiser was the champion in summer that he just couldn't play. When they came into the groups and playoff patch, they weren't comfortable at all whatsoever on it. But now it's one of the champions where it feels like they're finding stability on it. Not only that, I think Fnatic really slowing the pace down made it so much easier for them to play the game because they cannot match them in the early game. They need to find them on an even footing in the mid game. And they did that, and I think a lot off the back of Wonder. He had a solo kill versus Broken Blade this yeah, game, by had, the way. He had the solo kill, and not just that. Like Obviously, he gets the sweet outplay versus Broken Blade, who's absolutely had the upper hand throughout this series. But he also is killing in terms of CS. The guy had a 900 gold lead at 14 almost. It was a 37 CS. That is just absolutely ridiculous. Not to mention sidestepping that flash uh, from Broken Blade. Broken Blade really thought he could outplay in that moment, but it just went It's a 50-50 on control. the flash. Wonder, he just outplays it. He has a good mind game and it works out for him. To be fair to Wonder, he's had good early games versus Broken Blade this series, not just in this game. Game. It's just that it didn't always pan out. But that's the thing for me. Actually, Wonder's been the best performing Fnatic player oh. in this series for game one and game two. Game three, he managed to kind of pop that lead ahead. But I think the big one was just how well then Fnatic were able to take that lead and play around it, right? We saw when we were going for, hey, Caps and BB want to try and split push on bot side. But we're going to take our advantage, play around Wonder, look for these three, four man groups that we can quickly collapse onto that top side and then find those picks that we need to snowball this game. And kind of having that and leveraging that worked out so well for Fnatic here. It's important not to forget, though, that this was not a landslide victory for Fnatic. It's not a perfect victory. Like, as you can see, it was very close with G2 having an edge at Makes moment. it more impressive, no? It does, it does. But I think this was sort of, game two, we write that off, that was an absolute slaughter. <laughs> but game one could have followed a similar trend to this game, had some of those fights gone Fnatic ways, had some of the solo kills gone Fnatic ways. The way these teams are playing, there is always that little edge but it requires multiple things falling in the right places for Fnatic or it will all come apart. And G2 do not give that many openings. They don't. Uh, G2 have selected blue side. That means Fnatic will stay on the red side, which they elected before. So let's see if it still pans out. I wanted to do a little bingo update whilst we incorporate it into the post-game segment because I've got um, Trimby reaction cam mm. and he was, <laughs> he was sad before. And he's happy in this game, so that works. I have a lot of caster calls and I can't hear them because I'm listening to the... You and I are both two off of a bingo <laughs> right now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I gotta get cam tech. So the problem is, I have trophy gets dropped, which I won't <laughs> find out until after. So I have human guys in the side lane. That's a definitely yes. I have uh, team picks yeah. Ivern and uh -huh. Mickey plays Nautilus. Outside of that, uh, I don't know. Ivern's <laughs> been perma banned. That probably doesn't have him. Yeah. Trimpy just got the Nautilus. I need Mickey on it now. Yeah. I've been playing. I take my job very seriously. So. Yeah. Right.
<clears throat> Where's your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> He's given the shirt off his back for this job. Come on. First they didn't want a shirt. Now they do want a shirt. Like, come oh on. Oh, my God. What is it with you? But anyway, uh, back to this game, which could be this game four, which could be the last one, or it couldn't be. And this, I mean, the script this weekend. The script so far for Fnatic has been, we get it to that game five. We've not seen, are you okay? We've no. not seen it not happening so far, so. It's not only just Fnatic, I mean, it was EMEA Masters as well. The entire day has been, hey, you go to a whoop and then you start to have that comeback happening. So game three gone the way, game four, do we have the same here? Okay, but what also happened in the EMEA Masters and the uh, semi-final yesterday, it was almost a reverse sweep and then they lost game hey, five. Hey, it's so, still a game five. I mean, so, I won five. Yeah. So do I. Fnatic, they bounce back. Hopefully they can bring us to Silver Scrapes. We'll be right back after this. I'm killing on the twos. Guys, we're killing front line. We're killing front line. Cancel that, cancel that. Okay, okay. Nice, nice, nice. Guys, we win this. Sorry. Go! Nice, nice. Look at us. Look on, look on, look on. I double look him. Nice. Look, hey, look, 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 look. Look at me. Yeah, we, you're coming. Yeah, we're coming. 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 We're Game was insane. <sighs> Even the biggest champ needs a break. Let me in. Hey, let me in. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> Everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> ah, gas. Dios mío de mi vida. I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before.
Welcome back to the LEC Grand Final, where Fnatic G2 are battling it out to see who gets crowned the season champion. Fnatic struck back with a decisive win in Game 3. A little bit of flexibility from G2 in the draft, but Caps on the Yone almost was able to win it for them. Couldn't quite close it out. Mark has a wry smile on his face. It's what have you done? Type I mean, thing. It's uh, just one we got. We're not going to get can't say what he's done. I can't say it, but he's right in stuff. Wonder's taunting G2 a lot. Wonder's taunting. And I mean, he, he's got... He has the confidence to back it up. Yeah, you know, the do. man has been playing incredibly well. This is his natural environment, playing in front of a crowd, playing for the people. Yeah, he's played a lot of Renekton, but his Renekton's pretty damn good. And we'll see if Fnatic can, can keep can keep that momentum going or if G2 can shut it down right here, right now. We all want the five games. We've had five games so far the entirety of this weekend. We want to see more of G2 and Fnatic going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'm excited to what these players can show us. The adaptations in the draft, we had question marks around... I mean, I do still have some question marks around the Yone response. While yep. he definitely had a fantastic performance on it, we could see how difficult it still was to play into things like Nautilus and Maokai. On top of that, giving the Nautilus over towards Trimby, his impact in the fights, he was doing such a good job of just locking a single target down and preventing them from doing anything. Those are the three things. One, G2 gave Fnatic red side again. They've chosen blue. Two, is Maokai better than Rel right now? Is this just this, this Maokai is creating so much space? And three, you just talked about it. We talked about it in draft in the, in the previous game. Blind picking support there for G2. It, it, it really had to be something like the, the Nautilus. Uh, going for that Rakan into that lane was a bit tough. We'll see if uh, G2 put more resources into that bot side. See if they try and get a stronger bot matchup. Because I feel like that's where they really start to thrive. Tiny change here from G2. Previously, they banned the Talia first. Here, they banned the Tristano and the Poppy first. We'll see if that Talia still does get banned away. Callista, Ivan, and uh, LeBlanc have been Fnatic's three bans on the red side for both of their games. So, with the Callista already removed, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a similar trajectory. Yeah, I think Fnatic should be happy with the draft they had last time, but be ready for oh. changes. They thought Maokai stronger than Rel. Fnatic, there's the change. Take it away. That's smart. That might catch G2 off guard because their plan was probably run back similar bands, remove Trisana instead of Talia, and then just go for Maokai. Yeah, I mean, it was Ivan and LeBlanc that were taken off the board by Fnatic last time around. This does mean that one of those will be up. You talked about it catching G2 off guard. They're already hesitating here in the draft. Do they want to stick with that Talia ban or do they want to change things up? Because you have that trinity of jungle. The Renekton. Wonder will not have his Renekton. He yep. tanks two bands Poppy, Renekton. As much as Razor yep. can play Poppy, that's a blind, that's a counter pick Poppy for Wonder gone. So two bands on Wonder. I think you'll play something like Orn. There's a big. Yeah. He's looking at G2 right now. He's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> he's feeling good Wonder, about himself. Always the king of banter. Has always ever since his uh, his days back on G2. Rel has to be the first. Always pick. there. But Mark Rel, down. then yeah. Ivan from Fnatic likely. The they Ivan could do go Talia. They could go Ivan Azir, or they yeah. could go Talia Jace or something. I think Fnatic have two options here. I think Is the it... priority on the Azir to make sure Hugo yeah. has something that he can have more comfort on, a little yeah. bit more impact on. The only thing is, if you pick the Azir here, you lose the flexibility of the Talia, right? Because if you went Talia oh, plus should, top... They should go Ivory if they're going Azir, though, I yeah. think. I think they should drop the Talia or go Talia Jace. Yeah. I think they have two options, scaling or hybrid damage on jungle and play for a carry jungler. Yeah, it's going to be the Ivory. I think Ivory and Azir is the best. And then uh, picking up some sort of top laner on three so Wonder doesn't get pinched too much. I'd be very surprised if they drop the Azir and give it over to G2. Yeah. I would be surprised as well, because we've come to realize that teams don't have a huge number of ants. It's not to say that Caps play particularly badly into Human. Oh, wait, oh. it's Ivor and Talia. That's okay. really surprising. That is a, it's quite a weak mid jungle, especially early on. They've opened themselves up to a bit of a vulnerability where G2 could go for, you know, they can go Cogmore Brown here, or they can try and counter pick this mid jungle a little bit. Um, where would you look if you were trying to counter it? It's tough. I think they've got the Rel already, and Rel does really well into Ivern, so they should keep that. I think Jace, maybe it could be an option. Play Ivern, J uh, Rel, Jace, sorry. Uh, mid lane picks. Not sure what else they can really go for. To yeah, I mean, they they could just play Azir. Like, like, it's it's fairly Azir, safe. Yeah, yeah it's uh, just, just the, the thing I mean by this is Ivern and Talia damage is really low early. Yeah. Talia yes. level 9 is when she's really going to ramp up. Her roaming is good, her push can be strong, but there's a lot of early game on the bot side. <laughs> the crowd erupts. Han Summers, Draven. Fnatic should be I, ready. Was the last time we saw this at MSI, or did we get to see this I during will. summer? Because I remember, I, I think it was against Gen G where they actually let him have it, and then they shut him down. He played it against XL as he well. He did play it against XL, yeah, yeah. Twice against Gen G. You, in Europe, though, he hasn't lost a game on Draven uh, since. Uh, let me get there. It's going to be a while. Uh, LEC Summer, LEC Summer, Summer Playoffs 2020. 
three years ago. Yeah, <laughs> he was in NA for a little time during that's that, fair, that's that spell. Fair. We don't so. count, count the NA losses. Yeah. So Zaya to match, which I think was probably Fnatic's best bet. They have dropped top though with the Cassante blind. So maybe G2 gonna try and drop some bands there. We'll see. I think Malphite right now is screaming to me a bit, but you have double AP mid jungle. I'm not super sold on this Talia Ivor, but we'll see how it pans out. They need frontline here, and <laughs> I think they need AD frontline. So maybe something like Scion could be good. Could be. You can see Fnatic start to pinch some AP junglers of their own, remove the fiddle six. It means that Jace, you know, is a little bit harder to play when you don't have a, 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 an AP jungler there to back it up. Yeah, it's uh, this topic for is, Fnatic to suck. Is there any world that it's Talia support? I was debating that, but I didn't want to raise it because yeah. Razzle's so good on the Talia, yeah, no, right? I mean, I agree with you. I mean, we did see a strong performance from Humanoid uh -huh. as well yesterday. Let me raise you. Wonder Ivor and top Talia jungle <laughs> Jace on four. You know your model we backstage just need a Yumi kept top on the other that. side. He kept saying, you know, we used to scrim it a lot. You know, we used to play Ivor and top all the time. Um, but it, it does seem unlikely. Still, we'll wait. A lot of flexibility still here for both teams. AP junglers are being banned away from Fnatic. Expectation is, for them at least, that Mickey will be locking in this route. Let's yeah. see if they're going to confirm that. And the Azir going to be taken off the board. So what direction will Caps go in the mid lane? Good question. Very Is there any chance question. he could do the Cassante? Throw a bit of a faker out there, a Chovy? Yeah, he, they did do that. Yeah, Cassante into Talia. It worked really well. That's a good point, buddy. Yes, they could go Cassante mid. They could also go for something like the Nico. Uh, they could also go for something like the Syndra, I think, which would be a pretty good pick as well. So we'll see. But I think Fnatic should pick top here. Nar, yes, safe yeah. top laner. Sion, Sion. is the Sion. only option at the tank, but it's just the tank into this Cassante sucks. They literally just showed all the options. They did, do, they did the Sion Talia yesterday against Mad Lions. Worked really well for the synergy Ooh. between. So they just want the I think Nautilus this makes now. Sense, actually. Yeah. The thing is, Brown Alistar are down. Nautilus here is the best. Uh, are they going to play Draven Melio though, or are they going to play Draven Rail? What do you think? I mean, they could go Draven Rail. They could also still play the Rakan. I think it's, it's not the best Rale. into the Nautilus, but I personally think it's straight. Oh, Draven Leona is a deadly bottom lane. I would be a big fan of this. Karma is boring, but it still works well. <laughs> we love the hovers, don't we? Yeah, we always get baited by the hovers, especially from G2. I would put the Rail in uh, jungle. They should go for some, yeah. some engaged support. Okay. Or Emilio. Uh, and Leona. Leona. A, a big kill lane. Yeah, there's the Syndra and there's too. the Syndra. You called it, Cadre. Cool. What's this topic? What is this topic? I think it's a last pick Scion, you know, or an <laughs> R. I, he needs some. Orn is fine, but then your 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 damage share is terrible. Like, it, well, I wonder if he needs to cook something here. Is he going to bust out a Fiora or a Jax, maybe? I really doubt it, but. You know, I think it's Scion, oh, it's, it's not the best, but they haven't practiced anything else. They're kind of pinched when it comes to comfort and trialing out picks. They need frontline, needs to be AD. Oh, they're going to pivot to Orn. It's better overall, but the damage share just isn't great for Fnatic if this Sire falls behind. I mean, it puts, yeah, exactly. It puts a lot of responsibility on Noah. Game three, he definitely clutched up. You could see the confidence from him shining through, finding some really big plays. Getting that kill on Dahan Summer in the mid lane was instrumental for Fnatic's success. But as you rightly said, a lot of responsibility going to fall on this bot lane. We need to see Fnatic enabling it. And with G2 drafting Draven Leona, yeah. they're saying, if you want to come bot, then we are ready to fight. They are definitely ready to fight. And you need to get the Zaya ahead. Like I said, Draven Leona, it's a tough task there. 3v3 bot side early is horrific, I think. <laughs> you know, Ivor Nautilus is great post six, but pre six against Leona Rel with a Draven. I don't think they have the damage. It's just, I think... It's your favoring G2's comp? Oh yeah, 100%. I think they have winning lanes. They have winning lanes, and I think what we've seen from last game, especially when Fnatic had winning lanes, they could sustain the early game. For sure. When they have three losing lanes, everything starts to collapse around them. So Razorg's path is crucial in covering bot. Mid push will be really important if they want to help out bot side. Top will be farming, but it's naturally in favor of Broken Blade. I very much agree. But it's up to the young player in Noah to step up today. Hans Summer, the veteran, looking to win on a big stage. We're jumping into game four. today for the 14th time this weekend here in <laughs> Montpellier. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like it's just a basic line of scrimmage between the two teams. Obviously, game three, Trimby overstepped early on, got killed. Here, not too surprising that with the momentum 
Maybe shifting a little bit back into Fnatic's favor with game three. We wanted to... Uh, G2 wanted to play a little bit safer in the early game, make sure they're not overstepping. And, uh, and I moment, know yeah. that the arena is ecstatic. Yeah, they are. The, it's uh, a roar, it's a buzz. The fact that we're getting four games, the G2 fans, even if they wanted you to, to win, you, know, you always want more games. You want to see that back and forth. And uh, we'll see. And the Fnatic fans will be happy that they managed yeah, to put a win yes, on the board. Yeah, that know? they will be. Oh, of course, so they're showcasing the magic, but they're doing it against Hans Summers Draven. And he has a CS lead now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, um, let's see what they do with this already. Looking to get a bit of early information. Yeah, no. Humanoid, though, posturing to yeah, move I mean, down very quickly. Jimmy could flash root. He's flashing. Does exactly that. He roots. Mickey first. Hans Summer able to get away. There's the hook. Back onto Mickey. The exhaust going down as well. And Mickey should probably save his flash, but he burns it into the bush. The chase continues. Mickey, can you get behind the wave in time to Jimmy out the hook? Tempo. Noah flashes forward. He just needs a couple more. Knows one more will be enough. And Fnatic gets first blood. G2 is boss lane. They're really strong level one. They decide to walk up and see where Razork is, but too far. Trimby, I think he wants to go on hands, but he accidentally went on Mickey, so they got the kill there anyway. Doesn't matter. A kill's a kill. The biggest thing was Humanoid being prepared to move. The fact that he was just hovering around that bush, ready to collapse in the event of this early invade. Trimby and Noah spotting it out and reacting with that early flash. Great stuff from Fnatic level one. Really was. Humanoid really helping out the bot lane there. They would have lost 2v2 otherwise. The most important thing is we talked about the draft. It's the Noah show. Noah has to get ahead. Not only does he have a kill, but the Draven Leona both lost flash. Yep. That suppresses their early game quite heavily when it comes to these aggressive trades. And they won't have that much vision in the bottom lane either because Mickey went for that sweeper first. So they don't have the double warding totem, which means that Yike will have to invest some time, maybe put down a control ward to give them a little bit of protection. As Wonder and Broken Blade trade in the top lane, Wonder will be able to catch this wave as it pushes in. I really like what Razork's doing here because there's a bot wave stacking and maybe G2 want to look for a dive. Look, he Yike reads it. Well. Yike's there! Oh, he's Yike. under the tower and Razork immediately meets him! The knockback! Who are they going to trade on to? Razork puts a push down, Noah's low! Trippy going in, Mickey diving forward as well with the Zenith lane and Mickey will take that one! Yike able to survive him! Oh. the play Fnatic, they read the play and they did it so well, but their 3v3 is just so much stronger. The Zaya doesn't have the pullback, Trimby has no sums and neither does Noah, and now this whole wave's gone. Both junglers doing the right thing, both junglers seeing that opportunity, but it is G2 that come out on top. Han Sama finds himself a kill. The cash out wasn't massive, but it didn't matter. So much is being lost, and again, we look at this, the flash over the wall from Yike. He runs into Razor. The Q isn't there. I don't know if Razor was prepared for it. He gets stunned up by Yike, but the damage is just too much. The ignite as well from Mickey to secure the kill. Yike gets away with his life. And Kedro, you called it in the draft. The 3v3 from G2 is something you have to respect. And it feels like that even though Fnatic did all the right things, it just wasn't enough. It really wasn't. If they were level three, it could have looked a little bit different on the bot lane. As Caps gets caught on a recall, maybe Humanoid looks for the pullback here on the, the Caps. Shove. Caps with the fancy feet does burn the flash. Not sure if he would have been clipped by the edge of that knockback, but he decides against taking the risk as Razzok now comes across, takes the second scuttle crab of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good opportunity here to delay Caps' recall. Humanoid is going to continue to put pressure. This also gives them a window to move into the enemy jungle. Razzok knows he has the potential assist from his top and mid laner. Humanoid yet Dodged to move, though. Well there, Razzok. Look at Broken Blade. Maybe he's just going to skip past here and sprint down towards the bot side. And hey, Yike just loses. He has no flash from him. Razzle burnt his as well. Razzle looking for the smite. It comes down with a reset on the blue. Yike unable to secure it. Razzle didn't burn kill his smite. Razzle is a friend of the forest. And this is his domain. The Ivern just solo killed the enemy jungler at level four. How does that happen? Razzle just constantly resetting the buff. Humanoids moving as well. Fnatic are everywhere on the map this early game. The Pathfinder coming out the side. The flashed by Broken Blade. Blue buffs Daisy, right? So, you know, was helping him out in that fight, just hitting Yike. <laughs> tried to get the mark, but constantly interrupted. Ivern just solo killed. Yeah, Ow. he used the brushes so well as well. The additional damage he was getting, the shields. He played it so well, so patiently. And the crucial thing, like, 
by interrupting Caps' back. He was forced to sit underneath this tower. He never had a chance to recall, which means he could never move. Humanoid kept him mid. Wonder kept Broken Blade top, so they could just keep the 1v1. You look at the minimap right now. It's so hard for the rest of the team to assist until Razzle just continues the harassment. I didn't know Ivan had Daisy at level four. Like, what the <laughs> hell's going on here? The 2v1 is not fair for Yike. Just the area with the bushes just constantly hitting. He tries to mark it here, Razork. And look Yike. at the smite. Look at the smite yeah, here from Yike. HP. The reset HP, through. man. The regeneration, and Razork doesn't care. He says that, you know what, my priority is getting this kill. The shield pops, and it's enough damage. Oh, it's crazy that that just happened. I mean, what a year it's been for Razork as well. Continues to impress, has been the driving force behind a lot of Fnatic's success, and now in the early game has had Yike's number. Still, though, E honors even in terms of gold, about a 200 gold lead for G2. Exactly that, Medic. Even though that was a great play for Razzle and Fnatic, they still find themselves at a small gold deficit. And the big problem, staring everyone in the face, is Han Summit in this bot lane. Fnatic, they need to continue to find ways to get Noah in a powerful position. His cleanse is now back up, Flash coming up soon. Pops in a bit of a dire state for Wonder as well, though Waves pushing into Broken Blade. No uh, TP on the Orn. It's really hard for him to be able to walk up. I think Broken Blade can look for an all-in here. He's building in front of him for the knock, maybe. Broken Blade Riddle, can look Pathfinder for something. Coming in as Broken Blade looks for a trade, but the Brittle Proc will knock Broken Blade back. Goes back in, has that Q3 now, no flash on him. Got a lot of mana out of the Cassante there, but Broken Blade will level up soon. for oh, a nice trade here from Humanoid. Really? Needs a phase rush. Trimby being chased down by Mickey. Does have the flash, should be able to escape if this goes any further. Can just flash that wall, doesn't need to burn it yet. There's not really too much damage on G2. There's the Unleashed Power though, and Trippy held onto the flash for so long and just wasn't safe. I think he uh, wasn't expecting the damage to come out from Caps there. Oh, Hans. Yeah. Noah, about four minions away from six. Won't hit it off this one. Still needs another wave. Now trading into Hans Summer. Oh. He flashed in, looked for the Blade Caller, but he couldn't quite find it. Now only has the cleanse. And Hans Summer has the match of his own. Razzle, trigger seed, flash, Hans. No, he can't do enough as Noah takes him out. He just got baited, didn't he? Noah with the E flash, but Hans Summer saw it as an opportunity. Lucky for him, Razzle's here to save the day. All part of the plan. <laughs> Noah flashes in, he tries to get the feathers to do the damage to win out on the trade. But Razzle coming in with the clutch. You know, we talked about how Noah needed to be the big carry, but so far it is Razzle that is shining in this game. Yeah, Hans lost a lot of stacks off this, so Noah didn't get the level six. The ward in the brush means he can't kite in and out of the brush, but oh, that E flash just a little bit too far away. Maybe would have just instantly killed Hans Summer on the damage here, but it's the flash forwards from Hans, but matched by Razork. Oh, it keeps him out of the brush. That's a good vision. Perfect by Noah and yeah. Razork. Yeah. Obviously, the slight misplay with the blade caller, but knew, Noah knew he had the backup of his jungler. And now it's two and one building up towards that first item. Again, though, it's G2 in the core lead still. Mickey. Zenith blades over the wall. His humanoid was gliding along it. Mickey. The hook. Knocked back with the seismic shot. The hook. The laser beaks on G2's side. And everything that Fnatic do, still G2 managed to get a little bit of a gold lead. First objective of the game, though. Going to be unlocked for Fnatic. Yike cross-mapping on the top side with the Herald. Three to three is the kills. 1.5k is now the gold lead for G2. A lot of that sitting in mid lane. Caps on this Syndra, getting that pick onto Trimby in mid. You look at the experience of the support as well. They keep getting closer to six. Could mean a potential play on the bot side of the map. Let's see what Yike chooses to do with this Herald. You imagine they'll either be for a mid or bot to try and get the Straven further ahead. Yeah, I just see Wonders TPs come up. 45 seconds on the leash. No ward in the bot. Uh, for him, because that one will expire there. But uh, just shutting down the Draven is important. No flash, maybe they can find a window. No uh, ultimate on the Humanoid, though. He has plans, this Han Summer. Need to shut down the Draven. They can play patiently here, just wait and see what G2 does. Does Han okay. walk up this wave? Mickey roams, because he hasn't seen Trimby. Now Han Summer might step He's forward. He's suspicious, though. So suspicious, but he doesn't have flash, remember. All it takes is a hook. Han Summer continually dancing around the edge like of this. this wall. He doesn't. He knows something's up. Trimby. In your back away. Smart. And now, actually, Mickey's taking the long way round. Yeah. To add that bit of protection, Hans Summer can step forward. Yike joining, bolstering the defenses for G2 in this bottom lane. And Fnatic needs to be a little bit wary of the fact a dive could occur. But it's not going to. doesn't materialize. Humanoid's just reset. And he's not TPing back to lane. So that gives a big wave push in here for Caps, who also has that TP available. But he can move into bot side here if he wants or look for a plate. I'll just wait and see where this Herald goes. He lost right one melee there, Humanoid, but... Oh, oh Azor, Mickey, 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 Mickey down, Mickey does have flash. Uses it to get away from the dredge line. 
had to there. The Rittel now using the mid lane as Razzle has to work his way up through the river to try and help out his mid laner. But with the Rittel charging in, that's four plates over the caps before the 30, 11 minute mark. In a be very a fight strong position. Ball side river. Mickey just blast coned in. Flash forward with the root on Yike. Hook going out from Trippy. He's still only level five. Solar flare being popped. The Dragon needs to get the hell out of here. Otherwise, the whirling death could find his vibrant card. Caps across the wall. The trigger seed. Not enough to protect Razor because Caps takes him out. Noah doesn't have the flash behind the, the feather storm. Can try and retreat with the hex flash in. And Fnatic tried to help out their jungler. But they didn't realize that G2 were ready to pounce. Good escape by Noah, but the hex is behind their mark. G2 5 to 3 up. Fnatic tried so hard to attack Hans Summer. They thought they saw a window, but the patient play from Hans worked out. Dropping the Herald in mid, forced Humanoid to stay underneath this tower, and Caps could collapse from mid into the bot side river, giving G2 the numbers advantage. They're very quickly gaining control over this game, and while we saw some positive things from Fnatic in the early game, G2 is the one claiming control. Clearing out this pink is Razork. Guy comes from mid off the Heralding. Mickey Blascone straight over. Flash misses, but it's the Solar Flare that lands, and Watch that doesn't get the stun against the slow, so he can get the Q onto him. Exhaust onto Hans is instantly cleansed. The ult misses, but caps over the wall with the first strike, gets that kill. And then from there, Humanoid decides, you know what, I can't get in this fight. He runs towards topside, even leans for maybe an ult top to look for a kill up towards Humanoid. Uh, Broken Blade. Hex flash over the wall from Yike to make sure the play continues. No falls. That's really well done by G2. Capitalizing on the fact that they knew. Razork would try and answer the midway push with the Rift held, and then Noah and Trimby tried to just help out the jungle, but couldn't quite keep him alive. The all out here in the top lane. Wonder does have the flash, broken blade. Q3 Caps doesn't coming. quite land it. Caps is on his way, and Wonder. I wonder where he's going. Nowhere is the answer. Caps on a killing spree. The most decorated player in LEC history. I think he's had enough of this series. Humanoid is on the champion that you expect to be roaming around the map. But it is Caps that is finding all of these windows. He started with that pick onto Trimby as he was getting collapsed on by the bot lane. He finds another onto Razork. And now he's cemented his three kills Whoa. with a good roam top. Now, Fnatic attack bot. Big dive. Talia ult for the Death charge, Hans Summer. The knockback with the side of the shot. But Hans Summer has time to flash away the solar flare. The man has stormed the world. And death is so much. As Humanoid's already got down. Hans Summer's out. TP in by Wonder as he looks to join the favor. Razzle's going to fall as well. A botch dive. It's delight for G2 once again. And now, sharks in the water. Hungry for blood. They can sense more. Hook from Trimby. Just trying to keep his AD carry alive. But I don't think any sort of life support will be able to do that. The better storm out the unleashed power. And once again, Caps hits him in the back with an oar. It's going to be an ace for G2 as they wipe away the Fnatic. Broken Blade gets top tower. Fnatic fall with the numbers advantage on the five versus four dive. That was everything. They threw everything they had at that bot dive and it didn't work. G2 answered it and they stopped it. The idea was good from Fnatic. They knew the pressure that they were under. But look at the response from G2. Yike, keep your eyes on him. Gets the double knocker. The Mickey follow up into the solar flare. The Magnus storm from Yike as well. Hans Summer throws out the ultimate to deal the damage. And then Caps arrives. Wonder TP's in, but it's too little, too late. Yep. Four versus three. They don't even need broken blades as G2 clean up the fight. Ornold comes in and onto Yike, and they can trade back one, but that's all that Fnatic really got. Hansama flashing the Talia combo at the start. Noah trying to get away, but a lot of balls on the ground to knock back with. Gets that kill on the back half. Wonder falls to the Ignite. Got another fight going on here. Fnatic looking on good. Oh, Root Caller going in. There's the Solar Flare as well. Noah having to dash away, but Mickey still rooted up. The chase is on. Broken Blade going in. He's going all out just this once. And it's a double with a whirling death for the French Phenom. And Summer gets two more. G2 are steamrolling them now. They're going to look for this mid tower. Yike might look for the dive with Flash. Goes in. Magnus Storm. It's on two. The Shadowy Strike. The knock back. And there's just nothing Fnatic can do in the face of such relentless hate from G2. G2 used Daisy against them. Caps throws Daisy onto the face of Fnatic, and they are quickly ballooning this game out of control. 15 minutes, 15 to five, 9,000 the gold difference. And 18 stacks on Caps' Medjai's. He was there. At the beginning of it all, when Fnatic and G2 were fighting for the title, started on Fnatic move to G2. He's the most decorated player 
in the history of the LEC, and he is hungry for his 10th title. He would match Faker in that accolade if he manages to close out this game. And right now for G2, that's looking mighty likely. likely. Here comes the desperation from Fnatic. Just keep making plays because this game is well out of control. They don't have any damage, though. I don't think they're even going to scratch Broker Blade. He can just go in 1v3. There's the burst from the Talia. It took 10% of his health. After all this, Broken Blade, healthy as ever. Yike coming Noah. in, Noah trying to do what he can, but now Noah perhaps a little bit caught out. Noah has no flash on, he has the Feather Storm to try and escape, but then his blade will lock him down once again. And Noah pulled across the wall, oh, Mickey. and pulled to his grave. Broken Blade takes him, Mickey going forward, gets the shield of Daybreak, starting the world, and Death coming in from the side, it's once the humanoid is slow. Down to 100 HP, but the trigger scene will keep him alive now. Yike looking for him, engage, which wonder flashes away, and Banana can only watch, wounded, hurt as G2 Relentless continue to march forward. Fnatic are just doing what they can to find something, anything on the map to give them a glimmer of hope. But Broken Blade laughs in their faces. They barely scratch him. He gives them the thumbs up, and then he returns the favor by getting G2 another kill. 16 to five now, the kill score, 10K the goal difference. The Baron's not even up. They're going to secure the second Herald. Oh. It feels like it's just a matter of time before G2 lift themselves another title and a trophy to boot. It would be their 12th. A dozen for them. Fnatic, the closest rivals at seven here in the LEC. But over the last few years, it has been G2 that had reigned victorious. Yeah. And here, once again, Fnatic. I mean, it's a huge miracle. It's something absolutely out of the Bible if you want to get back from this one. It's, it's impossible, it really is. Dragon's going to go over to G2 soon if they want to start that one up. Wonder maybe looking for a top tower here. They could look for uh, an objective bounty. TP's going to come in, but again, this is double AP onto the Cassante. But all of Fnatic are top. This is a five-man play onto Broken Blade with no flashes. Ults up soon, but I just don't think they have the damage to kill him. Dodges at the seismic shove with the path maker. They continue to try and put the damage in his back, but it's more of a tickle. A fly at most, it feels, as he swats them away. Noah now joining the fray. That might be enough, but still the stun enough. Say Fnatic, they find one. Broken Blade's back broken in the top lane as Fnatic might look for more. Just they play safe top. To <laughs> They're gonna keep going though. Fnatic looking for a tier two, but when's the collapse coming in? Oh, they left Broken Blade, man. Uh, oh, Hans. Sama has to burn flash. Cleanse as well. Any TPs? None available. Broken Blade, 15 seconds away. Mickey's Mickey looking is for it. hunting though. You see Rail on the flank coming up through the river. They're hunting. Where are you going, Razork? There's no blast going for you. Oh, the shadowing strike, this enemy, he dodged everything without even seeing it, but the solar fly the scatter of the week will be enough. Razork, unable to group up with his team, and Hans Summer goes unstoppable. One the TP's away, Fnatic are able to get out, only losing Razork, but still at a 9,000 gold deficit. It was 10,000 a minute ago, so they True. made a play. They got a kill, they got a tower off of it. Not too bad, but yeah, this is an insurmountable lead on G2's side. It's just a case of waiting for this Baron. They have Herald. They can use Baron and Herald at the same time if they just rush it on spawn. Hans Hammer lost his summoners. That's a 1,000 gold shutdown. They're going to Herald this top tier too to keep the pressure up onto Fnatic, but maybe on the next Ornal, Fnatic can look for Hans Hammer. They're going to have to throw everything at him. Noah doesn't even have his second item just yet. Just clearing out the waves. Top tier two is going to go down. Keep going on bot side, fighting up against Broken Blade. Not sure he wins these. Has to flash away from Broken Blade. Can look for a little bit more of a chase. Doesn't have a flash of his own, so he decides to back away. G2 still four players strong with the Rift Held as well. As support to back them up. Scout of the week back. The Rift Held will get a charge in, but no tower to fall. At least no inhibitor one as of yet. Daisy steps in the trigger seed, giving her a little bit of healing, but smited it away. Oh. Killed off, at least, by G2. Catching waves are fanatic. Watching the map being torn apart. They can move into bot now and look for this bot tier two. That's the last of the outers. And they're stuck behind the base gate. See if you can clear out this wave. He's going to get most of it. But the next one will come in soon. G2 will probably stick around and try and force this one down. G2 know that they can take their time. There's no need to rush this. They can save the crowd. You can hear the chants. Montpellier, Baron spawning right now. The resets will come through. Fnatic's base only has the tier three towers left. And we're gonna have to see that Fnatic magic once more if they wanna turn this game around. It feels like an impossible thing to do. 
as G2 set their sights on the Baron. There is a ward in the pit. If Razzle can get a steal, maybe it's something, but we're talking the slimmest of chances for Fnatic now. Yeah. No, someone is on Hansama still, though, so maybe yeah. if they just push in, look topside. Oren's on the way. No one's trying to reset, though. He probably wants a second item, but Razorok's sticking around. Trippy's here. Humanoid has to be up soon, but... Then it played. Goes in. The solo player hits nowhere. He cleanses the way, and Razorok's already dead. Caps goes godlike. Fnatic now retreating. But will they be able to regain any control here, or is the Baron just forfeit? Yike will find Humanoid. Crashes down, stunned up, not back with the flick of a wrist. Humanoid keeps himself alive. The Baron now begun. And a TP away from Humanoid spells That's that funny. Fnatic are giving this up. Humanoid wanted to try and get a quick base off, grab an upgrade in the Void Staff, and then maybe return to the fight, but no jungler. There's no smite. I wonder if I ult it. <laughs> Suck it for a right, steal. Right. May as well. Goes for it, doesn't get it. Unsurprisingly, Smite does a little bit more damage than a Call of the Forge God there. He took the gamble, and for wonder it didn't pay off. Of course, an incredible story for Fnatic. From struggling throughout the year, to bringing Mad Lions in spring, to an inch of knocking them out of the spring season, changing the course of what our year could have looked like and then having to fight all the way to top three in summer just to get a chance to stand on this stage. This team, this organization has achieved and has had a crazy story. But against the might of G2, there are a few that have stood strong. And it seems that once again, Fnatic will not be able to stand against their might as G2 with the Baron now make their way towards the base. Noah. Feather Storm dodges his end plays stunned over the shoulder today. Break the following stun, the whirling death, and Hansama just needs a couple of axes into the back of Noah to send him to Davy Jones's locker. And that's exactly what G2 were looking for to begin to crack open this base. They can move into bot as well. Broker plays preparing a wave. Only one range creep left. Inhibitor's gonna fall. This is a minimum of two inhibitors going down here. It's just a case of whether G2 want to push for an end. 18 seconds on to Noah. Missing that Leona ult. Root comes on to Mickey. Good knockback off to Mickey, but it's still only half HP. The scatter of the week is going to hit Trimby as Humanoid looks to try and put some damage down with a threaded volley. Second inhibitor to target now for G2 as they begin to step forward. Noah four seconds away. Broken Blade. Can't quite hit the Q3. Good dodging there by Humanoid. The side shoves short as well as Broken Blade's able to put on his dancing shoes and sidestep it. Double inhibitor down. G2 were looking for a little bit more, but couldn't quite find it. And because of that, they just back away. There's a dragon up, infernal for them. It would only be their second of the game. The recall's now happening. Hook in. Oh. Knock back, and Razzhook is just deleted. Caps once again. Knows what he wants. There's the double. He's looking for more. He's looking for four. At least one taken away by Broken Blade. Wonder flashing forward. The unleashed power gives Caps a triple. His tenth title in his eyes. The ace taken by Han Summer. And now only as awaits some pray for one g2 have got a dozen undisputable indescribable oh god yeah, g2 your lec 2023 season champions Incredibly hard fought journey for Fnatic, but against the might of G2, it was not enough. And now they will claim what is theirs. A short walk to a mighty prize for G2. Montpellier, Europe, EMEA, give it up for G2!
But as you say, there's an inevitability at the moment about G2 here in Europe. And an inevitability perhaps about Hans Sommer returning to France, taking the stage and raising that trophy. I think this G2 wanted to prove something after MSI. I think they wanted to show that there was more that this roster had, that they could continue to grow. And they wanted to prove that they weren't just the best in Europe, but they were a cut above the rest. And as the dominant team here in Europe, they will look to represent us as the first seed at this year's World Championship. All eyes will be on them to see how they perform internationally. All their players are just peaking at the right time. Caps has had up and downs, but his form seems to be shaping up well. But the players around them really look like they're at the height of their careers. Yike only just beginning his. And again, congratulations to G2. Yep. Fnatic had an incredible journey, but today G2 were the stronger team and the strongest in Europe. It's been a long year. And I have to say, what an amazing crowd to round out the LEC season. French crowd always delivers as G2 take about. For Fnatic, obviously, commiserations. A difficult weekend for them, a long weekend. And obviously, having one to sub in for Oscar in as well kind of made things any easier. But they fought tooth and nail. That they put did. their blood, sweat, and tears on the rip. It was a great final. It really was. It really was. And G2 as we have seen so many times before, emerge victorious. I think they brought a different spark to Europe when Dylan said that he wanted his team to be pure aggression, and they decided that as a unit at the start of the year, let's just play aggression and innovation. Yeah. And uh, eight, nine months later, I think you can see that aggression and innovation. I think alongside that, a degree of discipline was added. Before MSI, it was a little bit of wanton violence. MSI maybe humbled them a little bit. And now, that extra step of, maybe we don't push for the third inhibitor, maybe we take a step back, yeah. has really added another bow, another arrow to their quiver. They deserve every accolade they get. Avoided the curse as well, which is something other teams have struggled to do. All to all pro, MVP, rookie of the split, coaching staff. I think some people thought perhaps they'd been jinxed. But today, they were able to rise above and claim that trophy once again. And Caps getting 10. Yeah. One of only <laughs> a few players in the world to do that. The man wins a lot. He does. He's only lost one final he has ever been in. Yeah, that was last year. That was last year in Malibu. That was uh, trippy. It was. It was. And to, you know, the rest of Rogue as yeah. well, obviously. Caps his dad, takes his bullets. <laughs> Is Ramon going to lead us in one Icelandic clap to close it all out? Once again, massive shout out to the French crowds. They swarm in the masses. The energy has been electric. I would highly recommend if you ever get an opportunity to attend a live event. It is truly an incredible experience. The games are amazing. The weekend has been amazing. 14 games over 15 out of 15, yeah. possibly. You know, yeah. I think a lot of those series were so exciting to watch. The only thing we could ask for was a fifth, but. Uh, <laughs> 14 is good enough. Of course, we are just getting ready for an interview on stage. Congratulations once again to G2 Esports. Our LEC season champions. I think that's enough from us three. It's been a pleasure to bring you this finals, this first ever season finals, but we're gonna hand it over to Law, who is standing by with the French phenom himself. Du bruit pour rendre sa main, s'il vous plaît.
Hans, in 2017, you lose finals. You know what? I'm going to let them go for a bit. <laughs> 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 wow. I feel like this one is really poetic in a way. In 2017, you lose 3 0 to G2 with Misfits in Paris. Today, you win with G2 in France once again. How special is this victory for you, Hans? I mean, <laughs> it's. Uh... <laughs> Well, um, well, it's really amazing. Um, I never thought that uh, it would be like that uh, again on the French stage. Uh, last time I lost uh, to G2 and I felt kind of bad that uh, it was back in 2017, it's been a long time ago, but today I'm very, very happy that uh, I get to win on the big stage uh, in France. Uh, <laughs> thank you everyone for sharing. Merci tout le monde. <laughs> Not only do you get to win, but you win the first two games, lose the third one for content, we'll say, we're used to G2 by now, but you get to win the trophy playing Draven. We know how much you love the champion hunts. How is that? Oh. Uh. <laughs> um. I mean, <laughs> it must be funny that, uh, yeah, I have such a long history with Draven. I getting, getting to win the last match of the best of five means a lot, yeah, <laughs> with him. Uh, but in the game, I kind of feel bad because I misplayed, because <laughs> uh, trying to kill Desire, but then Ivan flashes it. Uh, but it's fine. I'm still happy that I got the final win on Draven. Yeah. It means a lot. It is, it is details at the end of the day, and I feel. This is what makes your work ethic. This is what makes you a champion, one of the best competitors we have in France, in Europe, and in the world. The fact that you always second guess yourself and you always aim for perfection. You've been playing for years, Hans, always trying to come back and come back stronger every time. What is your biggest motivation and what drove you here today to get this victory? I mean, um, my motivation, <laughs> I mean, I just like the game a lot, and I feel like uh, <laughs> this this is the one of the things that I only want to do for for, for now. I don't have a, I don't think about uh, anything else but the game. So that's one of my biggest motivation. Trying to grind the game a lot, and uh, this year has been very amazing. I got my first titles this year. And I didn't get it before. So before I was like, uh, actually, am I getting a, Am I gonna get the title one day? <laughs> and 2023 is the year. Uh, I didn't expect that after such a um, very hard uh, uh, down um, year uh, last year, but I'm very happy to be where I am and I'm really thankful to uh, all my teammates setting me up for success. J2, everything is amazing. Thank you guys. I want to dive a bit into... <laughs> They're never going to stop. They love you so much. It's amazing. I want to dive a bit into what you just said right now because their teammates getting ready on stage, of course. I remember the first interview we had this year when you came back from NA about after the disaster that was this year for you and how traumatic it was for you as you explained to me the motivation you have, wanting to prove yourself, wanting to prove yourself for what you were capable of, but also to the audience and to show people that you could bounce back after such a hard year. You managed to grab your first title in winter, as you said, managed to grab the second one the same year here in Montpellier. How do you reflect on this year? The highlights, the low moments, the high moments, and what made you here? Um, <laughs> I mean, the, most of the highlights is when we won the finals uh, of winter. I mean, that was like the first, first uh, title for me, it was like, Wow, my, I couldn't describe this feeling and it's the same feeling as now I'm very amazed that uh, I got to win in such a big stage. Um, and I'm, uh, yeah, I feel like I've been working hard a lot uh, this year. Uh, and I'm grateful to where I am now. I've been, uh, well, <laughs> I tried my best, right? And uh, I'm there now and I'm 
uh, looking forward, I'm really focusing about uh, the next step. This, this is a really important step, uh, the final one, like the final boss, I would say, the, the words, so to speak. Um, I'm going to try my hardest. Well, this is going to be interesting for sure. And I feel like all eyes will be on G2, will be on the rest of Europe, of course. What is your resolution for Worlds? What are you looking to prove personally for yourself? Um, well, for Worlds, <laughs> us as a team, we always, I mean, we talked uh, about it a few times. It might be like weird, but we really have the objective to win Worlds in the team, like we are even saying. Uh, and we, <laughs> we're working really hard. To, to get there. Um, we lost MSI, but but our full faith, I'm going to really try very hard. We're going to try very hard. Uh, and yeah, hopefully. <laughs> you, you guys are a different beast, and you will be a different beast than you, the one you were at MSI. I think it's going to be really interesting. Looking you at Worlds, last question, Hansama. I think it's going to be an obvious one, but look at them. Look at them. You have something to tell them. Of course, you want to talk to the audience. This is your moment. Take it in French, because we did this entire interview in English. They want to hear you in French. Ansama, this is your moment. À toi. Je voudrais remercier tout le monde qui supporte mon équipe et dont moi. C'est vraiment une ambiance superbe aujourd'hui et vraiment je suis très content et je suis aussi je remercie aussi mes parents aujourd'hui qui sont venus me voir, ma famille, mon frère et euh... <rire> Et mes amis aussi. Euh, et ouais, c'est vraiment, c'est vraiment cool que qu'on a gagné ce, ce season final. On va faire de notre mieux pour les World et euh, j'espère que vous allez nous supporter. Merci à tous. Tu fais une année incroyable, Steven. On est tous très, très fiers de toi et on a tous très, très hâte de te voir au World. Montpellier, encore une fois, pour Ansama et pour le reste de G2, s'il vous plaît. Shots, back to you. Thank you so much, Laure, and thank you so much, Hansama. And of course, I'm joined here by some more members of G2 Broken Blade, Caps, Mickey, and the statuette that is Roma, who has been uh, holding the fort down today. We, of course, will get to talk to Yike later as well. We wouldn't leave him out. But for my part, also. <laughs> Je parle un petit de français et... Euh... Parfait <laughs> C'est la vie. C'est la vie. G2 gagne, c'est la vie. Um, so, let's go down the line and Broken Blade. Congratulations, monster year for you on G2. And after picking up two of the titles in the studio, you now get to do it here. What does it mean to you to do it in front of all these G2 fans? Uh, it's amazing. I've heard the French fans are crazy and you guys re are really crazy. It's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Every time, but I love it. 
Uh, so Caps, you know, we heard you speak a little bit of French as well, but you can say it in English, although maybe you want to do it all in French. Um, but what a journey it's been, of course, for you. Again, a new configuration of G2 this year. And this the proof that all your hard work pays off and that it was worth it. How do you reflect on this particular victory? Uh, I mean, it feels so good uh, to be back in a, a stadium like this. We get it very rarely nowadays. Uh, and last year was a bit of a disaster, so I'm super thankful to have the opportunity. Uh, super grateful for my team, and of course, super grateful for all the fans for cheering for us. So, thank you guys so much. <laughs> Okay, we have one more to go. I hope you're ready. <laughs> um, Mickey, uh, yes, you had the wonderful honor at the beginning of the day, and I found it so cool that you got the trophy, and then immediately in that first blood, it's, it's been a while, but you remember that you came in, you saved the day as Rakan, and I think that kind of set the scene for the series. So uh, how do you look back on how you played today? Because you said in the interview, I don't really think I deserved it for my play as MVP, but come on. <laughs> I mean... If we don't look at game three, I think I played pretty well. Uh, <laughs> I think especially game one, four, I think I did pretty good. Lissandra, you know, it was pretty fun to play, but if you actually watch what I was doing with my flash, I'm like... <laughs> uh, so don't rewatch that one. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, other than that, pretty nice, yeah. Pretty nice. I think that's the hardest one because some people want to do Mickey X and some people want to do Mickey, so it ends up being a little muddled. Um, in any case, though, um, I want to talk about a couple of things in particular. Caps for you, uh, tenth title in Europe. It's it's it's. It's unbelievable, really. Um, I want to congratulate you on that, on what is the most monumental achievement that I think is going to be so hard for players to beat. Do you have a grasp of that, of, of how insane it is what you've achieved so far? <laughs> uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard to, to realize, I think, sometimes, because, I mean, time goes fast. It feels like yesterday I just uh, joined Fnatic and started my, my pro career. Uh, and now we have a lot of years passed. <laughs> um, but we, the thing is, I'm still going for that Worlds trophy. And we've been close, but not quite there. Uh, so I definitely hope that uh, this, is the, this is the year we go for it. <laughs> OK. Well, uh, not the Worlds trophy, but it's heavy. <laughs> uh, you are our LEC Grand Finals MVP. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Maybe give it to Romain if you don't want to hold oh, it. Oh, actually, he's a, <laughs> a, a pro, pro holder. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. It is heavy, but, you know, he works out. He can do it. But, hey, I mean, that on top of everything else, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that, uh, I want to ask a, a final question to you specifically about um, you've had so many titles and great performances. That does mean that it comes with ups and downs. Um, but how much of that do you feel was always when it wasn't going as well because you were doing it all to try and facilitate the team that was changing around you, the way that you guys have said, we want to try and play differently so we're equipped for international. And how can you all um, kind of justify that uh, when you see all this? Uh, I think every year is like a new adventure, right? You get an, a new group of people to go with. Uh, a lot of, like, a lot of years. <laughs> uh, but we have different, like, uh, ideas of how we, we improve, different ideas of, like, how we, yeah, get better and uh, get, to the, get to the stadium in the first place and then also, also win it. Uh, and I think this year we, we have a really good idea and we are improving steadily. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm just super grateful for, for, for both the staff and all the players for putting in the work because... It takes a lot to get here, and, and I'm happy we, we all uh, put it in, because it's definitely worth it. <laughs> so <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> definitely is worth it. I'm holding out. Yeah. <laughs> hey.
So uh, I saw you three lighting up when Lor asked Han Sama about Worlds, and he, he, he spoke the words. He said, yes, of course, we're going there to win. And I saw Caps being like, yeah, I'm so glad he said it. But Broken Blade, um, it is no secret that that is the singular focus of G2. Of course, getting this title here first, but then making up for MSI and showing off that the work you put in has um, has yielded the results you want. How far are you along the road, do you think, that you can give Europe the performance they deserve at Worlds? I mean, first of all, it's very, very nice that we managed to win today. It's a good, uh, like, it's a good reward for our efforts, right? And uh, if you would ask Romeo right now, he would say this team was built to win Worlds, and this is our only objective. Uh, obviously, all the trophies that we got along the way, it's just uh, part of the adventure, right? <laughs> and. Uh, so far, the time with the team and like the staff is just so, so amazing. It's so joyful every day. And I think we're not that far away from, you know, being the best in the world. And now we will have three, three weeks to practice again to beat the best teams in the world. Okay. Mickey, same question for you. Um, you know, when you, you came back to G2, I can only imagine that you wanted to relive the glory days as well that you had in 2019. When you look back at kind of the road you've already traveled with your dual partner and with the team and with the staff behind you, what are your general expectations and what can you promise and what can you dream? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if I would promise that we were going to win Worlds, but, you know, I think for sure, We'll make it very far. I'm very certain of that. And a lot of people think that the West can't even win a best of five against the East. I think I can guarantee that we're going to do that at least. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think winning Worlds, very possible this year. Okay. Um, I absolutely love the confidence. Uh, give it up one more time for Romain, for Broken Blade, for Caps, and for Mickey. Thank you. Amazing, we're not done yet. Uh, also, for her info, we also still have a world's draw show after this, but first, we're gonna go talk to Yike. Yike and Dylan, actually. Thank you guys for joining me. Congrats on winning tonight. Montpellier for the coaching staff and for Yike, please. Thank you. We often say that coaching G2 is not stressful at all. How was it today, Dylan? Um, at least it didn't go game five. I think if it had gone game five, I would have lost it. But it was only, I think, one loss. And mm -hmm. I think the other games were pretty, pretty convincing. So it was, it was all right. What did you think of your boys' performance on stage? Uh, I, I think we played so yeah. well. Um, I think how we managed to play so aggressive on such a big stage is really, really important moving forwards. And yeah, I thought we played super good. And Yike, honestly, when I look at you coming from the LFL on your rookie year, ro winning the rookie of the year, two titles with G2, in front of the French crowd at the end of the year. You experienced the French crowd before. How different is this one compared to the LFL? <laughs> Pretty loud, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I played last year in LFL for a whole year, and I went to a lot of events in LFL, and that was so fun. I really love playing in front of the French crowd. They're always they're always so cheerful, they're always so loud, and it makes me very excited. It makes me very, like, just get so much more try out, and yeah. Honestly, every cheer is entirely deserved for the G2 performance, but for your performance as well. As I was saying, um, thank you, Roman. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Standout year for you, Yike. Anything that you will remember for this first year in the LEC, outside of the titles, of course, because. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I will always remember the way my team supported me throughout the whole year. I was probably like the most nervous kid ever joining this team, and I had so much just stress overall trying to perform or like thinking I will maybe choke or things like that. But I think they just helped me so much to just feel comfortable, and I just started playing my own game, and they just made me so good. Mr. Falco. I, I feel like for Yike, at least, <laughs> the bigger the stage yeah. and the more pressure, the better he seems to play. Um, I think that's such a good quality to have clutch players like him. Um, that's something like someone like Caps was famous for, yeah. having a mega stage buff. And 
uh, I'm really grateful to have Yak on my team for that reason. That's a good thing for Waltz, being good in front of good, uh, good crowds and big stages. How much do you think he grew ever since you met him? How different of a player is he now compared to the beginning of the year? Um, a bit less Viego and Belveth and a bit more Maokai and Ivern, I would say. Aye, aye, um, aye. That's probably the biggest change. Um, but I really like how we can play enabler junglers, we can play carry jungles, we can play tank jungles, we can play anything, but still play them aggressively. And I think that's one of the best things we've got going this year. And that's something we should keep in mind, especially having the eyes on Worlds, which is the next step for G2. Your whole team seems confident. I heard Hans Sama, who was really positive, towards the performance we can have at Worlds, the rest of the team as well, Caps as well, we were just talking about this now. How do you think this one is going to go and how different are you since MSI? Yeah, I mean, I think MSI was so fun. It was my first time going for an international event and I think I performed good, so I was very happy with that. And yeah, it's going to be my first time. I'm going to play versus Asian Junglers again and I'm so excited. I think it's going to be good matches and I think we actually have a good chance of taking it all. I like what I hear. I think. Everyone here likes what we hear. Dylan, last question for you. You had two titles with Fnatic, I believe. This is the fourth title you have with G2. You've been on both sides of this rivalry. How does this one feel and how it is different? Um, I love winning one on a big stage again. I think that's my favorite part. Uh, last year, I thought I would finally get to do this again and we lost in the finals. So this, this is kind of payback for me for, for last year and I'm just happy to win number six. An amazing year for you guys. Props to the entire coaching staff, of course. Dylan, thank you so much. Yai, thank you so much as well. Congrats on winning tonight. Thank you. Montpellier, encore une fois du bruit pour eux, s'il vous plaît, and shocks. Back to you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Really awesome moment, I think, overall for uh, G2 and incredibly, incredibly deserved. Before I forget, we do need to get to the MasterCard play of the day. And it fits because it's Yikes Rel engaging game one to kick off the series with a bang or like a horse, whatever you want. But yeah, it set <laughs> it the tone. kick some teeth in anyway <laughs> yeah. with that play. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, it, it got the job done. You know, this was a game that had a little bit you know, back and forth between the two. But it's Yike that waits for Humanoid to group up with the rest of the Fnatic right about here. He sees the angle, flashes in, drags everyone together, and from then on, there was no doubt G2 was going home with it. I mean, Yikes Rel was incredible over the course of the entire series, but this play just kind of defines how important this pick was for the team. Being able to set themselves up magnificently with these engages consistently, him finding creative angles, it was so cool to see Yikes stepping up, and again, getting the first title for this guy on the season finals is absolutely insane in his first year. It's crazy. We are setting up for the world's play and draw show but we still have a little bit of time and I want to reflect on a couple of things that I heard in the interview because I love to hear the words of I know we can win worlds I think we can uh, it doesn't often get uttered because people think you know you're gonna get laughed at if it doesn't work but you have to believe because why otherwise are you even here right and um, I just wanted to see what the analysts thought in terms of you know how true that statement could hold because it's so hard to look at it when you look at only the games in the vacuum of EU I mean there's a very famous Perks quote in terms of you have to be a little delusional in terms of winning <laughs> these things. And, and, and it comes from the, the delusional is confidence, and that's yeah. really what you need as well. You can't come into a tournament and say, well, I think we're going to fall out in quarterfinals. Maybe that's a success. You have to try and go all the way. In terms of them making them there, I feel like the high tempo play is certainly something that can be polished into a very scary team that can try and contest for it. But going up against some of the Asian teams, of, of course, you're going to have to try and level up even further than we're currently seeing. I will say the flexibility that this team has proven, like even Dylan talking about how Yike can play all these different champions now inside the jungle, the enablers, the, the carry all this sort of stuff that does give me hope right especially for a team that can come in have very different looks it's always sort of been the g2 way that you have to be able to play those different styles and the fact that they're dominating this hard domestically you gotta love but i think that's the thing right because it goes to swiss and that's where it's going to be very very different where you are playing in those best ofs i think the fact you have this flexibility about where you want to play around who wants to be the carry how you can try and set them up over the course of the game we can go for early game we can go for late game i think that's where it is going to stand to them but as goldberg has been saying it's no easy task against some of the LPL and LCK. I will say though, it's allowed to have hope. I'm tired yes, of seeing all the other hope. things. 
BB is not as bad as anyone is making him out to be. Hell, he was the best performing member at MSI. Caps has been showing off lately, and we're seeing other different champions as well. I'm just saying, hope is allowed to be had. It is, and I can be the Lulu if I want to, okay? Uh, anyways, we're not just sending G2, we're of course also sending, um, you know, Mad. We're also sending Fnatic. Fnatic. We're maybe sending BDS, we but are they have to BDS. Going to Korea. BDS yes. are going to Korea. But Will they, they play in so Worlds? So this is we'll important for them because if they win the Worlds Qualifying Series, they go to play-ins. And what we're about to embark on is the Worlds play-in draw for European fans. Um, I mean, there's only one spot there, but Odawanda's drawing again. So that could mean oh. anything. Sorry, sorry. No hope. No hope. <laughs> it's over. It's Jober. There's no chance. Is he out there? Why did we so not him out can, the we, can we get him off can the they show, find actually? <laughs> We should, we should get rid of him. Can Lore do it instead? <laughs> Actually, oh, I see him. Do I see him running? They were looking for him before. So maybe he's doing us a song. Oh, thing. they got to oh, brush all the confetti yeah. away. Oh, yeah. that's important. Actually, some of those things that are super important and probably super stressful, because look how many, how much confetti? <laughs> There's a lot of confetti on the stage. Take many, a word for all it. of the confetti. confetti. It's yeah, the red ocean the out there. Anyway, well, we're talking about hope and we're being delusional anyway. We've got three seeds, maybe four. That's semifinals. What do we think? <laughs> All four. <laughs> Easy. I mean, I don't know. Yep, you want delusion? Over. I'll give you delusion. <laughs> crazy? What was the question? Those crazy ones. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's been a couple of long days. Some yeah. long season finals, in fact. 14 uh, games. 14 games. All Sadly not. Tier 1 team into bracket A, and it is GAM.
The walking highlight reel known as GAM Esport is back at the World Championship, ready to add to their list of beautiful, chaotic games and plays they've exhibited over the years since the organization's international debut in 2017. Led by the dependable captain, Levi, GAM hoped that their new look bottom lane of Sharpshooter Slater and Red Aron Palette will be the X-Factor to navigate themselves through the play-in stage into the main event. All right, I will let you go with the second envelope here. PSG Talon. The protectors of the Pacific, PSG Talon, are making their sixth international appearance all time as an organization and a third trip to the World Championship. Spearheaded by the return of regional legend Maple to the mid lane, this season's squad is ready to analyze and dissect all opposition in the play in stage. All right, we have the bracket so far. I'll let you draw the third envelope, please. And it will be the winner of Golden Guardians or Team BDS. For the first time, the LCS and LEC will battle for one last spot at Worlds 2023 in the Worlds Qualifying Series. An epic chapter in this long-standing regional rivalry. Either North America's Golden Guardians or EMEA's Team BDS will make their inaugural appearance at the World Championship. Golden Guardians made it to their first international appearance at this year's mid-season Invitational in London and, led by a group of veterans, hope their years of experience can be the difference maker to secure the final ticket to Worlds. On the other end, Team BDS, the biggest surprise in the LEC this year, looked to cap off a magical year with a voyage into the play-ins. An organization that has invested in young regional talent, they believe that their mixture of bravado and skill will lead them to victory. All right, we can keep on going. Fourth envelope here, please. And it is the Flying Oysters. Flying Oysters are a team that love making the impossible possible, returning to the World Championship after making their debut at the 2022 edition. In the middle of the pack for a majority of the year, they defied all expectations in their domestic summer playoffs by pulling off a lower bracket run for the ages by defeating four straight teams to qualify for the World Championship. And now, we will begin drawing the opponents from Pool 2, please. Team Wales represents a new generation of Vietnamese talent, becoming the first non-GAM or Buffalo organization to represent the region internationally since EVOS in 2018. This team of upstarts took the most complicated road possible to the World Championship, needing to go on an epic lower bracket run to make it here. With Young Gun Jungler BJ and the and the one-two carry tandem of Glory and Artemis, these underdogs will pack a whale of a punch against even the toughest competition. All right, so a VCS team already has a representative in the first bracket, so Team Wells will be placed in the second bracket because of this reason. We can keep on going. And it is loud. It is past any doubt now. Loud has become an empire in the Brazilian scene, conquering the first three-peat in CB LOL's history. After a slow start at the beginning of the season, they quickly picked up the pace and peaked in the playoffs, where they were simply ruthless. This team is truly a record breaker, and their top lane superstar Robo now has tied with BRTT as the most decorated champion in the league with six titles. All right, so two teams left. Detonation, Focus Me, and Movistar R7. Let's see who gets the next one. Movistar R7. 
The Rainbow proved why it is the winningest organization in LATAM, winning back-to-back -back championships to add to their overall 15 crowns in the team's lineage. Movistar Aura 7 is the first undefeated team in LLA history, winning every single series en route to sweeping their domestic rivals in Estral in the grand final. This squad blends old school Latin American talent like franchise players Odie with new exciting stars such as Seo and Lines. And for the final envelope, please. Detonation focus me from the LJL. The main character of Japanese League of Legends, DFM returned to the World Championship for the fifth time in six years. DFM's heart and soul, Yudapon, is at the forefront of the team, celebrating his 10th year as a professional player. The stalwart bot laner recently moved to the top lane, leading this squad to a thrilling 3-2 victory in the finals. DFM enter Worlds knowing they've made it out of playing stage before, and they can do that again. All right, Odo, thank you so much for joining us for the Worlds 2023 play-ins group draw. Went better than last time, honestly. And Worlds 2023 kicks off on October 10th, the day after the series between Golden Guardians and Team BDS. That's all for us here on the stage. Back to you. <laughs> thank you very much, Lore and Odo Wamne. Uh, yeah, there we go then. We're gonna get the bracket up in a, in a second again. But as she said there, it is the day after the World Qualifying Series. So if you win, if you're BDS or Golden Guardians, you go straight into that play-in bracket. Are there any surprises or, or things that you think are, can go horribly wrong? I mean, against expectations, Goldberg. I'll be, I'll be honest, I haven't started voting them yet. So if you're <laughs> yeah, a cast okay. of this region out there, you know I'm reaching out to you first thing tomorrow morning or the day after. But I really think that, you know, Gam, I saw that game threat. It seemed like people weren't too happy with the Vietnamese the level in general. Threat? Yeah, is they, that what you get your? Yeah, the Reddit Lighter. I was it, curious to see what the fan reception. That's how he prepped. Ah. Obviously, I was curious about what the fan reception was of it, and it didn't seem too highly. On the other end, the one for LLL is seen very, very high. So that yeah. matchup is going to be interesting. And I'm going to vouch for GB. He actually does insane amounts of prep uh, for the regions and the play-ins whenever he is on them. So, uh, yeah, Dagda, are you excited for the play-ins? Yeah, I'm really excited for CFO versus DFM. I mean, Flying Oysters last world was making real big headwaves. Same coming into MSI and that. So I think that's a team that we have to look out for. And Detonation Focus Me, always a team that can have that upstart potential. They've already made it out of play-ins before. They've beaten some of our teams coming into that uh, group stage as well. So I'm excited to see how that one's going to go and how they will fare up against some of the further competition as well. And obviously, Team Wales versus either BDS or Golden Guardians. Yeah, I just think that, I just think that, well, no, I think the World Qualifying Series, I just Team hope BDS. all 10 players have a really good time. BDS. Yes. And uh, have fun. BDS. 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 All 10 players. BDS. BDS. All 10 players. Hey, BDS. uh... Are they bringing substitutes? <laughs> the academy team, perhaps. Oh, true. Yeah, Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is important is Dude, that you're there's... you're good. There's, they are. There's only two teams that will advance from the play-in stage, and the two play-in stage winners will join the 14 pre-qualified teams in the Swiss stage. So, uh, you know, also interesting to know if you're interested in Europe's other seeds. They will be going straight to the Swiss stage. So if you're BDS and you do make it, you do have to go through the play-ins. Then you would make it to the Swiss stage. So, you know, could be like a little warm-up buff or... All good. The world isn't ready for Adam Olaf. They are. It's over for them. Adam Olaf is going to run through play-ins. <laughs> Where, That's my analysis. You, where was your? You you just said they won't, won't make oh, it. Oh no no no! I what just hope everyone mean? has a good time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it'd be yeah, really yeah. sad to just fun. get destroyed by Adam's <laughs> Olaf and not Fair. have fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. We're looking oh, forward okay. to it. Yeah. Are we getting too big for our boots? Because like we think G2 is gonna do really well, but then we're gonna get knocked down immediately because they like lose the first games in the Swiss stage. Good then they have to go up against another team. There's a lower bracket. Yeah, but you know, if one thing goes wrong in a Swiss stage. It's 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 pandemonium. And like, that's yeah. why that's the most exciting part of that's the Swiss stage show because one upset and you might be just against T1 out of nowhere if you just took a loss and yeah it it also yep. sets up for even further cool storylines if you are one of the teams that make the upset and also, can make it further. Just to clarify because I know some people don't really get the Swiss. It's if you win two you end up hop hopping out. Otherwise you end up having to work your way through several different teams. So it's going to be very exciting to see all those teams go through the best ofs. It is, but. Let's gather all the talent that we can find in this arena. <laughs> They're standing by. Come in here, everyone. I, you said talent? 
Yeah. I don't. That's Where are they? Them. Shut up, Enda. Hello. <laughs> so, here we go then. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone who was here in France, even though they can't hear us. Thank you everyone for following us in this wonderful LEC 2023 season. And thank you for an amazing roadshow in Montpellier Occitanie production. We love you, you know we do. And all the fans and the viewers, we love you so much. We hope you had an amazing time. See you at Worlds. versus Humanoid is the iconic mid lane matchup of the 2020s, bar none. This will be Caps' 10th ever title. Caps is European League of Legends. That is what Humanoid faces today, and it might be Humanoid's only ever chance to take it from him in a grand final. But this one, the Brambles special, Hansama dodges it, twins in advance of the cleanse. Oh, Hansama Hansama could flash away, Trimby going forward. Hansama low, the Ignite's not gonna be enough. The Trimby's down. down, meets the Trimby! Falls for first blood! Coming out as well as Yike tries to join the play. Cap's gonna be able to put damage down to Humanoid because he has no mana! He manages to get under the tower! Uh, no one doesn't have the best guns here. Purple, blue, but they try and turn oh, it on. Damage Summer Hunt Summer dashes forward with the kill instant. is down! No one now trading back onto Mickey, and that's two! Nice uh 3B. I'm going. Oh good, 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 good. It's fine, I think we win, I think we win. We win this hard, we win this hard, guys. Good job, good engage. That's one Yaka Room. Thank you, mate. Let's go. Oh, Razzle. Razzle. Seismic shot back with immediately locked up with a twisted advance, and he's dead. The trade back in. I don't really think they have the damage as oh. Mickey goes forward. No one with a great cleanse. Flash away with the killer instinct from Hot Summer. The Fritz Phenom. See, uh, Rock is gonna, gonna kill Wonder here. Flash forward. There's the Ragnarok, and that ravenous Hydra is hungry for blood. Wonder down. Broken Blade 2 0. Oh, and then, oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Uh, thank you. Uh, any hitters? And hitters, hitters. <laughs> Bro, you guys, nice, are, you guys are trolling. Face. Guys, <laughs> you guys are dogs. <laughs> <laughs> look at Kassan. Look, 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 we're the oh, champions of the finals. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> nice guys, good job, good. good job. That's what I like. G2, your LEC 2023 season champions!